Fox welcomes you to Martinsville, Virginia, the oldest and shortest track on the NASCAR circuit. And we're on the railroad tracks with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers. They run right alongside the actual racetrack, and that's what makes this place so unique. Oh, it really is. You think about the history here. These tracks almost still rumble from the fact that 1949, when the track was still dirt, Red Byron won the first race here. A lot of history here. Imagine this, the train used to even stop here, and people would watch the race. Cargo arriving late. No driver, according to record, has ever been delivered here by train. Many have left that way. You know, it's the last time these tracks will be here. They're going to move them mm -hmm. for more seats, more fans, 91,000 today. So they've sold out the track. And the all-time winner here, Richard Petty, with 15 victories. Most active, Rusty Wallace with six. Yeah, but don't forget, our buddy D.W., he knows something about winning here also. He can work it in or outside of the track. In fact, let's join Darrell Waltrip and go inside the track. D.W.? Yeah, Chris, so uh, one of the things that makes Martinsville so special is the ambiance here. I mean, when we race here, it's like you just reach over the fence and there the people are. I mean, you go down into the first turn in the azalea bushes. This is the original. This is the original. They're not booing me, by the way. That's Jeff Gordon coming by. <laughs> and that's part of it. I mean, they're right there. They can see Jeff. They feel Jeff. And uh, when the cars go by, they hear the noise. It's one of the noisiest races. Wait a minute, wait a minute, it's one of the biggest places we go to. And this guy right here, he owns this joint. He's one of Let me interrupt why you get the fans fired up like you always did. <laughs> and you know how much my grandfather thought of you. Yeah, I know how much you yeah. thought of him and thought of this place. Yes, sir. I got something for you. What you got, man? You are to receive the H. Clay Earls Award for outstanding dedication to auto racing, Darrell Waltrip, April 18, 2004. Oh, yeah, we appreciate it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's great. I, I didn't have any idea that that's... I, they told me to come out here and talk to the fans, and uh, uh, Mr. Earls was one of my best buddies. He's a big hero of mine. Uh, I, I'll tell you a quick story, I, if I got a second. He used to come down here when we'd come and test, and he'd come down into the pits, and he'd say, well, Darrell, how are you running? I said, pretty good. He said, I hope you cook Ber uh, Earnhardt's butt. And uh, what I found out later on was that he'd come down here when Earnhardt was testing and tell Earnhardt the same thing. I hope you kick Darrell's butt. So he was a great promoter and a great guy. This joint with the uh, azalea bushes and the ducks and the pond and everything, it's a lot of history right here. Nice, nice. Thank you for this. This is wonderful. Uh, I had no idea. <laughs> Take it back, Chris. Waltrip uh, was surprised by that. Uh, we knew he was going to get that award. Uh, he is certainly did not know that award. 11 wins here at this great track, and certainly a guy who's done a lot for racing beyond this place, but they think highly of him in Martinsville. Oh, they really do here. And uh, he's talked about Clay Earls right now, as far as that's concerned. He was one of the founding fathers of NASCAR, and very instrumental in kind of bringing the sport to where it is today. And that's a very prestigious award, and I know how much it really means to Daryl. Yeah, Daryl, I was talking to him about what kind of driver it takes to win here, whether it was in his day or today, where it's a very hot day, by the way. What? How would you describe that? Well, right now, I think it's like this, Chris. There are a lot of guys that come here that love a place that's like Jeff Gordon. He really likes his place a lot. But there's some guys who win here like a Mark Martin, and he hates it. The key is you've got to attack Martinsville if you want to beat it. All right, we're going to see if uh, Jeff Gordon can get his Hall of Fame career back on track. It's uh, somewhat strange to put Jeff Gordon and back on track in the same sentence, but uh, Jeff has yet to win this year. He has dominated this race so often that Martinsville could be renamed Gordonsville. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, go down to the track. Join Jeff Gordon live, ready to hop in his car, ready to go racing. Jeff, how you doing? Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. That's good to be here. <laughs> okay, you had a nice little uh, break. You know, with four uh, championships, of course, more than 60 races you've won. You've set a certain standard. Uh, where do you say that you are in terms of the championship? Where is Jeff Gordon? It's I guess 2001 was the last time you won one. Yeah, it was, and uh, you know, we we definitely. Um, I, I feel like the competition's gotten tougher and, and maybe gotten a little bit of an edge on us at some tracks. But you know, we I, I've always said to win a champ championship, you got to take advantage of the places that that you excel at. And we're here at Martinsville. We want to take advantage of this pole position, that number one pit stall. Uh, you know, we want to get a, a solid top five, and, and hopefully we'll get another win. But 
Um, you know, the car certainly feels awesome today, but, you know, this, this championship is, is one different today than it, than it was uh, a few years back, and certainly with the points uh, system being different today, uh, who knows what it's going to take, but you know you got to be in that top ten. We're ninth right now. Really, we've been pretty consistent other than, uh, you know, our, our wreck at Darlington, and, and I just felt like we haven't lived up to our full potential, but uh, it's there. We showed it at Texas. We're showing it now, and hopefully we can build on this momentum. Well, Jeff, this is Hammond. Uh, I got one question. With all the framing and bamming that goes on here, how hard is it for you to keep your cool out there, man? Well, if you're out front, it's not so bad. Uh, but, but you know, so many things happen. Pit strategy, pit stops. Um, you know, guys will come from the back to the front. Um, you know, we, we're going to try to just stay calm. 500 laps a long way around this place. And, and you know, it, being out front certainly is a huge advantage. But the chances that you're going to stay out front all day long are, are, are slim. And it's all about being out front when it really counts towards the end. And if you don't have the fenders, uh, if you don't have the grill on the car and the brakes and tires, then it doesn't really matter, uh, you know, where you're at. So we're going we're gonna to be as calm and patient, I, I like to say, as aggressively patient as we possibly can be. <laughs> this is a DW. What's and, up, uh, DW? Congratulations, look, buddy. I've already got my trophy for today. Yeah, no, you got yours. I'm <laughs> you, working on mine. You got a little work to do. Hey, man, I remember when I used to win a lot of race at Bristol, and I would be so I almost got to the point where I didn't like to go there because I knew my streak was going to end sooner or later. You got to feel somewhat that way here. Um, you know what? All streaks do come to an end. We're going to keep this one going as long as we possibly can. And, um, you know, because the cars feel so good and I feel so comfortable and just the confidence in the chemistry that this team has when we come here to Martinsville, uh, I think it gives us a little bit of an advantage, but uh, it certainly doesn't doesn't write her name on the check yet. Now, what did I tell you a while ago? If there was one car here that I think I might like to drive, we're leaning I, I on know, it. And, I told and what you, did you tell I me? I told you what, what makes you so sure it's the car. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know and I know it is the car. It is the team. And uh, uh, I, I'm glad that our, our combination that we have here, with my driving style and the, the, the uh, setup underneath this DuPont Chevy is pretty awesome. You got it, buddy. All right, thanks, uh, Jeff. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot. All right, good luck. All right, I right, appreciate it. All right, DW, congrats. I do got to head up to the uh, to the booth, and uh, quite a quite a light week uh, for Jeff Gordy. But scuba diving, he went mm -hmm. to the Masters as a fan. He also got to judge the Miss Universe or Miss USA contest. Maybe he's working his way up to Miss Universe. He's trying to work his way up through the points. Let's take a look at the championship race. The Generation Nextel driver is Kurt Busch taking over the lead from Matt Kenseth, defending champ, junior third. Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick, they've yet to win on a short track. Now, Rusty Wallace in 11th place. You know he's won here quite a bit, but winless in his last 105 races. Dale Jarrett, 311 points off the lead, still looking for his first win of the year. Michael Waltrip, also winless uh, this year, but his crew picked up the weekly $20,000 check in the pit crew drive through championship fueled by Powerade for having the fastest time on pit road. That was in Texas. The overall standings, Kurt Busch, his crew remaining in first place. Well, the regular season uh, almost one-third complete, and there is a sense of urgency, as you just heard from Jeff Gordon, to make your point over 26 races to make the field for that 10-race next tell chase for the championship. 24-year-old rookie Casey Kane is in the hunt, thus eligible for our get-to-know-you choice game, 10 laps with NASCAR's hottest young driver. MTV or VH1? MTV. All right. Uh, Britney Spears or Jessica Simpson? Used to be... Britney Spears, now Jessica Simpson with that uh, MTV show. It's pretty good. It's pretty funny. Story. Yeah, she's funny. Uh, all right, lemonade or iced tea? Uh, iced tea. All right, uh, AM or FM? FM. All right, uh, video games, right? Now, if you have your choice, PlayStation 2 or Xbox? Uh, PlayStation 2, because I have it, and uh, there's sprint car games on there. Any other video games that aren't race related that you enjoy? No, really? Okay, so you're all racing all the time. All right, I don't know you're from Washington State, so Huskies or Cougars? Huskies. Huskies, and so, so East Coast or West Coast? West Coast. West Coast. Um, American Idol or Fear Factor? American Idol. Is short track or super speedway? Neither. Neither? Neither. What do you prefer? I prefer the mile to a mile and a half. Okay, you've done both, uh, but here you go. Winning a Bush race or finishing second in a Nextel Cup race? Try win it. well... That's a tough one. I mean, winning a bush race was huge, but uh, finishing second was huge. I, I guess uh, winning a cup race. Well, all right, that hasn't happened yet, but hopefully it will for you. The question is not if, it's when Kane will win, but his first cup race here, what kind of chance do you give him? Well, right now he's going to have a struggle in time because he's got to, first and foremost, he's got to be in that lead lap about lap 250. 
then by then I think he'll have his rhythm and have a chance of having a good day. The guy who's won here before, veteran Jeff Burton, his name uh, in the news. Uh, is it a chance that he'll be in a backup car today, but is there a chance that he'll be in, a, in an exit car with Roush Racing in the near future? A lot of rumors about that, Chris, right now. Things are not good over at Roush Racing as far as Burton's concerned. A lot of people kind of a lot of you know suspecting one thing about themselves and the other as far as the team's concerned so i think he's on his way out myself okay you think he'll be out uh, by certainly some point in this season there's a ward burton and it's been a busy a few days for him he starts six today he's okay after being in a wreck in his passenger car earlier this week he recovered in time to be part of the roanoke ballet as they debuted their nascar ballet ward of course jeff burton's brother as we get a look at him helping with some of the drivers and the ballet and it was quite a sight. Drivers usually show good judgment. That inspired Jeff Hammond to give it a whirl. I asked Jeff if he ever saw a performance like Swan Lake, and he said he watches the Swan on Fox all the time. We'll be right back. Fox Money. Martinsville, Virginia on Fox. It's where America gathers for racing every weekend. Chris Myers with Jeff Hammond. 82 degrees down on the track as the drivers get ready. The hottest it's been for any race this year. It's going to be a big test for a lot of these guys. They're not used to it. Hotter brakes, probably hotter tempers. Jamie McMurray trying to win his first uh, short track race. we got Dale Earnhardt Jr. racing for his third win of the season. Fastest in final practice. He led the most laps the last year. Also, Ryan Newman trying to bounce back after his worst finish of the season in Texas. And uh, Rusty Wallace trying to break his 105 race losing streak. Let's go down trackside now for the opening ceremonies here in Martinsville. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats this afternoon and remain standing for our invocation and national anthem. The invocation today led by Raceway Ministries' John Fox. Father, as we thank you for this beautiful day and pray for a safe race, I want to thank you for the life of Mary Weatherford, the daughter of Martinsville Speedway founder Clay Earls, who served the Speedway as vice president and secretary, and who for over 50 years made each race fan feel special with her warm smile and personal attention in the ticket office. And I pray for your comfort to be with the Martinsville Speedway family as they mourn her death. In Jesus' name, amen. Our national anthem today by Nashville star, Buddy Jewell. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. Say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the home of the A stirring rendition of the national anthem here in Martinsville. Warm, sunny skies. The drivers and their crews getting ready to go racing. What to watch for? Brakes, engine RPM, and anger management. Participants in today's virtual crew chief polls automatically entered to win. The chance to be the virtual crew chief with Team Singular at the race July 4th weekend. Log on to foxsports.com for details on how you can win. NASCAR on Fox from Martinsville, Virginia. Headed your way. ready to go and on behalf of Advance Auto Parts and our 35,000 team members it's an honor to be here today to say welcome to the Advance Auto Parts 500 in Martinsville Virginia have a great time watching the race today and we'll see you in our stores soon have fun 
And thank you, Paul. He and his lovely wife dropped by the Hollywood Hotel to get ready for the Advanced Auto Parts 500 here in Martinsville. 16 states represented by various drivers. The oldest, youngest driver, Brian Vickers at age 20. The oldest, Morgan Shepard at age 62. The right age to call this race. Let's go upstairs. And Mike Joy. Thanks, Chris, and hi, everybody. Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR, proud sponsor of the Budweiser Pole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at each Nextel Cup race. It's Jeff Gordon's 47th career pole and his third straight at Martinsville, so he joins the field for the Budweiser shootout of 05. Let's go down to the starting grid where things are very toasty. Steve Burns. Well, Mike, as we heard, some guys love this place. Some people hate it. Jamie McMurray thinks it's fun, and he will start second next to Jeff Gordon. Jamie, everybody wants to hand that trophy to Jeff. How do you get to the front and win it? Well, we're just going to try to put ourselves in a position at the end to win. We've, we've got a fast enough car. Um, kind of want to run on the bottom, but it seems like watching the truck race and our happy hour, the higher groove seems to be a little faster. So we're going to try to make our car work on the bottom and see if we can't pass some cars that way. All right, back upstairs to Mike Joy. Thanks, Steve. It is a hot summertime day here at Martinsville on the asphalt and on the concrete. And Darrell estimates 130 to 140 degrees inside those race cars once they get going at speed. Now, let's go trackside for the command. Fans, are you ready? Drivers, are you ready? Engines fire at Martinsville, Virginia, a short track whose history dates to 1949 when Red Byron won the first race here on dirt. The local neighborhood racetrack set off a little residential neighborhood just off US 220. The Boxwoods, the Azaleas, the railroad track behind the backstretch, it's all part of the history and the pageantry of Martinsville. This track for many of these racers and the 90,000 fans is like coming home. But like every racetrack, it must have a hot spot. Here's DW. Martinsville is one of the toughest little short tracks in the country. One of the things that makes it so difficult is concrete in the turns. They concreted these turns years ago to keep us from tearing up the asphalt. When they did that, they left the straightaways asphalt. That transition from concrete to asphalt, you're always talking about forward bite. By the way, that's not a dental problem. Trying to get the car hooked up off of the concrete onto the asphalt, it's a nightmare for these crew chiefs. But folks, you have got to stay off of this curb. You'll knock your front end out of the line. The car won't handle right. Oh, by the way, and of course, there's always an oh, by the way, we're at a short track. Remember Bristol? Remember retaliation? Hey, time to get even. But remember, the old Ove office, she's always open for business. <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. I'm joined by Larry McReynolds. And Larry, at many racetracks, we talk about one key component on the car that really gets stressed. <laughs> what about here? This place covers it all. I mean, it stresses the brake package. It stress stresses the rear end package. It stresses the front end of those race cars. As you documented, those drivers in those hot boxes, it stresses them. But one miscue in this 500 lap race, as we saw with Kurt Busch back in the fall, of missing the pit road entrance, pretty much your day can take you right out of the picture. All right, let's go back down to the starting grid and Speedway Illustrated's Dick Berggren. Well, Martinsville used to be one of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s worst racetracks. And then in the middle of year 2001, he and the team came here for an extended test. They worked on the car and they came up with a setup Earnhardt was comfortable with. And the setup was fast. He came back in the fall, qualified second. And since then, it's been nothing but top five finishes. Today, he starts in fourth spot looking for his first ever win at this storied half mile. To Matt Yoakum. Dick, two drivers to watch today. Ryan Newman, who starts third, and Kevin Harvick, who rolls off fifth. Newman won last fall's race at Richmond, so he's got a short track win on his racing resume. Harvick has finished second three separate times, never scored a Nextel Cup win on a short track. Would love to change that today. Newman's team told me they didn't make any changes to the race car after final practice. The first time that's happened since last September. It shows how strong they feel like their car is. And Harvick told me he was so excited about coming back to a short track, he got up extra early and pulled out some old short track tapes from North Wilkesboro that's not even on the schedule. 
schedule just to get that flavor of what he expects to see today. To Steve Burns. Well, Matt, Texas winner and Virginia native, Elliot Sadler has made 10 starts on this tough half-mile racetrack. He's needed a provisional for all but one of those races. This week, he's safely inside the top 10, his best starting position ever. And speaking of improvement, at this time a year ago, Sadler was 20th in points. He starts today's race fifth. Mike Joy. Thanks, Steve. Daryl Waltrip joins us. And Daryl, Jeff Gordon's task is easy. Start out front and keep your nose clean. What about somebody like Tony Stewart, who had a problem in qualifying, got too hard into turn one and starts 30th? How does he be aggressive, smooth? Well, you just got to not worry about the first 300 laps. Let those kind of unfold, see what's going to happen. Let people beat themselves is what I like to do. One thing you got to notice about the racetrack, though, they put some black tar in the cracks in the asphalt, and that makes this racetrack I think the slickest I've ever seen it. Plus, the tires give up a lot more here than what they did in the past. But DW, we're gonna keep tweaking on that race car, making adjustments, but you can do more for it in those first 400 laps by taking care of that race car. And let's go down to Jeff Hammond at the Ford Cutaway car. He'll show you what this place can play havoc on. What it can play havoc on is real easy, Larry. If you look, here's the big cooling system. All these cars are racing today, trying to keep these rotors and these brake calipers cool. These temperatures will exceed now in excess of 1,000 degrees. So keeping the brakes on are going to be real important. But one of the keys to keeping this car balanced and adjusted may be this little knob right here, your brake adjuster valve. You can dial more front brake or less front brake, keeping the car balanced under brake, not to wear them out, could be a key today. Thanks, Jeff. This is Jeff Burton's car, a backup car, and a lot of heads-up work by Roush Racing and the folks at Broadcast Sports Technology to transfer these cameras over to the backup. But that's the suspension and especially that big brake rotor rolling around there inside the 99. And on in the race, that thing will be glowing shortly into the race. There you see our weather. I think this is the key right here, 83.9 degrees. But as Mike Joy pointed out, that's going to be about 130 degrees in those race cars. And look right here, 109 degrees on the concrete. And the good thing about concrete, it don't change that much unless the air temperature change, changes a whole lot. Today, 500 short track laps. Pit road speed, 30 miles an hour. Pit window every 140 to 150 laps, and there'll be no red flag to hold the cars after lap 495. If there's a caution after that point, that is it. A very warm day, 91,000 fans packed in here, and I mean packed. This is as Wrigley Field, as Lambeau Field, as old Boston Garden as it gets in auto racing. Pretty exciting place to come to, I tell you. You're right there. Just reach out and touch the fans. That's what I always love. Well, DW, I need you to reach up there and pull them belts tight because we're going racing. All right, we're going to come down here. We're going to get the green. Here we come. Here we come. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, guys. See Jamie McMurray in the 42 car. He slid in behind Jeff Gordon, which is, I'm sure, what he'd been thinking about long before this race ever started. He didn't want to get shuffled to the outside. Now, Ryan Newman didn't get a real good start, Larry. It looked like he spun the tires. That's a real problem here. Tell you what, though, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that Budweiser car, he got a good run off turn four on the high side trying to challenge for second place. Believe it or not, they came off turn four three wide. Greg Biffle got caught to the outside. I tell you, yesterday in the truck race, I don't believe I ever remember being three wide so many times. I, that three on the corner down there meant third turn, not three wide. On the first lap. <laughs> on the first lap. Ryan Newman up high, and you see Kevin Harvick clear him from the inside. Kurt Busch dives inside Newman. No contact. Oh, Newman almost lost it. Yeah, Newman's car is just not very good. Uh, he wasn't good on the start, and he's really, really loose. You know what, Daryl? The, the tire pressure builds up so much here. They start the air pressure so low that what your hopes are, you can hang on for four or five laps, maybe ten laps, then it'll come to you. These cars hadn't been on the track since the truck race last uh, yesterday. So the track, I promise you, is a lot different than what it was the last time they saw it. The Earnhardt Jr., he gets a good runoff turn two in the eight car. He goes by Jamie McMurray in the 42 for second. Now Kevin Harvick in the 29 wanting to come up there. Look at the people in the stands, and that was passing for second place. Yeah. Well, he lights them up. There's no question about it. He's got, to, he's got all the fans on his side. Richard Petty always lit him up here, 15 wins. You always lit him up here, 11 victories. Rusty has six, as does Fred Lorenzen, Cale Yarborough, and Dale Earnhardt. One thing I noticed about Junior's car in practice, it was fast 
on the short run. But oh, oh, car in the wall. And hard. Andy Hillenberg slammed it with the right front in turn three. Caution is out. Joe Rutman has gone to the garage, and it gives us a second as we check out the condition of Andy Hillenberg to talk about the difference in a term that's came up, come up this year. Andy, all right? We'll check on that in a moment. Little damage to the right rear, heavy damage to the right front for Andy Hillenberg. That used to be a sign for MW Windows, but Andy Hillenberg hit it hard and uh, broke the first caution of the day. And here's what happened to his triplet for Congress Ford. If you watch, he just locks up the front tires. Now, one of two things, he got too much front brake and locked them up, or the throttle may have stuck on the thing. It looks like he just locked up the brakes. And Andy's okay. He did not respond to the radio transmission before we went to brake. But he climbed out okay. There's Andy in his new impact suit, and that was quite an impact. But you can see that Andy's okay. And the term we were going to mention, the term is coming to use field filler. And it started last year in the Bush series about some cars who would start the race in park. And we occasionally do see that. But the comparison to the independents, fellows like Henry Gray and Jimmy Means and J.D. McDuffie, is not an apt comparison. There are fellows here who are underfunded, who are independents. They do plan to run the whole race. And that's the difference between those folks and the people who are referred to as fillers. We, we had 40, we used to have to have 43 spots because we would send home eight or 10 cars. Used to be right. 50 cars that show up. So that's where the provisional things came in. So what they need to do now is revisit that and look at if we're having too many provisionals, too many cars starting a race or whatever the situation may be. And I think we want to see what Dick Bergman's up to. Well, safety first is what I'm up to, Daryl. Every driver in the race today is wearing a big heavy duty set of seat belts like these, imps, uh, these uh, impact seat belts with the big three inch wide shoulder harnesses and a heavy duty lap belt and anti-submarine belt on the bottom and a quick release latch. These guys wouldn't even think about going out on a racetrack without their seat belts. And this week, as we've already told you, Ward Burton had a big highway crash, rolled his SUV over several times. He told me yesterday that had he not been wearing his seat belt in that automobile, wouldn't be here this weekend so take a tip from the pros buckle up good advice at any time and there you see that's uh, I believe that's Hermie Sadler who's all uh, buckled in and, excuse me it's Rusty Wallace all buckled up ready to go you didn't recognize him because he wasn't juking around but he will here just give him a chance <laughs> <laughs> there, there he goes. goes there he goes come on Rusty there he goes yeah, all man. Right. get that get it that means we're close to going back to green Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. By Wendy's New Chicken Temptations, it's better here. By Nextel, NASCAR and Nextel, partners in speed. And by Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horn. for all the fans who thought Vivaldi was one of the Ferrari team mechanics. Martinsville Speedway surrounded in turns one and two by Boxwoods and Azaleas. The modified race that used to companion this cup date was called the Azalea 150. And spring is perhaps no more beautiful anywhere in the nation than right here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Let's go down to Chris Myers in the Hollywood Hotel for a visa race break. All right, thanks, Mike. With uh, Jeff Hammond, of course, uh, under our first caution, have been since the uh, sixth lap. And as we uh, take a look, you know, Tony Stewart is somebody who's up there in the points, right? Fourth currently, but uh, hasn't won a race yet this year. Certainly has won here before, but is he maybe feeling the effects of Joe Gibbs not being around? Well, it makes you wonder right now, Chris, because of the fact that, you know, he's kind of not been as spectacular as he normally is, but the team has been solid so far. And I'm really wondering, you know, if that's going to affect him as we go further in the season. I think that's going to be the key right now 
is how Tony responds to the new tires as well as the new point system and, and deals with everything he's kind of involved with right now because he didn't have a very good qualifying effort, but he did go off and win a, a modified race the other night in his own car, which made him kind of get pumped up for Saturday's practice. And he, had all, he was all smiles, but the guys told me this morning they still weren't quite right. Meanwhile, Joe Gibbs worrying about the Redskins. We saw the shot of Rusty Wallace moments ago, who's won here six times. He's a guy who has kind of a secret formula when it comes to working the brakes at this track. He doesn't like people to see it. Oh, no, he's really good at it right now. As a matter of fact, his teammate, Brendan Gong, which is a rookie this year, even though Brendan's raced up here in the trucks before, they tested. He went to uh, Rusty and got an opportunity to look at some of his uh, telemetry he'd already run up here before, and he learned a lot from Rusty, adapted, came up here and had a really solid qualifying run. He really felt like that Rusty knows how to get around his racetrack, and it's a good guy to le learn from. All right, and uh, real quick, what is the secret to Rusty, the way he works the brake pedals? Oh, I can't tell you oh, that. It won't okay. be a secret no If more. you told me, you'd have to kill me. That's All right. right. Uh, back to Rusty. Well, we were talking about Rusty Wallace. Let's go back to Tony Stewart and, and Gibbs Racing. And uh, we talked to Tony Stewart about the effects of Joe Gibbs uh, prior to this racing season of Joe uh, leaving to take care of football. <laughs> Not only did he make me a better driver, I think he's made me an all-around better person. I mean, he's Joe is such a great motivator, and he knows how to deal with people so well. That's his pro, his best trait as a car owner, and whether it's being a car owner or being a coach in the NFL, I mean, he knows how to rally people around him. He knows how to get them motivated, how to keep them pumped up about what they're doing, and how to put the right people in place to do the right jobs. So uh, he, he's just helped me in every aspect of my life so far. And uh, Tony has, has said that the J.D. Gibbs, with the system in place, uh, certainly they didn't think it would affect the racing team that much. This has been a Visa race break. Let's go back upstairs to Mike Joy. Thanks, Chris. Uh, still cleaning up from Andy Hillenberg's crash at turn three. They had to put that car uh, on a rollback, a flatbed truck that tilts back. Um, hopefully you're not too familiar with those. And then clean up some liquid debris up in turns three and four. We were talking about independent drivers, and Steve Burns passes upstairs some sad news. Villa Park, Illinois, longtime NASCAR, uh, then Winston Cup driver Bobby Walwack passed away last evening. He made 141 starts in this series from 1965 to 87. His best year, 1976, when he had nine of his 14 career top ten finishes. Twenty laps complete. Jeff Gordon has started from pole and led them all. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray, the top three. Here's our singular wireless virtual crew chief question. Vote now from your singular phone by sending text message FOX to phone number 191 or visit foxsports.com to vote online. Stay tuned for the results. That's how I clean the tires off. Go. Go, Temple. All right, we can talk about what one man's misfortune could be a, a fortune for another. You see right here, this is where Andy Hillenberg was pitting. And right here is Jimmy Johnson's pits. Right here is Kevin Harvick's pits. So, DW, this gives both these guys this opening now. And on this tight pit road, these pit boxes are very small. That could be a huge advantage just on pit road, having that opening there now. Oh, yeah, and, and that's what you try to do is pick a pit around someone or, or near someone that you think may go a lap down early or fall out of the race early. Look at this paper clip shaped speedway. <laughs> it's a fun place to watch, Daryl. I know you had a lot of success here, but was it a fun place to drive? Well, on a day like today, uh, and then particularly with the conditions the way they are, I think if you look at the track, it's blacker than I've ever seen it. There's more rubber on the racetrack. Those buildups, those little bumps that get in the track make it very hard to hook up off the corners. And being as hot as it is today, it's gonna be a toll on some of these guys. With a single file restart with all the cars on the lead lap, Jeff Gordon, he takes the green flag at the start finish line. Todd Bodine in the 98 car, he's halfway down the back stretch. He's already half a lap down. And that took 17 laps under caution. You see Jeff Gordon finally building speed at the end of the back straightaway on that lap. And now he begins to scoot away. Further back, it's double wide, and there's some paint being traded. Look at Scott Wimmer inside of Sterling Marlin and Joe Nemechek. Rusty Wallace on the outside behind them. You're riding with Rusty. Well, Robbie Gordon in the 31 car right behind us. There you see him right there. This is a shot from the singular car. This is a bumper cam. We hope that camera's still there at the end of 500 laps. 100. 
He's in trouble, though. I mean, we're hearing maybe he's got a left rear tire that's flat, and right now the problem is he's trying to get to the bottom where he can get to the entrance of pit road in turn three. He made contact with his teammate, the 30 car, and that cut the tire down. These fenders stick out far enough now that they just rip their left rear tire when they get make contact. Now it's down on the rim. Yeah, he's going to yeah. stay out there, and hopefully he, he wants it. He's about to lose it. It's a bad. Yeah. It's going to come around right in front of Hermie Sadler. The caution is out. If he can get it going, he can stay on the lead lap, but I don't well, think he's going to get it going. He'll get the break. He'll be the uh, only, right. car, only car lap down. I believe I think you're he'll, right. He'll actually, I think he'll have to wait. Okay. I don't think you can get the free pass if you are the car that brings the caution out. We'll have to check on that. And we will. In the garage, Joe Rutman and Andy Hillenberg. By the way, Hillenberg's been released from the infield care center. He is okay after pounding the wall in turn three. Now, here's the first contact Daryl spoke of. Yeah, the 30 card, he get together right there. They start banging on each other. They make enough contact. They get left rear tire sticking out there. Left rear, right front usually causes some kind of damage. From Johnny Sauters on board. And from Hermie Sadler, there's Robbie Gordon's whoa spin right in front of Hermie. And that slow spin like that makes it difficult to decide which way to go. Now, since he was not a lap down at the time of the caution, he's not eligible for a free pass. <laughs> Steve Burns. And Mike, that left rear is just flat, sitting on the racetrack to put four tires on Robbie Gordon's Chevrolet. He did say that his own teammate, Johnny Sauter, got into him, causing the flat tire. Remember how the rule is applied. The first car one lap down at the moment of caution gets the free pass. He wasn't a lap down. Good point. Green flag for the restart after caution two, caused by Robbie Gordon's spin. Greg Biffle, Tony Stewart, Kyle Petty, uh, a couple others pitted during this caution, but none of the front runners. Boy, June Bug is all over the back of that 24 car, Larry. He's wanting to buy now. He'd like to do it early, on, at, right after this restart. Well, and he's good on the short run. I don't know how he's going to be on the long run because we haven't had one yet, but that's five points. Jeff Burton and Derek Cope uh, and Robbie Gordon, of course, also pitted, as did Todd Bodine, who got penalized a lap for pitting out of the box. Dick Bergman. Well, during that caution flag, Junior and his crew had some conversation. Crew chief said, like Gordon is better on the pickup with his tires, but he told Junior it looked like he was doing better down the front. And Junior said he's just not running too hard. He's just waiting for his car to come around. To Matt. Dick Tony Stewart pitted under that caution. He said the car was not terrible, but I feel like now is the time we need to start tinkering with the handling. The car a little tight in the center, but the forward bite off was good. They made a track bar adjustment. He came in 25th, restarted 35th. Yeah, I mean, the good thing about it, he had not made up that much ground from where he started, and he's already back up to 34th, so he really had not given up that much by coming to pit road, especially if that car was not right. Kurt Busch underneath Kevin Harvick, fourth place at stake here. And, Darrell, you raced here yesterday in the Kroger 250, the truck race, and the inside line here is preferred, but what about shoving it in there? How much slip sliding around are you doing? Well, you're just taking advantage of the guy on the outside. You know that he's got to give. You know you're going to make contact. More likely it's going to hurt him more than it is you. So you almost got to yield. You need a yield sign you hang out the window. Casey Kane, Johnny Sauter. Battle on the right as you watch the lead scuffle on the left. Well, the fire, I was watching the 24 car yesterday. He had fire coming out the tailpipes in the middle of the corner like I've never seen before. Tell you what, where Dale Earnhardt Jr. seems so good is getting in the corner, but I believe he might pay the price a little bit on the exit. Turn two, Terry Labonte no may Labonte. have a right I'll side tire know. down. He slid way up the hill on both of the last two laps there, and it looks like Labonte is going to bring his Kellogg Chevy to pit road. It almost looks like a left rear again. Now they're up. They're up. Rick Hendrick, 20th, celebrates the 20th anniversary of Hendrick Motorsports. Jeff Bodine, in pre-race, drove the number five that he raced here to Hendrick's first win many years ago. And Papa Joe restored, had that car restored. Uh, gosh, it looked great to see it again. It really did. Uh, Harry Hyde was the crew chief. And uh, Papa Joe, uh, I know you're watching, buddy. We love you. We're praying for you. And uh, it was good to see that car here. I know you was, uh, that was important to you. Yeah, that was 20 years ago, that first win. Matt Yoakum. Larry Max service already complete on Terry Labonte Chevrolet. A right rear tire was down at first. They were talking about taking four. When they did see it was only the right rear, they took just 
right side tires. And, and you know, Matt, most of the racetracks we go to, like Texas two weeks ago, Talladega next week, you run that inner liner, that safety shield at the speedway. But here at a short track, they don't run that tire within the tire. It's basically tire and rim. So if you cut a valve stem or something or cut the tire, you're all the way on the rim. And then, Larry, you start to race, the air pressure in the left side tires was 8 to 10 pounds. Wow. They look flat. Yeah. And in the right side, you're down to about 18 or 19 pounds. So they don't have a lot of air in them. Terry's going to get a drive through penalty uh, for too fast entering the pit lane. You're watching from Robbie Gordon as Dale Jr. tries to work his way underneath. Gordon is laps down. Inside, inside. Now the thing about that drive through penalty, pit road starts over in turn three. You have to maintain 35 miles an hour, actually 30 miles an hour, all the way to turn two. He's probably, even though he's one lap down, he's going to go another two laps down. Darrell, you were talking about that fire coming out of Jeff Gordon's tailpipe. What that basically is is just raw fuel burning in the exhaust pipe when he's off the throttle. The minute he picks the throttle up, he, you know, the flame goes out. Yeah, but it, it's got to be, there, there's a few cars that do that. Most of the ones that can't see the right side, so they may all be doing it, but he's got his pipes out the left. Most guys have got their pipes out the right-hand side of the car. As Terry Labonte just comes back out on the racetrack right there right there with the leaders. In fact, it drove Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Acar all the way up the racetrack, but he's three laps down now. And Larry, the, the reason that it kind of stuck out to me is that's, a, that's an engine combination thing where they got that overlap in the camshaft and it really lets a lot of raw fuel get in there. Could be some of the secret to his success here. I wonder though, Daryl, does it mean you're consuming more fuel if you're wasting a lot of it out the pipe that way? Got to be, but you know I love flames and I like them coming out <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> he's got them. And he's winning record here proves it works. Watching a battle right here for eighth. That was Ryan Newman in the 12 car, Jimmy Johnson in the 48. And even though the ground that Dell Hart Jr. lost in the eight car to Jeff Gordon in the 24 just a couple laps ago, he's already pulled back to within a car lane. You know, Dale Earnhardt Jr., in 2000, 2001, he first started racing here, he struggled, but he found this place, and he's had four consecutive top five finishes. He was the fastest in practice yesterday. He, he wrecked four times here the first time he came here, and he, he eventually ended up hitting the record. He almost turned the thing over down in turn one and ended up hitting the record. That's how many cars, that's what he hit all day long. Jimmy Johnson moving on Ryan Newman. Right now, this battle is for eighth place, Matt. Mike, earlier in the race, you saw Ryan Newman. He was hung on the outside and he started losing position after position. Under the first caution on lap five, he finally had a chance to talk to Matt Borland. He said the car was very, very loose at the beginning. He felt like due to the rubber on the racetrack from the Craftsman Truck Series race on Saturday, once he could get to the bottom and get into his rhythm, he really felt like the car came back to him. Right now, he really hasn't anything recent on the radio, just trying to hold off that 48. For the lead, Dale Jr. on Jeff Gordon, who has led all 48 laps so far, and he won't lead the 49th. Give that one to Jr. And all 91,000 people were standing up cheering him when he went for the lead here. I really, I think Jeff just got tired of the Jr. being back there banging on him, what I think, and he said, okay, you go in front for a little while, lead those five, get those five points. And you see those fresh right side tires on Terry Labonte in the five car, Jeff Gordon's teammate. They'll make that old car feel real good, at least for a little bit. 50 laps complete the Advanced Auto Parts 500 in Martinsville. Advanced Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. It's time for a fresh one. Grab a Budweiser. The race is on. 58 laps complete of 500 here at Martinsville. And the Bud Car leading, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is also our Chevy points leader, second overall in the next Hell Cup standings. Jeff Gordon, who started on pole and runs in second place, came in here fifth. And Jimmy Johnson, who right now is the eighth place car, came in sixth in the standings. Todd Bodine has taken his car to the garage after 50, 58 laps. I think another guy that's uh, looking pretty good here, Larry, the old 29 car, Kevin Harvey. And the Goodrich car is moving right in on our number uh, 97 of Kurt Busch. Yeah, I talked to Todd Berry, the crew chief on the 29 car this morning. He said they were very, very happy with that race car after the two final practices yesterday morning. And not too far behind them is a yellow car that uh, won the last race. Elliot Sadler. Car, Elliot Sadler. Speaking of yellow, we talked about rookie Brendan Gaughan. 
and uh, how he is progressing. His spotter today, Billy Wilburn, who was Rusty Wallace's crew chief last year. We listened in. All right, Brendan, if you don't hear me say anything, you got a pretty well clear racetrack. Every once in a while, I'll give you a clear, but if you don't hear anything, you can do whatever you want. I'll give you an outside or inside when somebody's with you. 10 4 ball. And you know, I think that's all in what a driver's looking for. Daryl, I've not done a lot of spotting, but I spotted for you a half a dozen races. And I get the feeling you want to know that I'm riding with you and just giving you that insurance at least maybe once every lap or two. Oh, yeah. I, li I, like, to, I like to have the spotter talk to me. I want him to tell me everything he can tell me that make my job easier, really. He can help me a lot and keep me out of trouble. There's Tony Stewart, who restarted 34th after pitting following the second caution. He's now climbed to 26th place. Ooh, a little lock up for Robbie Gordon. Stewart, three wide, squeezed and bumped Gordon up. Casey <laughs> Kane, now he's gonna try Casey. Hammond, how about that? Like I've been watching these guys race here for the last about five or six laps, and it's been pretty ferocious right now. Casey Kane's been falling back. Michael Walter, Tony Stewart, and Ricky Craven, they've been coming to the front right now, and they're not taking any prisoners right now. Yeah, but the problem, Jeff, Mike, is these guys, even though they've got a pretty decent race car by being at the back of the pack, they're three quarters of a lap behind the leader. In other words, they're about the length of a straightaway from being lapped if they're not careful. Yeah, they, the gotta, they gotta get going because uh, these guys are coming in a hurry. That's Jimmy Spencer in the Featherlight Chevy, the number four, just ahead of Jeff Gordon. Gordon's gonna use Spencer as a pick, or is he? Here comes Junior back, fighting back on the outside for the lead. 24 car Gordon's been really good around the inside. Junior looks like he's starting to fade a little. Dick Bergman. Well, Jeff Gordon in car number 24 came on the radio a few moments ago and said that he was very loose going into the corners under braking. That is exactly the same problem Casey Kane has had. Kane has dropped all the way back to the 24th spot after having started up front in today's race. Sam Barrett made a pit stop, came back out. Here is Kane trying to hold back Michael Waltrip and Dale Jarrett. This is at 24th place. Now, Gordon can help that a lot, Larry, if he adjusts his brake bias a little bit. He got a knob in there that they can put more pressure on the front, less pressure on the rear. If he reaches up there and does that, that'll help that get loose getting in problem. But he's right. I noticed the car looks a little shaky getting into the corner, but off well. As you see, Jeff Gordon didn't just use Jimmy Spencer as a pick. He, he leaned on him, used him for support to get off turn two <laughs> without spinning that car out and reestablish his lead over Dale Jr. on the left of your screen. I tell you what, over there in the other box, Rusty Wallace, he just goes by Jeremy Mayfield. So Rusty Wallace in the two car, he breaks in the top ten. But Darrell, going back to adjusting that brake bias, if you're loose getting in, yeah, you can crank. These things have two master cylinders on them. You can crank a little more front brake into it, and that'll help that. But you've got to be careful that you don't put too much there because that will overwork the front brakes. Yeah, they got such huge. I'm telling you, I never, I never felt such good brakes. You, you can hammer, you can hammer the brakes here now. They're huge, and they, 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 don't, they don't give up like they used to. And we're riding with Jeff Burton right here. This is right front. Look right there how much that thing's glowing like molten lava in the corner. And even on the straightaway, when, where it gets a little bit of a break, it's still glowing. So that's the more front brake you crank in it, the more work that thing's going to have to do, and it's doing plenty already. Well, Burton, you try to, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead. What you try to do is balance those great big fronts that they got now with some bigger rears. And the bigger rear caliper is what gets you loose. Still there. Still there. Still there. Still there. Jeff Burton trying to stay on the lead lap. This is a backup car. His primary car crashed in final practice yesterday. Got the battle for second place heating up right here. Jamie McMurray in the 42 car on the inside of Dale Earnhardt Jr. I believe Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car is starting to fade just a little bit here, about 75 laps into this race. Jamie's going to take second place away. Gordon still unable to clear Jeff Burton, who's fighting hard to keep his Roush forward on the lead lap. And, and that's the thing that the leader really has to fight here. Now that we've had this long of a green run, he starts coming up on these lap cars. I mean, we got race cars all the way around this racetrack, and they're going to fight him harder than anyone. 38 car winner from Texas, Elliot Sadler. He keeps moving forward as well. This has not been one of his favorite racetracks, but he seemed pretty pumped up this weekend. Had his best start ever at Martinsville today. Yeah, I mean, he did finish fifth here a year ago, but in 10 starts, that's the only top 10 finish he's ever had here. He's kind of struggled qualifying and on race day. 
but he has confidence now. Yes. Let's go to Matt for an update on Sadler and Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch running in the sixth position. Elliot Sadler, the Texas winner, running in fifth. Both drivers are fighting the same condition in their race cars. Tight in the center, but the 97 of Kurt Busch says his car is tight not only in the center, but all the way through exit. But still, they are moving forward, trying to chase down the leaders. Mark Martin just passed Jeremy Mayfield, puts him up to 11th. Mark's Viagra Ford started 19th today. He's under a little pressure there from Johnny Sauter. And this ought to be a track that Mark really does well. I mean, he's an ASA short track ace from uh, his early years. And he's won here before, and this should be a good place for him. He kind of surprised us, Daryl, in his interview Friday after qualifying. He was asked, how do you like this place? He says, I hate it. Yeah. But he yeah. does well here. Oh, he does. Well, it just challenges you. That's why, you know, you, you hate some places that challenge you. And this is one of them. I tell you, a car that qualified good here on Friday was Ward Burton in that zero car. Now, he did just get passed by Rusty Wallace for the ninth position. But I tell you, that car is showing like it has the potential to be pretty decent here on the long run. Now, Ward's not had a lot of success here in Cup. He did win a bush race here several years ago. But he's maintaining. But right now, Mark Martin in the sixth car looks like he wants to take that top ten spot away from Ward Burton. Yesterday in the truck race, this is about when the tires really started to give up, when the cars really started to slide around. And if you were push, pushing, you really pushed. If you're loose, you got really loose. And that's when you start screaming, need some help, guys. And, and the real challenge here, Daryl, as you well know by running here for so many years, is you get the car not turning in the middle, and the crew chief and the crew starts working on the car to make it rotate the middle. Then you get it loose off. It's it's a huge compromise, center and off the corner. Here's a cat that's been coming forward for quite a while now, that 29 car, Kevin Harvick, and he's all over the back of Junior. I tell you, he's got about the best looking car out there right now. Matt? Mike, the 29 working the bottom on both ends, working on that driver eight. Kevin was telling his team the car was really tight. He was trying to end. A 22 race win the streak pick up his first short track winning cup working all over Dale Jr. Meanwhile, Jimmy McMurray up in second. His car is opposite to how it was in the final practice session where it was loose on exit and final practice. Now the car is tight, but he is moving up. Dale Jr. led 17 laps today. Jeff Gordon started on pole and then regained the lead. He's out front at lap 82 after having led 65 of 82 laps. There's a look at your top five after 90 laps in the Advanced Auto Parts 500 and this beautiful half-mile speedway that's shaped like a paperclip with drag strip straightaways and those sharp U-turns thanks to our Quaker State aerial coverage. 90,000 fans here, packed in. They want action. They're getting it. Right now, it looks like a conveyor belt <laughs> <Yeah>. for these <laughs> cars. <laughs> Mark Martin working inside, chasing Rusty Wallace as he gets past Kurt Busch. Rusty's car looks really good right now, Mike. Uh, he's he's passed a lot of cars. He's up to ninth place, up to eighth there. Moving forward. How about clear, it, Matt? Clear. Steve? Hey, DW, Rusty likes the car. He just told crew chief Larry Carter that he has adjusted a little more rear brake bias into that car, that number two car. He said he wants his car to feel a little more edgy. Steve, that's opposite of Jeff Gordon. Evidently, Rusty was a little bit pushing getting into the center uh, upon braking, so he is, he's cranked a little rear brake into it, and that will help the car turn under braking. The battle for third is on the left of your screen. The battle for eighth is on the right. We use this two box because there's so much good racing here. We need a 10 box to show all the side-by-side -side racing, I think. But two will do for now. Don't tell Artie that we'll have 10 of them up there in a minute. <laughs> Hey, Darrell. Watch this. How about a, let's Brady bunch it. How about a nine box? <laughs> Hardy, can you do it? We'll get there. He and Richie Basile get us there. Our technical director. Jeff Gordon, our leader at 95 laps. Jamie McMurray, Elliot Sadler, Jimmy Johnson, and Dale Jr. are the top five as we close in on 100 laps in this race. There we there go. There it is. Now, 
What is you want to talk about? What'd you, <laughs> you take three, I'll take three. We I'll, got breaks down here. We got action on the track. I'll take Whoopi Goldberg to block. We got a, we got a suspension cam. Pretty much have it all. How about Tony Stewart? He made that early pit stop and came up from the mid 30s now into 14th place. He restarted 34th. And the biggest thing that I see, Mike, it wasn't that long ago that he was 16 seconds behind our leader, Jeff Gordon. Now, as we close in on lap 100, as you say, he's in 14th. He's within 11 seconds, so he has driven away from those guys. He was racing a while ago, Matt, just to try to make sure he stays on the lead lap. Larry Mack, the fastest car on the racetrack, lap after lap, turning laps faster than leader Jeff Gordon. The track bar adjustment back on lap 29 has made that race car come to life. He says it still won't turn like I need it, but the forward bite off the corner is unbelievable. It's already been a big weekend for Tony Stewart. Friday night, he flew to Sedalia, Missouri, and drove a 360 wing sprint car picking up the win for the second time in his career. A big win for Tony, a car prepared by Danny Lasowski's father. I'll tell you another thing that's going to help him too is if this, if just say this went green for uh, another 50 laps. People might have to start thinking about green flag pit stops. He's got a little cushion there as well. Yes, he does. Derek, about 25 laps. Derek Cope just made a stop in the uh, Arnold development number 50 as Ryan Newman and Dale Jr. battle for sixth place. I mean, we definitely talk about comers and goers, and now that we've had this long of a green one run, one of the, the goers seems to be Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that eight car, as we documented, Tony Stewart seems to be one of the comers in the 20 car. And Rusty Wallace is right behind Dale Jr. now in the two car, and uh, looking to the inside, and here he comes. I, it's, that, what happened to Junior's car is exactly what I saw it do in practice yesterday. Really fast for a few laps. Then it started to fade and fade and fade. How about it, Dick? Well, the fade right now is that Junior's car has gotten tight. And interestingly enough, this is one of the oldest cars they have in the stable. This is the same car that Junior has run in every single Nextel Cup race he has ever competed in here at Martinsville. Car number 003. Tony Huey Sr. talked to me about it this morning and seemed amazed that after the crashes they had as Junior was learning this place, that they were actually able to save that race car. Now they need to be able to dial it in if they hope to win this afternoon. 003, I think I drove that in 98. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you about another comer. I've been watching the guy that's second in points coming into Marksville, Matt Kenseth. Typical Matt Kenseth weekend, qualified back in 29th. I looked up about 30 or 40 laps ago. He was in that group with Tony Stewart, looking like he was just about a half a straightaway from going a lap down. Now he is sitting there in 16th position, only about a half a lap down. And that 21 car, Ricky Rudd, you, you felt like this may be a racetrack where they could maybe get that, that race team just a little bit on track, and he's sitting up there right now in 15th position, qualified in 14th. As we talked about in qualifying, this is the only short track the Wood Brothers used to run. They ran all the speedways and the road courses with drivers like David Pearson. But they've only won, they have won two wins here, the Wood Brothers do, from Stewart, Virginia, 68 with Cale Yarbrough in 1973. Uh, with David Pearson. This is the Woods 100th Martinsville race for car 21. It's Ricky Rudd's 50th career start here, and he alone has three wins. Kenseth continues to work the bottom and move up. Steve Burns. Mike Joy, early in this race, Matt Kenseth said that his car was tight as the race went along and kept getting better and better, but right now he's describing his race car as a little bit free getting in the corners. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart has picked up another spot. He has passed Dale Earnhardt Jr. to move up to ninth. You know, Daryl, of all the things that the driver would tell me, as long as that thing's turning good in the middle and has good forward bite off the corner, I'm not going to get too alarmed or get too aggressive with adjustments for that little bit of free getting in. You don't beat people getting in the corner, Bart, you beat them from the center off. Exactly, and I tell you, getting four tires today is the most critical thing you can do. Every time that caution comes out, I'd get me four, even if I do lose track position. I think tires are more important today than track position is today at this race. Jeff Gordon comes around to complete 109 laps in the Advanced Auto Parts 500. Of those 109, he has led 91 and trying to become the first cup driver to win three straight from the pole since Darrell Waltrip did it at Bristol in 81 and 82. It's a 
three car battle for the lead off turn number two. Jimmy Johnson just got past Jamie McMurray as we came back from break. You saw him take second. Now he wants first from his mentor, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he, he's coming forward with the, his tires. Look like his car's really good on these older tires. How about the leader, Dick Bergeron? Jeff Gordon came on the radio on lap 108 and told his crew that the rear tires were gone. And shortly after that, he began searching for better lines where to run on the racetrack with those worn out back tires. Matt? Dick, Jimmy Johnson, his teammate, is quickly closing that gap now down to just two tenths of a second behind his teammate. Now he takes the lead going into turn one. Jimmy Johnson was telling Jack Knauss the car was a little bit free, but very, very good. And you know, guys, this place, it, it, it'll make you pull your hair out because your car goes away like Jeff Gordon's his rear tires is gone. We're still about 30 oh. minutes from pit stop. Schrader pounded the wall on the front straightaway. Caution is out. Caution is out. That car hit the wall about 100, 150 feet before the start finish line and then just went into a series of spins and ended up with the right front trashed on the Schwann's home know, service 49. Kenny's all right. He's dropped the window net. Let's see what happens. That's Kyle Petty behind him. No contact. Oh. Oh, yeah. Joe Nemechek in the 01 car moved down right into Kenny Schrader in the 49. Yeah, Kenny was down the inside, and, and uh, Nemechek in the 01 just turned it dead left and got into Kenny right there. You can see he was making such a run on Kyle Petty in the 45, but he had to, had to get out behind him, and here come Kenny. And he, this was right in, in front of the leaders. Hermie Sadler's view. And here's Schrader climbing out at, at a track where he thought he could have one of his best results of the season, mirroring Bristol. Not today. Tell you what, this was a huge break for people like Scott Riggs, Kurt Busch, Hermie Sadler, who's still on the lead light, Scott Wimmer, Kyle Petty. Big break for those guys. And the free pass car will be the number 15 of Michael Waltrip. The Advance Auto Parts 500, 120 laps complete. Stops. Here's Matt. A wedge adjustment already completed on Jimmy Johnson Chevrolet to try to fix the loose condition. They've also made an air pressure adjustment down on all four tires. He's down and away, Dick. Gordon apologized to his crew for losing the lead, said there was nothing he could do. The crew's going to fix that. They're going to fire four tires at it. One round in the track bar to try to get that forward bite. Junior had the same problem. Bite, and Gordon is going to come out third. I'll tell you what, that 20 car, he, he's going to be a factor, Steve Burns. Larry, Larry Mack, Mark Martin likes his race car. They made no adjustments on that number six. He said the car is neutral. That's a good thing. Just tires of gas on that number six for Mark Martin. There'll be a lot of cleanup on the front straightaway. They did lift off Kenny Schrader's car. Uh, but a lot of fluid to be cleaned up there. Here's the race off pit road as they exit turn two with Jimmy Johnson. Jamie McMurray, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart. Gordon, of course, having that final pit spot. And there's Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace, Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, and Elliot Sadler. The lap down cars make a pit stop, and we will too. You're watching NASCAR on Fox, the Advanced Auto Parts 500 at Martinsville. 100 on Fox is brought to you by Miller. Vote Miller for president of beer. Good call. By Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Eating good in the neighborhood. By the new Chevrolets. An American Revolution. And by AOL 9.0, now with top speed technology. Back under green, Jimmy Johnson has the lead. It's the first time he's ever led a cup race here at Martinsville. Jamie McMurray, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Mark Martin. One thing I'm going to really be watching with a curious here to see how the 20 car does now, Tony Stewart. He's been in the pits earlier, made some adjustments, had fresher tires. Let's see now if that car is as good as everybody else's once they get adjusted up on fresher tires. He was in a lap 28 and also pitted on this caution. Steve Burns. And Mike, Kenny Schrader just out of the infield care center. Kenny, no, I, I feel okay. okay. We're concerned about you. Yeah, how are you? What happened? Uh, we were running like 20 at 21st, just trying to go, wait for a pit stop. And I got underneath Joe Nemechek, and he cut left. I was up already pretty far, but it wasn't.
wasn't Joe's fault, but it, it turned us around. I liked it a long time ago, you know, when we didn't have spotters. That way you actually had to keep track where everybody else was. Now you just turn because everybody, nobody tells you nothing, but it just happened. Thanks for the makeup job. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. We're talking about cars losing forward bike. This is Chef Gordon's left front. Inspection holes, I dare you. I just took a look at Junior's tires. His are the same. The rear tires are about gone. The front tires look great. Yeah, I mean, Dick, you know, you're so slow in the corner here, and then you match the throttle with that 800-something horsepower to the rear tires, and you just spin the rear tires. And that's normally the tires that wear out is not only the left rear, but I bet if you looked at their right rear, it probably looked the same way. Never saw a dragster wear out the front tires. Now, Matt Kenseth. His crew has had a chance to tweak on that number 17 as he battles Ryan Newman for 10th. Meanwhile, up at second place, Jeff Gordon back inside of the 42. And McMurray trying to work, work the outside around. I think Gordon's got the line here. Yeah, that inside, a lot of grip right down there on the bottom, especially when you come off the corner. It's where they ground the racetrack. And there's an area down there where it's not been ground, and it seems like there's a lot of grip there. You know, we were just looking at Kenseth in that 17 car. Yeah, he's been making moves on the racetrack, but once again, as we see race in and race out, his guys made a big move for him on that pit road, on that last pit stop. And one thing I'm not seeing with this tire combination, last year here you could run up on the outside and pass cars. This year, everybody's back down there hugging that curb again. They don't slide up much away from the curb, so I think the track doesn't have the grip in it used to have. Rusty Wallace, Darrell, is after Tony Stewart. He's been working him on the inside a couple of laps and wants to muscle him up for it. Yeah, Rusty's really good, and uh, this is Rusty's kind of racetrack. If he's going to win a race, he could win here very easily. Still out there. I'm impressed with that other blue car right there, though, right behind him, Mark Mark. And, and you know, uh, Darrell, we were talking on Friday Still out there. Right? about a lot of the young guys that qualified up in the front. And when I look at these three guys right there, Mark Martin in the six, Tony Stewart in the 20, and Rusty Wallace in the two car, those guys right there alone have nine head wins head at this place. Yeah, but let me tell you something. <laughs> Rusty ran uh, Tony up the hill down here in turns three and four and got by him, and Tony is after him with oh, a yeah. vengeance. He didn't appreciate that. No, he's letting him know it, too. Yes. Again, Darrell, that's so much what's so fun about watching a race here. These fans, like you said in the open, they sit right on top of the action. They see all this. Got a blown engine there in the 41 car, looks like, or a gear. I'm not sure which, but the uh, smoke coming out of the back of it. He's in the garage. No caution. Uh, Casey Mears, a lot of smoke from the right front corner of that car. I think it, 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 one thing you can notice here, you might see a lot of smoke out of a lot of cars here in the, coming out the back of the gears. They burn up the gears, and they say that... Uh, the spotter told him he smelled rear end grease. I'm kidding, but seriously, how about smoke from under the helmet? I mean, mm. keeping that driver pinned in and under control of, of his emotions. And you saw what Tony Stewart just did. Rusty Wallace roughed him up. Tony said, okay, I'm, I'm going to let you know I wasn't happy about that. Did a little tattoo on his bumper and then got back to racing. Yeah, and definitely the, uh, Rusty Wallace in the two is faster than Tony was, but Tony didn't appreciate the way he passed him. Steve Burns. And Mike, a follow-up on Casey Mears. We just found out that they are having drivetrain problems. They're going to have to change a gear. And as you said, he is in the garage. They're also going to check on the drive shaft. Matt Yoke. Steve, what better way to celebrate the anniversary of your first Nextel Cup win 20 years later than to watch two of your cars run 1-2 on the racetrack? It seems like over the past 20 years, all the Hendricks have been involved in racing. Rick, his brother John, father Papa Joe, and even son Ricky. But for the Johnson family, that's been the one constant for them as well. Jimmy drives his father. Gary drives his motor coach. His mom runs his fan club. And his two younger brothers have also started racing as well. But last night, Jimmy borrowed Rusty Wallace's helicopter to go to Hickory. He saw his younger brother, Jarrett, win for the first time. Jimmy's been able to see it. Remember back to Darlington. Jarrett won a late model race the night before. Maybe we're seeing a little deja vu again. Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, Ford and Dodge side by side. Boy. And look looked like Rusty just let him go, Darrell. Uh, I tell you, Mark's getting such a bite off the corner there. I believe that 
He was in the throttle and Rusty wasn't. Well, look right here. What I see, Daryl, is that car can run around the bottom. It rotates. It turns. When he points, it matches the throttle. It accelerates. It don't spin the rear tires as bad, at least for right now. Jeff? Guys, watching the 20 car of Tony Stewart, he was so good early on, especially when he had those fresh tires and everybody else. But watching him now, especially from up here, the car goes in, it seems like it gets the center of the corner. He can't get it to rotate to get that Ford bike to drive off the corner like he had earlier. I got to do some more work on that car. Earlier in the day, we talked about independence versus the the uh, green flag and park and field filler types. Morgan Shepard and that John Deere Green number 89 got his first career win here driving a Pontiac for Cliff Stewart. He is out there today and Morgan at age 62 says his game plan is to run all day, post the best finish he can. He's a lap down in 31st, but he intends to go the distance. You know what we used to do a long time ago when I was sort of an independent, I came to the racetrack. There were some people I couldn't beat. That was one of my problems. I'd blow up or have problems trying to beat people I couldn't beat. I tried to, I finally figured out, race the people you can beat, and then uh, you'll have a good day. And you know what, guys, for that long green run we had earlier, Morgan's sitting here right now in 32nd, only one lap down. He shows up with, he has one race car. He shows up with it every week. He only has one engine. They changed valve springs and stuff on it. He didn't even have a real good toolbox to bring here. He went by Rusty Wallace's bush shop earlier in the week. Barry Dodson gave him a toolbox to bring here. Wow. Well, call him an independent. Don't call him a field filler. Sterling Marlin, sixth place now over Tony Stewart. And now Elliot Sadler draws in on Stewart. Daryl, you were right. Now that everybody's had a chance to work on their cars, they're as good as Stewart was during that long green run or better. Yeah, I think 30 laps difference in your tires makes all the difference in the world. It makes you look like a hero. But I, I felt like when they all got on equal tires, see how, see how good he was then. But, you know, DW, the only thing I'll say there, you know, of those first 30 laps, we ran about almost 20 laps of caution. I think the big thing was they were able to work on their car and tweak it a little bit as well. Yeah, the other guys didn't get in until the, you know, 120 some laps there. Jimmy Johnson, your leader at lap 151. Here's the points leader, Kurt Busch, working on Ward Burton. This is for 18th place. And they're about 13 seconds off the lead right now. Casey Kane just ahead of them, 17th. The California kid, for the first time in his cup career, leads at Martinsville Speedway in the Advanced Auto Parts 500. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway, where caution has just flown for rookie Scott Riggs, who spun his Valvoline Chevy coming off turn number four down to the inside of the front straightaway. Traffic oncoming, and caution resulted. Riggs will be on the right side of your screen coming into the picture. Oh, yeah, Kyle Petty couldn't go, and here comes Michael, and Scott Riggs had to pay for that. It's what happened, two cars in front of him is what started all this. This right here would be tough I've ever seen. Tony is, the 12 car passed Tony. Tony didn't like it. Same kind of thing he did to Rusty earlier. Maybe he thinks that's Rusty. But Daryl, the thing I'm gonna say here at lap 162, when Tony Stewart bends his radiator ductwork up or busts the radiator in that race car, there's, there's no sense in that going on here at lap 162, battling for ninth position. No, I didn't quite get that. Ryan with Casey Kane, Dodge front runners in this race at 162 laps. Jamie McMurray in third, Rusty Wallace fifth, Sterling Marlin sixth. You know, when when uh, Kenny Schrader wrecked here on the front, Kyle was coming off a of turn four, had to check up a little bit. Nemechek swung out from behind Kyle and that's, hit Schrader. That's right. This time, Kyle's coming off a of turn four. And, had, and the victim was Nemechek's teammate. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the Coincidence. The, Coincidence. The victims right now are all these pit crews, Steve Burns. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry Mack, Mark Martin says his car is just a little bit free in, but I don't want to adjust anything on this race car right now. So Todd Ziegler and Drew Flickensturfer change tires on that six car. Matt. Jimmy Johnson, the leader, says his car is still too free on entry. Kenny Tulo Briggs took a half a pound of air pressure out of the right rear. They've also made a track bar adjustment. He's down and away. Jamie McMurray finished up with his service. There's Jeff Gordon right at the very front of pit road, getting away, and here comes the pack. On exit. 
Ryan Newman actually in the 12 car won the battle off pit road. And, and I think maybe they paid attention to Terry Labonte a while ago, how good he was on just two right side tires. And I'm going to say here looking with possibly about 30 something laps on those tires that Ryan Newman, Matt Borland decided to roll the dice, change his two right side tires. Matt, uh, Ryan Newman was out in front of that group right there. I don't think that's a very good plan. It'll be a short term success for a long term failure. Maybe he's figuring that puts him quite a ways away from that 20 car. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what it is. We're about one third distance at Martinsville, Virginia, in the Advance Auto Parts 500. Brian Newman will be the new leader when we go back to green. Fox is brought to you by Miller. Vote Miller for president of beer. Good call. By Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood. By the new Chevrolets, an American revolution. And by AOL 9.0, now with top speed technology. Jack Roush's Hot Rodding Mustangs. This weekend, Ford celebrates Mustang's 40th anniversary, and Roush has created seven customized Mustangs available at many Ford dealers. The Roush Performance Mustangs begin with Stage 1, inexpensive appearance modifications. Jack is driving the group's high end, a zippy, supercharged version with a retro look, exhausted growls, four on the floor, and a truly high-performance racing-related handling package. Jack's smile when he drives says it all. Modified from the original, delivered directly to Ford dealers by Roush Performance, these hot Mustangs are like Jack Roush race cars, built for tough. Thanks, Dick. Green flag, Brian Newman leads the field off into turn one. That's Greg Biffle trying to get a lap back on the inside. Jimmy Johnson second, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Jamie McMurray, Tony Stewart, Matt Kenseth, and Elliot Sadler. You, you know, we were talking about Greg Biffle there. He's a lap down, but he wants to try to stay in touch with that leader. So if the uh, caution comes out, he can get that lap back. And speaking of free pass cars, Brian Vickers in the 25 car was the free pass car on that last caution. So we still have 25 cars on the lead lap. And Daryl, getting that free pass, it, there's a lot more work to that than just being lucky. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to figure, you know, crew's got to help you a little bit, spotter, because there's so many cars a lap down, and you want to be at the front of that pack. Hermie Sadler still on the lead lap, Larry. He's sitting there in 24th position, and uh, you know he's he was close to going a lap down. But let's let's we got a special little camera shot here on Hermie's rear suspension. See the shock absorber right here. Of course, this is the trailer arm. There you see the drive shaft. We've talked about these things turning almost 93, 94, 9500 RPMs. We talked about burning a gear up right there. That's one of the cooler lines that circulates the gear foot. Now look at this big orange hose right here with this duck right here. What that is, Jeff Hammond, you maybe can expand on a little bit. That's cooling those rear brakes. We've talked about taking care of these brakes. This is one of the ways they do it is with these ducks to cool the rear brakes. Larry, you're exactly right. And the thing is about the little ones down at the bottom in the rear, talked to one of the brake engineers this week. He said, Jeff, we're really concerned. So many drivers are running so much more rear brake than ever before. They do not get the cooling that you normally get in the front. We showed you the big brake ducts we run on the front to cool the front ones. But right now, they're beginning to overheat the rears and boil the rear fluid. And that's a major concern with a lot of these teams about running these big rear calipers today. Thanks, Jeff. Third place battle behind Ryan Newman and Jimmy Johnson has two of this track's winningest drivers. In fact, winningest active drivers, Rusty Wallace outside of Jeff Gordon for third. The two car with Rusty aboard is uh, looking pretty racy to me, Larry. Yes, he is. Steve Burns. Hey, guys, on the last pit stop, Rusty Wallace said his car is good. They put one round of wedge in the left rear of that number two car. Dick. Jeff Gordon has got one of the very, probably the best pit stall of anybody here at Martinsville today. Nobody in front of him on the last round of pit stops. She came in second, went out fourth because he lost one spot because Newman took only two tires. And a good stop, no errors, and they just got beat. Matt. Dig the 12 did take two tires. He says the car still lacks a little bit of forward drive off the corner, but he is working on it. It is definitely a lot better than it was earlier in the race. What he's going to lack, Daryl, is the lead. Jimmy Johnson's all over him. Jimmy has four fresh tires. Matt only, or rather, Brian only has two. Yeah, and, and the left side tires are really what's wearing the most. And so uh, I don't, I didn't really, I don't really agree with that call. I don't think that'll pay off for him. 
And, Daryl, I think the thing these guys have to do is Jimmy Johnson in the 48 caught him in a hurry as they need to talk to Ryan Newman. Don't push the envelope. Don't use your stuff up even more up here battling Jimmy Johnson with four fresh tires for the lead. I think the key to Ryan's strategy is they're looking for a couple of cautions in quick succession. They took two to get track position. If they can get another caution quickly, then they can get their four tires if everybody else stops with them. Yeah, telling him to take it easy. Be like, <laughs> <laughs> be like telling a dog to go, let go of the bone. <laughs> if they keep this up side by side, they're going to have Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace right with them for the lead. It'll look like Nashville last week in the closing laps in the Bush Series. And yes, Gordon is there because of the side-by-side -side racing up front. That's brought Jeff Gordon right back to the leaders. And it's pretty much sucking that two car up, Rusty Wallace, right up to the rear bumper of that 24 car. We got four cars right there within about four car lengths of each other. Rusty's pretty good, but I tell you, I think he looked better on the run before this. They must have tightened him up a little bit, Larry, because he looks like he's pushing off the corner now. The, the biggest thing I'm seeing with Rusty Wallace, Larry Carter, the new crew chief now, is consistency because before Bristol, they were 23rd in points. After that run at Bristol in Texas, he is now up to 11th in points. So they're showing consistency week in and week out in all the different types of racetracks. Well, I think the light finally came on for Rusty. He had to listen to the engineers. He had to listen to the crew chief, and he had to make changes that he wasn't happy about. Trouble for Jimmy Spencer off turn two. I don't believe he got a piece of the wall, but he is at reduced speed, and he will pit. Jeff Gordon working over Ryan Newman for second place, and Rusty's there as well. And Larry, just no more than I, you know, drove the truck yesterday, no more than I get to race these days. I, I have come to realize that those cats with those computers can make a hero out of you if you'll listen to them. Well, the biggest thing they look is Jeff Gordon kind of banked off Ryan Newman in the 12 <laughs> car down there in turn two that time. Is the engineering, what I'm seeing, even with our engineers at Bang Racing, they're looking for trends. And, and they're able to do things, they're able to do simulation programs that we can't even do at the racetrack. Gordon makes it through for second. So now it's the two Hendrick Chevys in front of the two Penske Dodges. With fifth place held down by Mark Martin's Ford, then Jamie McMurray's Dodge, Elliott Sadler's Ford, Sterling Marlin, Kevin Harvick, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., your top ten. The saving grace for Ryan Newman in the 12 if Rusty Wallace, his teammate in the two, indeed gets by him. It looks like he will possibly down here headed off into turn one and two. Is There's quite a bit of daylight. He's not ready to give up, up yet, but there's quite a bit of daylight back to the fifth-place car of Mark Martin. Off the corner, I think, is where they really hurt Rusty's car. I heard them say they put around a bite in it. It's tightening him up too much exiting a corner. One hundred eighty six laps down of five hundred five hundred laps around here baby that's a hard day's work I'm telling you people don't realize how hard you work here Wallace keeps after it now uh, they're not racing like teammates Daryl not right here no they're not and again people don't realize what a physically demanding place this is you are fighting that steering wheel all the time using your brakes you're in traffic you better put your work clothes on when you come here. Now, right behind these guys, this is the third and fourth place car. As I just saw Mark Martin, who's in the Around. sixth, he was running in fifth. Jamie McMurray in the 42 caught him. He caught him in a hurry. You know what Mark did? He moved over, let him go by. That way, Mark don't lose a bunch of ground to back there to uh, what would be the seventh place car, Elliott Sadler. The Advance Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. By McDonald's. By Coca-Cola, let's make it real. And by Ford, the official truck of NASCAR. In front of 91,000 fans, the shortest distance around of any track on the Nextel Cup circuit, where they've been racing since 1949. Jimmy Johnson, one of only four drivers to lead today. First time he's ever led here. And now Dale Earnhardt Jr., who led earlier, trying to come back against the 29 of Kevin Harvick. Yeah, this is a battle for ninth, and I've been watching the Budweiser car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight. I think the last two pit stops they've been adjusting on that car. This is something this group has done a good job this year, is adjusting and keeping up at the racetrack, and I think that car is much better now than it was. Well, it, it, that's, I think, a product of Dale Jr. giving them more information, more do it, tell them what the car needs. And I think that's made a huge difference. 
Dick Bergman. Good observation by Larry McReynolds because Junior radioed his crew just a couple of laps before and said the car is much better than it's been. They are adjusting it correctly, Larry. And as I say, that's something they've been doing a very good job of this year, contrary to the past. For the lead, left side of your screen, Jeff Gordon wants to take it away from Jimmy Johnson. The two Hendrick Chevys battle for the lead. And not much of a battle. Johnson gives way. No, he let up and uh, let him get down in there in front of him, which was the right thing to do. Right now, there's nobody around him. This kind of reminds me of Formula One with Michael Schumacher and uh, and and uh, Barrichello, the way they kind of run one and two and swap around every now and then. I tell you, a guy that's been hanging out right there in the top ten. They had some good pit stops, and ever since about on lap. Uh, 30, he's been up there, Sterling Marlin in this Coors Light car, the 40 car. He qualified back in 18th. Now he's sitting there in seventh position right behind Mark Martin. This group came up here and tested, and I think that test paid off. He's been solid ever since he dropped the green flag. Steve Burns. And Mike, a good indication as to how good his race car is on the last pit stop. They made no adjustments to that number four of Sterling Marlins, but the crew is readying ice packs. It's very hot here today, as you mentioned, so they're going to get some ice packs in for a little driver comfort next time Sterling stops. Got to take care of the old mule. You know him to go flying out there, you know. <laughs> oh, God. The Hendrick Chevys leading here at Martinsville. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson running 1-2. Earlier today, that's Rick Hendrick on the right, his current drivers. And the man on the left is Jeff Bodine with the car that he drove and Papa Rick Hendrick had restored. They didn't have a sponsor when they went around here at Martinsville. The win attracted Bob Adams and Northwest Security Life to sponsor that car, Rick Hendrick Racing. Fox welcomes you back to the Advance Auto Parts 500. A quick recap. Robbie Gordon and teammate Johnny Sauter get into it. And it's a cut tire for Gordon. who goes a lap down later, seven laps down. Sauter may not be a teammate for very long. And then Jeff Gordon, who led the first 48 laps, passed by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. led for 17 laps. And Jeff Gordon takes the lead back on lap 66. But that teammate thing continued. Jimmy Johnson, whose car owner is Jeff Gordon, part of the Hendricks team. Jimmy Johnson takes the lead. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart working his way up from 30th as high as 4th. After pushing around Rusty Wallace, Rusty Wallace's teammate, Ryan Newman, gets a little love tap from Tony Stewart. And currently, 208 laps through, Jeff Gordon is leading with Jimmy Johnson, currently running second as we are back to live action, Jeff Hammond. And how about Tony? Sure, we have seen him frustrated throughout some of the short track races this year. What do we call that, Chris? A little fram and a little bamming? That's Tony Stewart right there. He loves the rub. If you get him mad, he'll rub on you really big time. And currently running a 13th. Now, the teammate thing. Now, at this point of the race, and Daryl touched on it with Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. Hey, I'll let him go by me, right? Are you running your own race? Is somebody telling you at the head of the team, hey, ease up here, let this guy go there? I think right there you're not being told that. Save your car. But in my opinion, if you want to learn anything, you want to get behind the guy that's been winning all the races up here. And I think that's exactly what Jimmy Johnson did. All right, let's check it on Dale Jarrett, who's up to 14th, looking for his first win of this season. He has run well here before. Well, Dale Jarrett right there came up here with a brand new car. And, I mean, he started way back That's there. That's Jeff in Green zipping by him. Right, Jeff Green. He's getting under Jeff Green. And again, Jeff Green's having a pretty solid run also. He's up to 27th. Both those guys trying to dig their way back up through the field. And uh, Jeff Green's trying to get in position. So maybe if the caution does come out, he can get his lap back. Now, why does the number 1,000 stand out when you watch this race? Because it's about the number of times these guys will go to the throttle and they'll also go to the brake. You think about it. Look the back straightaway, you're on the gas, slam on brakes, come up the front straightaway, grab that gas again, and back on the brakes. So these guys are really working, and here's another guy that's working Kyle pretty Petty. hard today. Kyle Petty, he's up to 23rd, still on the lead lap, trying to hang in there and make something happen today. Started 31st. And trying to get up and pass uh, Brian Vickers. So we got about 24 cars on the lead lap. Is that higher than average for this kind of race? Uh, so far, I think so, but uh, we've had some, a lot of green runs yet. And last two cars on the lead lap, those that you are checking, and that would be uh, Ward Burton and Joe Nemechek. And as we check back in, Jeff Gordon continuing to lead Jimmy Johnson. Rusty Wallace running third. Let's rejoin Mike, Larry, and Darrell. Thanks, Chris. Darrell, we talked a little about team racing as it's practiced in Formula One with Ferrari, where they do have team orders. But the big Cro oh, trouble. Three. Brendan Gaughan goes around. Here comes the leader. He gets out of the throttle. That's a break for Kyle Petty who is ahead of Jeff Gordon at the moment of caution. 
Not sure about Ward Burton, whether he'll remain on the lead lap or not after Brendan Gaughan's spin. Hold your steady there. I tell you, Brendan did a good job. He spun that thing around. It was headed right for the fence, locked it down. He got a big boot, though, from uh, the 25 car. That's what sent him around, Brian Vickers. We're riding with Hermie Sadler right here. We're not sure. He, he may, I think he'd win a lap down, but he possibly may be the free pass car. We'll just have to see after they unravel it. See how they sort it out. We're talking about Ferrari Dural team orders. Here, there are no team orders because the cars have different sponsors on the same team, so not a lot of that that goes on. Here's what happened going into three off, uh, was that Brian Vickers? Vickers, yeah. Vickers. Look at all that smoke, and I know that doesn't look like a lot here, but uh, when you're out there on the racetrack down in it, can't see a thing. Here's what Hermie Sadler saw. You see him right behind Jeff Gordon, but I think he's going to be trapped behind Ward Burton at the moment of caution. That's where the spotters are the most important to the driver when they say, go low, go low, or go high, whatever the situation may be. That's when you really can uh, need a good spotter, like I got, Larry Mack. Ah, uh, that was fun yesterday. <laughs> we were doing it there until the 249th and a half lap. Using your <laughs> phrase, though, I picked a heck of a week to give up Prozac. <laughs> yeah, you did. It was nerve-wracking, wasn't it? Yeah, but you were coming to the front when you spun. That oh, yeah, we difference. were passing people. Our NASCAR race menu is brought to you by Wendy's Classic Hamburgers. It's better here. Saturday, boy, from the shortest track to the longest, from the flattest to the steepest. We're at Talladega with NASCAR Busch Series racing the RNs 312, 2 p.m. Eastern. And Sunday, the next Hell Cup Series race with the RNs 499, 1 o'clock Eastern, and they're both on Fox. So different than what we see here today. White knuckle racing. It's the most mentally testing thing I think I've ever done is uh, drive a race car 500 miles at Talladega and Daytona. Looks pretty physical, too. It's that way. All right, pit stops for the lead lap cars. Under this, the fifth caution flag of the day. Jeff Gordon leads them down as Rusty Wallace peels off in front of Steve Burns. Mike, Rusty Wallace says, no adjustments, guys. I want four tires and get a tear off off my windshield so I can see better. Larry Carter, the crew chief, said 10-4, stop on your board. That's what he did. Let's go to Matt. One round up on the track bar, one and a half rounds in the left rear, one can of fuel for Jimmy Johnson, who entered pit road in second. He said the car just wasn't as good as it was in the previous run. Did it, Mercury? A few laps ago with a 1.4 second lead, Jeff Gordon radioed his crew and said, we're getting there. We're going to make some minor changes in the car. We'll go out leading. Once again, that number one pit spot, it all starts on qualifying on Friday. Rusty Boy. and Ryan were side by side and they weren't team racing. Rusty grabbed a gear, gave Sterling a boot, but did not beat Ryan out of the pits. The Rusty got really, really mad, uh, upset because people kept coming out in front of him and they finally took it out on Ryan. They swung to Ryan, got Sterling. <laughs> yeah. We'll show you the race off pit road from a little different angle. Jeff Gordon scoots out from space one, keeping his nose clean. And here comes, oh, everybody else. The rest of the wide. Right. This is brought to you by WebMD, redefining modern medicine. By Autolite Spark Plugs, it's time to change your plugs. By Old Spice Reg Zone, spice things up. And by The Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. Lap to go before we go green. Watching Kevin Harvick getting ready to go. McDonald's drive through championship fueled by Power 8. Kurt Busch's team leading the standings among the teams that choose to compete after seven of the 36 races. Elliott Sadler, Dale Earnhardt Jr. NASCAR scoring sorted out at the moment of caution. They determined that Ward Burton was still on the lead lap, and Hermie Sadler is the car that got the go around that got the free pass. And remember, it's not when the car spins, it's when the caution flag waves that that determination is made. We're getting set for the restart quickly, Dick Bergman. Junior's crew cranked out a great one, Mike. He came in for that pit stop in eighth spot, went out in fourth position. The car had been just a little bit free. They adjusted for that with air pressure. He's got a good piece. Steve? 
Dick Mark Martin said, guys, if I could have a little more front bite and side bite, we'll be real good. So they made a track bar adjustment. Green flag on just about to wave. Jeff Gordon brings them down. Jamie McMurray, second. Jimmy Johnson. Dale Jr., Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, Ryan Newman, Rusty Wallace, Elliot Sadler, and Kevin Harvick. What do you think? It's time. It's time to crank it up. Cut that surround sound up. seconds for three and a half hours you're hard on the brake and then hard on the gas yeah, a thousand times but you know we were thinking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. in eight car that great pit stop what we have to remember is his pit selection is the second pit from the exit of pit road right behind Jeff Gordon as long as Jeff Gordon's up there leading the race Dale Earnhardt Jr. has a straight shot out as well because Gordon's gone when their stops completed second place Jimmy Johnson inside of Jamie McMurray. I am, I'm really uh, impressed with Jamie today. I mean, you know, it's, it, that, that car has run well, qualified on the front row, and uh, he is hang, he's hanging right in there. He's doing a great job. He and Donnie Wingle got that thing figured out. Still side by side for second. Here's Matt. Mike, they're still trying to work on the tightness of Jimmy McMurray's race cars. Jimmy Johnson works on the inside of the 42 in his 48 Chevrolet. He says the car's still tight, made an air pressure adjustment in the right front. They didn't want to make a significant adjustment because Jamie says the car starts to loosen up as the run continues on. And DW will be happy to know so far the driver is very happy with his driver comfort. He doesn't have to use the DW special. And what was that again? <laughs> the old ice pack. That's right. You got to stick those things down in your uh, uniform. Keep you going. Got to take care of that driver. You know, on this restart, Jeff Gordon has come shot out of a cannon, Daryl. He has quickly opened up a lead here of almost two seconds, and that's a huge lead at this place. Yeah, I think once they adjusted that car up just a little bit on that first stop, uh, he's right back as dominant as he's been here for the last two or three times we've been at this racetrack. Casey. But one thing that keeps bothering me is that fire coming out of the side of that thing. <laughs> Man, he's got flames coming out of those tailpipes. And you know what bothers me about that, Mike, is most of these cats are running their pipes out the right side now to get the heat away from the driver. He still chooses, or they do, to keep the pipes out, pipe out the left side, which is right under the driver's feet. Let's listen. Extremely hot. I don't know if it's, you know, I know the thing's popping and banging. That might have something to do with that, but, or the different exhaust, I'm not sure, but it's extremely hot. Well, we'll do it there, but keep drinking your fluids there. Keep working these boys over. We'll get it where you want it. I'm fine. It's just my foot. Now, that was uh, just prior to the last caution that, uh, that that exchange was made. And Jeff was saying, make a note, fellas, so that next time we come here with something that's a little more comfortable. Yeah, well, with that popping and banging, sometimes if you've got an exhaust leak, a uh, header broken or a tailpipe not right, it'll make that flames come out like that too, Larry. But, Daryl, I think one of the reasons is we see Ryan Newman and, and uh, his teammate Rusty Wallace battle for seventh. I think one reason they elect to run the pipes out the left side here is because when you run them out the right side, it really tends to heat that right rear tire up, and we know we're already spinning it and wearing it out anyhow on acceleration. That's probably the reason they go with the left side pipes. Tony Stewart, Michael Waltrip for 15th. And on the left, the race for seventh place between the two Penske cars. Hey, Michael in the 15 car, he has made a nice recovery. He went a lap down early, and I think a lot like his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he got the free pass, but like Dale Earnhardt Jr., they've made that car much better as he battles Stewart here for 15th position. And I think Tony Stewart's car, it's not getting any better. 
Okay, the car right behind those groups, Scott Wimmer, the 22 car. This is a good run for him. There you see Scott back in the 17th position. Remember, he's making his first start here. Matt, what's happened to Tony Stewart? Mike, this morning, Dave Rogers, a team engineer, told me they made 12 different changes to try to get that race car in the ballpark. They made some adjustments throughout the day, but now Tony says the great forward bite we had earlier in the race, we have lost that, and the car will not cut in the center of the corner, meaning the car is tight and it just will not drive up off the corner. You can't get off the corner of this racetrack. I mean, it just, it kills the whole lap, especially both ends of the racetrack. Yeah, Michael's a good bit faster, I believe, but uh, Tony's got that, got him pinned down. You just can't get back to the throttle unless you lean on that guy. And uh, so far, leaning on Tony hadn't been a very good thing to do. Short-term like, gain, long-term problem. Right, there. That's right. yeah. Look like Michael will finally prevail. You know, a car that qualified back in 23rd, and I know they was very disappointed in that qualifying run, Bobby Labonte in the 18th car. He's been just nice and steady, working his way ahead, and he's sitting up there in the 12th position, but this has always been a very Bobby Labonte type of racetrack. You have to show that patience. You have to be patiently aggressive, but Steve, that car is definitely keeping up with the racetrack. It is now Larry Mack, but he's been loose for the majority of the race. An uh, interesting thing, crew chief Michael Fatback McSwain did. He had crew members, Scott Zipadelli, walked out into the turns between turns three and four because Bobby was having a hard time saying where exactly the car was loose. So Bobby would get into three and four and go now. Then Scott came back and gave Fatback the information. They made air pressure adjustments to help him. That's definitely one unique way of finding out exactly where your race car needs help at. Good. You know, somebody's got to be hauling now a lot. There's Ricky Rudd closing on Bobby Labonte as uh, Ricky has a mirror full of Kurt Busch. That's Jeff Burton, who uh, is one lap down in 28th, the number 99. Kurt Busch, the points leader coming into this race. Now, that was a race car that qualified good, looked like he was pretty good in those short runs in the beginning, but I think that group right there, Jimmy Finney, they've been able to adjust on that race car, and they've got it much better since the start of the race. Yeah, I've been watching him. He looks pretty good. The car looks like it's handling all right. You want to see a hard day's work? Watch from this Quaker State aerial view as you look at how tight the corners are at Martinsville Speedway and how long these straightaways are leading those tight turns. It's like being on a, a boulevard at home with an esplanade, a median strip in the middle, and you got to make a fast U-turn, and then you got to go about 400 feet and do it again and again and again. And do that with your heater on, by the way. Oh, yeah. Windows <laughs> rolled up. Windows yeah, roll, roll up, up the window, turn your heater on, and uh, no, that's kind of what these guys are going <laughs> dealing with. Kurt Busch needs to improve position to retain the NASCAR Nextel Cup points lead. Dale Jr. right now in position to take it over, running in fourth place. Just past halfway in the Advanced Auto Parts 500 at Martinsville, the little short track that thinks it's a super speedway where the fans sit right on top of the action, and there is plenty of it. There's your leader, Jeff Gordon, lapping Morgan Shepard in the number 89, who goes four down, and Jeff's about to get into a big pack of traffic, and that may bring Jimmy Johnson, Jamie McMurray, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mark Martin, and Sterling Marlin right back up to the leader. You know, just past the halfway point, attrition is not that high. We only have four cars that has retired. Kenny Schrader, Stanton Barrett, Andy Hillenberg, and Joe Rutman. Jimmy Spencer and Casey Mears are back out on the racetrack. Todd Bodine has been in, in and out of the garage area in the 98 car. But, Larry, I can't. These cars now, the brakes, the gears, the coolers are so much better. The brakes are bigger now. They don't run as hot. Uh, these cars have really come a long way for this kind of racing on a track like this in technology. Yeah, 10 or 15 years ago, it would be unusual that we'd have maybe 10 or 12 cars already with brake problems this point of the race. Yeah, you burn up a rear gear, have brake problems, uh, turning these things 9,500, brake a valve, always something happened to them, but not anymore. And earlier we saw Jeff Bodine driving that Hendrick car that got Rick his first win here at Martinsville, and Jeff brought a very important innovation here to cup racing, power steering. He did. He was the first one I ever saw to run it. And uh, one of the things you had to do back in those days, though, was you had to know the limits of your car. And you could only drive it so hard. You couldn't drive it as hard as it go, or it wouldn't make it. You see Bobby Labonte in the 18 car. He's going by Brendan Gaughan in the 77. Now, Brendan is one lap down, and Bobby Labonte 
is up there just about to crack the top 10. Right now he's in the 11th, and the man that came in here second points, Matt Kenseth, is in 10th in the 17 car. Bobby's just been nice and steady. Finished second here a year ago, has one win here. There you see Matt Kenseth in the 17 car, a lot like Bobby Labonte. Not making a lot of noise, just being very quiet, trying to watch this race unwind. We get to those, maybe those last 100 laps. We're only a little over 10 laps over halfway. We've got a long way to go, baby. Kurt Busch, who came in here as the point leader, right now runs in 12th place, and in that position would narrowly lose the point lead coming out of Martinsville and going to Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's had such great success there, would be the point leader in the positions they're running now. And the thing about Kurt Busch, yeah, well, he won Bristol, but they've been just so solid all year long. They have completed all but one lap of competition, and that was what that one lap he got down at Daytona. He showed all during the race that he was as good as the leaders. He just couldn't make his lap up. D.W., how about that shot right there, Kevin Harvick? Yeah, I like it. And, of course, you can see him in there fighting. When I wouldn't say he's fighting with the wheel, but how much effort it takes. See how far he has to turn the wheel to the left? I mean, that's huge. At Daytona and Talladega, you very, barely move the steering wheel. Here you really crank on it. Ricky Rudd right behind Harvick. They are running 13th and 14th. Just about a half lap behind the leaders. There's Ricky. Oh, yeah, oh, up on. A great big old handful of steering wheel right here and crank, crank. Oh, he's got her there now. She's a little loose. And even though you see this window net over here fluttering like it might be nice and breezy and cool, Mike, just like you said at the top of the show, probably 130 to 140 degrees in that sauna. The only thing that's missing is the rocks. You could fry bacon and eggs on the floor pan of these cars without any problem. See a lot of brake. See the throttle. All the way up on the straightaway before you even think about going 100% and you roll right out of it. You're only wide open throttle for a couple of seconds per straightaway. Heavy brake, roll off the brake pedal, work that throttle out, especially this long into a run. I'll tell you, Michael, he got that uh, free pass a little while ago and he's been coming forward. He's up to 15th and the car looks pretty racy for, uh, for Michael here at the Martinsville. Now he's holding pace with Ricky Craven, who's gone a lap down. Craven, former winner. Here at Martinsville, he's going to move up to the top side and give Michael a little room. Okay, not a lot of room, but a little, a little room. room. You said a little room. Okay, look at the nine car, Casey Kane. Again, what a season he has had. And there you see he's 21 seconds behind the leader. Reason? The leader's right behind him, Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. Remember, Casey has never raced here before. They came here and tested. They went to Caraway, And I think never racing here in the Bush Series because it's been years since the Bush cars raced here. I think he's just going to have to get some seat time at this place. Yeah, that's, and, a, that's an the, important point. The, and, the Bush cars don't run here anymore. Right, and Bill never really ran all that well here. Bill Elliott, who drove the car before, so I'm not sure they've got a real good uh, notebook to look into. And uh, there is the distance in car lengths, if you will, what, 21 oh, seconds? Oh, backwards, 19 in the wall, turn Mayfield. two. And, and we have no caution. We have no caution. Oh, they, they, caution is out. But Casey Kane will just barely, barely stay on the lead lap. Jeff Burton in a 99 car was on pit road completing a pit stop. Mayfield will get away, but he has killed the left side of that car. But that was a huge break for his teammate, Casey Kane, who yeah. we had just talked about. Speaking of Bill Elliott, I saw Bill this morning. He's here overlooking uh, Casey Kane's efforts. Ran just down the road at 311 Speedway in Madison, North Carolina. Dirt track about 15 miles from here. Had some fun last night. One of his uh, Everham Motorsports colleagues finished fourth in that race. But he's having a blast hauling his dirt car around the country and running special events. One of his teammates, Jeremy Mayfield, not so fortunate here. Oh, no, that I don't know if that's too much break or if he had a left rear tire down. Something was something caused that car to really snap around. Ooh, that's at about 90 miles an hour. Uh, you go down that front straight. Uh, that's if you get it slowed down a little bit. Mayfield to the garage. Speaking of brakes, both good and bad, there's our paperclip speedway. Here's Jeff Hammond at the Ford Cutaway car. Mike, we keep talking about brakes and technology. Let me show you something right here. DW, you ever seen one of these? This is a single <laughs> Ford master cylinder that Darrell won a lot of races with. This right here is basically antiquated today. 
Nowadays, they run a dual master cylinder with a small cylinder just like this. Again, we talk about the adjuster knob so the guys can drop, dial in more front brake or more rear brake based off how the car is feeling. If you're a little bit too loose getting in the corner, dial you some rear end, make the car balance back out. All day long, these guys will be adjusting these brakes to try to save the car as well as make it feel better getting down to these corners. And, and Larry, a really sharp guy will know that when he's got fresh tires and a full load of fuel, he can put a little rear brake in it. But as the fuel burns off and the tires give up, you got to take that brake out and put it back on the front or you'll spin out. But you, it's only small adjustments oh, yeah. on that thing. A turn. Pit stops. Everybody's in on the lead lap. Steve. Mike, small adjustment for Mark Martin. Just a half pound out of the right rear tire. He says the car is good. He wants something cold to drink and a clean windshield. Matt. Jimmy Johnson says the car's a little tight, and he's a rotate better late in the center of the corner. The car's a little free, a track bar adjustment and an air pressure adjustment to try to fix that 48 car, Dick. Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon comes in as the leader, a minor adjustment to the back end of the car on the track bar, slow on the left rear corner of the car. This will not be the best pit stop they've had all day, and Junior beats him out, and so does the Murray to that. Dick, Dick, a long stop. For second place runner, Jimmy Johnson, trouble on the left rear. He lost a lot of positions here on pit road. Pretty long stop for Tony Stewart as well. Uh, that caution was a break for Kyle Petty, who stays on the lead lap, and Joe Nemechek will get the free pass. And what really makes that stop really good for Dale Earnhardt Jr. and 8 car, we just had talked about it a few laps ago. He had to go around Jeff Gordon to get out of his pit box. It had been an advantage all day long, except for that stop right there. Let's have a further look at Jimmy Johnson's stop. It was going well until it got over on the left side. Car slow coming up. Looked like there's something wrong with the jack because these are one yep. pump jacks. So they got a jack problem. Couldn't get the left rear off the ground. And the race off pit road looked like this. Hey, look at those tires. Let's talk about how much air they got in them. That, that's that's got about eight or ten pounds in those left side tires. I'd come back in and get me some more four or five years ago because I thought I had a flat. <laughs> Casey Kane did not pit, so he will be at the tail end of the lead lap, just in front of the lead. So Virginia, after the sixth caution of the day, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jamie McMurray, Jeff Gordon, Sterling Marlin, and Mark Martin leading the field as we go back to green. Now, Casey Kane did make a pit stop after leading one lap, so he restarts back at the tail end of the line. Got those five points. This when you got a tippy toe just a little bit right here when you got all these cars together like this. Somebody slides up, gets into you, knocks you out of line. The caution brought out by Jeremy Mayfield. He's in the garage with Steve. And Mike, you just got down the race car. Jeremy, what happened? Can you guys are working on it? Can they get you back out there? Well, we're gonna try, you know. They uh, they do a good job of that, so we'll just see what happens. But just I don't know, just went in turn one and uh, like the rear brace is something locked up or wheel hopped or something, but Jeremy came in here 12th in the points, but he was only nine points out of 10 and with this chase for the championship 26 races a day like today can really hurt you. And again, if you put too much rear brake, you can get that wheel hop. You get down there in the corner, you get on the brakes real hard and the rear the tires just start jumping up and down and it'll snap around on you like Jeremy's did. Coming to the front, Bobby Labonte. In that uh, interstate number 18, he's up to seventh place. In the race that he won here, it was a typical day like today. He didn't qualify that well. At lap 100, he was in the top 15. Lap 200, he was in the top 10. Next thing you know it, he was in the top five and bidding for the win. Mark, Mark Martin just got taken by Rusty Wallace on the outside, Darrell, coming off turn two. Rusty did it the hard way. Well, that, we saw here in the last year or so since they ground the racetrack, that top groove really come in well. I haven't seen a lot of passes up here today, but as the bottom gets slicker, the top will get better. But you know what, guys? It's been years since we've seen this two and this six car racing each other like this. This is good to see. This brings back a lot of memories from Martinsville. I think Martin just backed off a little early right there and let Rusty get down in there. He knew he's old oh, trouble down here, guys. Michael Waltrip's around. Morgan Shepard sneaks by on the high side. Caution waves. And Michael was up, He was up to 13th, and the car looked really good. So, uh, 
Now, Jeff Burton, the 99 car, he will not be the free pass car, even though he's the third car in line, because Jeff's three laps down will have to get a reading. I think it's going to be Ricky Craven in the 32 car that will get the free pass. See what happened to Michael Waltrip in turn four. Oh, gee, he just got oh, yeah. the 21 car just went in there a little too hot and uh, slammed into the back of him. Oh, you see Michael get a little loose, causes him a little momentum off the two. Ricky didn't lose much momentum. Looked like he might have gained a little. <laughs> Ricky almost slid up into Michael. Things happen fast here at Martinsville. We're under caution again in the Advanced Auto Parts 500. Welcome back to Martinsville, where Jeff Gordon, who has dominated, leading 180 laps this far, has a problem with the right front of his DuPont Chevy. He's hit something hard. Yes, I think something's hit him hard, Mike, because there's nobody around him. Oh, there's your problem. Here's your problem right here. I think a piece of concrete possibly came up and hit Jeff Gordon's car. So something in the turn three. Something happens right along in there you see the dust fly up and you see the pieces flying the track's got a must have a hole in it right there there's a better look Boom, right yep. there wow now the pits have not yet opened under this caution flag they've been closed for some time dick bergman well jeff gordon did say that he thought it was a piece of the racetrack that had come up and hit the right front corner of his race car he is very unhappy not surprisingly behind the wheel of the car feeling that he is having to pay a penalty for the facility on which he is racing this afternoon gordon has led the most laps so far today currently in second spot he will pit he will be bringing that car down on pit road so the crew can take a look at it make whatever repairs are necessary but most important to diagnose the seriousness of the problem on the right front he said he hit so hard it actually jerked the steering wheel out of his hands when it hit that had to be quite a chunk now we listened in So we're under caution here at Martinsville, Virginia at 290 laps. This one brought out when Michael Waltrip spun off the bumper of Ricky Rudd. Hands Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by UPS, the official express delivery company of NASCAR. We want to race the truck. People love the truck. 290 laps and the red flag has been issued. crevice in the track and Jeff Gordon like many drivers Dale Jr. among them have climbed from their cars because the red flag has been issued that piece of concrete that hit Gordon's car was just part of a bit that has loosened up there at the entrance of turn number three so uh, the track has developed a cavity in the concrete that NASCAR is going to have to address before we continue this race yeah it's a huge hole but you know that concrete's been down there for probably 20 25 years and then they ground on it last year and uh, you see that black stuff, all that tar and stuff. They had cracks in the track all around it. They went around and put tar in all those cracks. Uh, Clay, Clay Campbell said they're going to re resurface this thing uh, after the, this, the race. So it uh, looks like he knew what was kind of was anticipating. There are one thing I noticed looking at all these drivers get out of their race car. All of them are soaking wet. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I'd say to oh, some this, of them, this is kind of a welcome break. Oh, yeah. This halftime break is falling right in the hands of some of them because they were getting pretty burned up. Dale Jr. looking at the uh, crack in the track. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. Dick, Ber Dick Bergman? I'm walking down the back stretch with Robbie Loomis, crew chief for Jeff Gordon. What do you make of the damage on the car? How bad is this? You know, it's it's we got to check it out. It's real unfortunate. You know, the racetrack, NASCAR saw the track's tearing up there a little bit. They were getting ready to put out a caution. Just unfortunate, you know, I uh, look like we knocked the nose off it pretty good and back in, but I think we'll be able to get it fixed up. The thing is, we got to get our track position back. Hopefully NASCAR will uh, work with us on that. And, like say hello to my mom and thanks for all the doctors at Halifax Hospital and uh, so hello to Papa and them at home and John 
and uh, just everyone thank you for all they've done but we got to get this race car fixed up we've got a good car to win martinsville we're gonna do it can you still win oh yeah we can do it all right that's what we like optimistic attitude mike so our track president clay campbell on the scene with uh, steve draper mike helton nascar's president having a look as uh, all the drivers Defending Cup champ Matt Kenseth, they're all out. Tony Stewart, Ryan Newman, they're all out of their cars. What taking, do you think they're talking uh, about, Mike? <laughs> the last 300 laps, maybe. I don't think it's about the hole in the track. Yeah. Looks like Dale Jr. kicked it up and smack into the right front of Jeff Gordon. Here you'll see it from uh, Jr.'s car. Right there. Yeah, I just, uh, I think it, I think Jr. loosened it up and then. When the 24 car Gordon came across there, he just took it up, took it off and under his car. The stickiness of these tires and the side bite that they create was devastating to the asphalt surface. So they put the concrete down and it has held up quite well uh, to this point for many, many years. Kyle Petty with, a, with an ice pack. Oh, listen, if I was driving out there today and they had this little break right here, I'd be thrilled to death. Follow the cue ball for a Michael Waltrip, Dale Jr. walking away from the hole in the track at turn three, and Jeff Gordon is making his case to Mike <laughs> Helton about, you know, hey, we're going to have to stop, but can I have my track position back? And uh, there's a, a piece of asphalt that's still partly secured, or a piece of concrete partly secured uh, by that sealer. Dick Bergman? I'm with Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's just been out there and taken a look at that hole in the racetrack. What'd you see? That's a hole. <laughs> The, uh, I don't know how it came up there, you know, because I guess there's a lot of, we're putting a lot of force on the track right there or whatever, but it's been busted up before and you can see where they fixed it or sealed it somehow. But uh, they can just fill it up and put some epoxy underneath it, let that dry and uh, so it won't come back out. But, you know, just a quick little fix. We'll be going in 30 minutes or so. Looked like you hit it first. Is your car okay? I didn't think I hit it ever. I saw the chunk laying up on the track. It looked like about the size of a piece of lead block of lead and I just kept going under it, kept going under it and waiting on them to throw the caution. I thought surely they were going to do something and uh, I think Jeff's car hit it and it, it's uh, hurt Jeff's car pretty good I think. Uh, I don't know how bad uh, in a in a in a suspension area but the, the body's tore it pretty good. Just uh, unfortunate that's kind of stuff to get a hold of you but um, yeah just a just a old racetrack and uh, we'll fix her up and keep going. Okay thank you. Steve? Thanks, Dick. Rusty Wallace talking to Larry Carter, Jeffrey Thousand, some of the other boys on the team. Rusty, you guys have been top five all day long. Yeah, I got a good car. We really do. We've had great pit stops throughout the day, and I think we've only had one bad one all day long, but the car's really handling good, and I'm really trying to take care of the brakes and letting out the throttle right at the start finish line, and floating it in, and just trying to really conserve everything. That's kind of my strategy going in. If I can make it past the 250 lap mark and have a real good car underneath me, you know, then you got some you got some stuff left to race at the end. And Rusty, listening to you on the radio, you guys have made very minor adjustments or no adjustments at all. That's usually a sign of a very good race car. Yeah, we've put uh, two rounds of wedge in it since we started, and that's about it. And I just told Larry, I'm not for sure that last one is we need it at all. So we might get it back out. But uh, other than that, I think we got a great car. We just got to be patient. And, uh, you know, the top groove's really working good. And off of turn four on the bottom, there's a little bite there. So uh, just trying to make all the right moves and be patient, you know, because you can tear the body up so easy here without trying. It's unreal. Good luck today, Rusty. Thank you. Back upstairs to Mike. Darrell, at the top of the day, we talked about what Tony Stewart had to do to overcome his 30th starting spot. And I remember as I asked you that, I said all Jeff Gordon has to do starting first and with the best pit selection is keep his nose clean. Yeah, oh, well, my gosh. He just got what it, happened? He just got it mashed in, I can tell you that. There with Robbie Loomis and car owner Rick Hendrick. I'm sure what they're trying to do is say, look, it's not our fault. Track tore up. Let us fix that fender. At least let us pull it out. Well, you can't touch the car under the red flag. That's that's a pretty hard, firm rule. No, Sterling can attest to that. Yes, so. that's, that's true. And here's Jeff Gordon's crew. They have fabricated uh, a patch to go over the sheet metal and the uh, fiberglass that makes up that uh, front valence. I, I can't see that right front real well, but I, t I think that might be overkill for here. I think I'd just take that tire off, get me a big hammer, and knock that bad boy back out there, and 
and let her let her buck because uh, I don't think I'd want to put all that back on my car just knock it off again yeah I think the biggest thing you've got to just make sure that nothing uh, rubbing the tire aerodynamics yeah I mean aerodynamics plays a role here we even heard in the truck series yesterday in clean air those trucks would turn better but I, I'm like you Daryl don't get too carried away fixing that thing don't no, get too I, creative I, I think I'd like that fresh air blowing in on my brakes and right front tire tell you the truth Dick Bergeron well, Jeff Gordon right now is having conversation with his crew, telling them what has happened out there. How about some conversation with us, Jeff? What happened? <laughs> you tell me. A huge piece of concrete was in my way. Uh, I'm laughing about it now, but I'm not, I'm not happy about this. Uh, I mean, we worked so hard to get that track position. We've got such an awesome race car. And there's no doubt in my mind we can, we can do it, but, man, is it going to be a lot of hard work. And uh, first we've got to come in and fix it, you know, when we go back, Grace. And I think they said they're going to try to, you know, patch it with some kind of an epoxy, but uh, you know they got a pretty serious problem over there, and uh, and and unfortunately I I hit it and and hit it really. I mean, I, it could have been worse. Could have went underneath the car. Luckily, it hit with the right front. It seems like it went around the right front. How much of the car do you believe is damaged? Is the suspension okay? I think the suspension's fine. It's mainly just the fender and um, you know, and it's just in on the tire right now. I, it jerked the wheel out of my hand, so there, there could be a little bit of, of toe uh, knocked out on it. But uh, we'll, we'll check all that. We're going to check it really good. And just unfortunate. Man, what an awesome day we're having. Uh, you know, great race car, great pit stops. And that thing is just such a dream to drive. Wow, it just goes everywhere I want it to. And uh, I, I was looking forward to racing junior there. And uh, we're not going to give up on them yet. We're, we're going to fight until this thing's over, and, uh, and, and, and hopefully we'll get back in victory lane again for the third time here at Martinsville. Well, Robbie Loomis said he thought you guys could still do that today. Do you think you can win the race still? Absolutely. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind I think we can. A lot of things are going to have to work in our favor. First, we've got to get that car fixed. Then we're going to have to have uh, some pit stops. It might free the car up a little bit. Now we're going to be back in traffic. Uh, even though we're on a short track, arrow does does mean a little bit. So especially I don't know what that fender is going to be like when we get done. So we, we've certainly got the car. I don't think there's a better car out there. That's for sure. No give up here. Absolutely no give up in the number 24 team, Mike. No, certainly not. They think they can win it. Here's another look. Uh, this one from Jeff Burton. And you see the piece of concrete fly off the right front. There it goes. That's a big chunk. It was a huge chunk. Yep. And you see that fire coming out those tailpipes, too. But you know, Mike. Had trouble at Texas with a battery. Seems like he just, every week, it's like it's something. You can't make all your own luck, can you, Daryl? No, but he, but he has been doing That's what he was always so good at, was making really, always having really good luck. NASCAR president Mike Helton has a look at the damage on Jeff Gordon's car. Now, let's go back to Michael Waltrip's spin and watch down on the bottom right of the screen. There's a chunk of concrete rolling past, and that may have been the first piece uh, to loosen up. That may it? well have been the piece that was sitting. Now that's way too far out of the group. That was I don't just think the so. that was the beginning right that's there. That's turn Mike. four. Yeah, that was the beginning. That's that's that, excuse me, that's past where the incident happened. By the way, nice shots, folks. Uh, our Fox camera crew, right in on the detail. And there's the epoxy patch and a little bit of heat going on it to dry things out as we get an unofficial halftime break here at Martinsville Speedway. A welcome one for the Sadler brothers, Elliot on the left, Hermie on the right. Here's another angle. Michael Waltrip spin. And there Ricky Rudd hits a chunk of concrete with the front air dam and sends it up turn four and out of the way. I think that's the same piece of concrete yes. we saw roll by Michael Waltrip's car. And like a cavity, once it gets in there, it just keeps getting, that hole keeps getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. Well, if you ever lived in New England, you'd understand. So enough about potholes. Let's go to Chris Myers for our unofficial Visa halftime report. Yes, this is a uh, Visa race break. Get out your epoxy, everybody, and stick around. How much longer do you think before they uh, get racing, Jeff Hammond? Well, it depends on what type of uh, epoxy they're using. And we know from a, for a fact that a lot of the race teams do use epoxy from time to time when there's holes in, like, oil tanks or oil pans. And it takes about three to four minutes for it to really get set up. This big a hole, I'd say probably 20, 25 minutes, they'd probably go back racing. All right, so we got a little dry. I know when it first happened, uh, you said that when they talked about what are they going to do to fill this hole, you said epoxy before. Uh, have you seen this kind of thing before? I've never seen this quite a situation before because you got to realize, Chris, we don't run that many concrete racetracks to begin with, you know, with only uh, Dover and Martinsville as well as Bristol having these type of situations, you know, could possibly occur. But I do know that NASCAR with the safer barriers have been carrying a special type of epoxy in case they have to repair them. 
in event of damage, so I'm sure that's what they're using right now. And what can uh, NASCAR do? We saw Mike Helton to give them relief. We heard from Robbie Loomis. We heard from Jeff Gordon. Track position, uh, and to, to be fair in their situation, again, currently under a red flag with Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon second. He was running second at the time. That's going to be all, that man we see right there, Mike Helton, because, you know, as he would probably tell you, NASCAR should not ever interfere as far as making and determining the outcome of a race, but this is something that was totally out of Jeff Gordon's hands. He was a victim. Now, how they view that will be strictly up to them. We're stalled at lap 291 of 500 here at Martinsville as you get a check of the uh, drivers and Hermie Sadler with a, with a burn on what looks like the lower right portion of his leg. What that is right there is that calf area. They lay their leg against the tunnel of the race car a lot of times. And when you're trying to drive around there, that is a very sensitive part of your leg. And what has happened, he's probably got a blister that's come up because these high temperatures today didn't have that area padded very well around the uh, tunnel area. Where a lot of exhaust heat comes up and he's probably got a pretty uh, severe burn there temperature over uh, 80 degrees as we talked about inside the car 130 140 degrees depending upon where you are as you look at uh, bobby labotti whose son celebrated his uh, 10th birthday today dale earnhardt jr who talked uh, moments ago about uh, what he saw when the track uh, kind of came apart with jeff gordon racing by as we continue with our visa race break let's uh, check in with the matt yokum well, it was a hit and almost a somewhat miss by Jimmy McMurray with a bag of ice water on your teammate there. You almost got him. Yeah, it was close. I was going to come over and tell him he had his shirt off that since the Janet Hill, you can't be uh, walking around with no top on. Well, how... I was one of the Panama City last week. I wouldn't. <laughs> well, we're showing a replay of your hit. What's that? We're showing a replay of your hit there with the oh, bag junior? of... Junior? Yeah, he came by, and I can't really tell you what he said, but he was just laughing, saying that was uh, that was a buddy hit, so no no harm. Actually, the hit on your teammate there. Oh, that was good, wasn't That was it? real good. Yeah, that was funny. Sterling's always playing jokes on me, so he'll get me back, I'm sure, one day, probably with a firecracker. Probably. Well, let's talk about your race car. Very strong today in third. Yeah, it's been good. We'd like to be able to lead a lap, um, just one, just to get the points. Uh, but it just seems like we can run second the whole race or third, so... Pretty happy with the tech squad on the Dodge, though. We uh, can't seem to make it better. We've made a lot of adjustments, and we're kind of stuck where we are. So hopefully um, maybe the racetrack will change a little bit and come to us, but pretty happy so far. Well, what about your race car? It's pretty good. We come from 17th to 4th right now, and uh, Mason's driving real good. Run him down here a little bit. It's good on you long. you got to keep an eye on him, don't you? Keep an eye on him. He gets more ice water. I'm going to the bathroom. Well, let's talk about your fenders. You got out of the race car and looked at your fenders. I made sure it wasn't nothing, uh, you know, close to the tire or nothing. Got into somebody a little bit, but it, it's got a little tire mark on it, no big deal, but uh, I think I'll call it. And the people in the truck were very impressed. They keep going on and on about how you didn't touch your fenders. Yeah, I don't learn my lesson on that deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, Matt. Sterling Marlin. Currently running fourth, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, uh, Jamie McMurray. 91,000 fans here in uh, Martinsville. Hi, how are you? And uh, DW has DW, a few fans. They won't, yeah, they he was on, the in case, case yeah. you missed it, the pre-race show, he was surprised. We had him uh, out there on stage. He was presented a, a, an award from this racetrack. Yep. His 11 wins here. Let's uh, check in. We're going to go over the points in just a moment here as they stand to the moment. Uh, critical for some of the key drivers here that are involved. Let's check in with Dick Berger. Well, Bobby Labonte started 23rd. He's motored his way up to 7th position. And I just watched your crew chief, Fatback McSwain, show up with one of those Martinsville hot dogs. I want to know if it's more dangerous to drive a race car or follow his dietary habits. <laughs> well, I don't know either. I'm not um, I'm not professional enough to answer that question, I guess. I'm not qualified enough. But, but you're qualified enough to tell me about your hot rod. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, Interstate Battery Chevrolet, we, we did some changes on it this morning. And, um, you know, it's come around pretty good today. And the guys did a good pitch stop that last time and got us out about three or four spots ahead of where we were. And, uh, you know, we fight a little bit of lose, a little bit tight every now and then. And, you know, just uh, keep working on it. And hopefully we'll get this problem here fixed when we get back racing. Can you move around and find better spots on the racetrack? Or has there been one groove that's worked for you all day? Well, there's one groove that works for me really good, but when it goes away, when the rubber gets built up on it, you know, the car doesn't quite want to handle that very good, then you got to search around. So it does uh, does make it for, you know, at least it's not just one thing. I haven't run the same line every lap, after lap, after lap, after lap, because, it, you know, you gotta you got to change to find your way around because the rubber build up, the tires give up, your car changes a little bit. So, um, you know, it's a little bit more fun than just doing the, the same thing all the time. Given all the cars you've passed, you've only got to pass six more, and you're in the lead. What do you think? Can you do that? Well, that's the hardest six to pass 
now that we got there. But uh, I don't know. We um, if the guys do a good job in the pits to make the right adjustments on the car for later on in the race, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll hopefully have a good day and maybe finish the top five or, or get a win out of this thing. Well, Bobby Labonte's having a good day. How about Chris Myers? Are you having a good day? I, I always do, Dick. I always have. A, he ordered the Martinsville hot dog and then uh, Dick ordered a Lucky Dog. He was a little confused. Let's check uh, the points standings to the moment here as they would look and these are the guys remember we not only go top 10 if you're within 400 of the leader you would make that final 10 race championships for the next Dell cup see so dale earnhardt jr has taken over has overtaken kurt bush at this point jamie mcmurray would be in the top 10 then in the next group these are the guys obviously that are looking good jeff uh, these guys are still in pretty good shape they're all pretty good shape right now but again they can't afford to lose anymore chris they've got to keep up there and keep digging so they can stay within that 400 point range and dale jarrett 343 off to the right you see how many uh, points they are behind as we look at the next page and then these guys starting at terry labani these guys are out of it if, if the season we're in today in terms of getting into that 10 race championship these are the guys right now have got to turn it around and they got to turn it around really starting today or next week at talladega they can't afford to keep losing ground if they want to get into this final 10. so dale earnhardt jr is leading this race at the moment it could be the points leader by the end of the day to overtake kurt bush let's go back up to uh, mike joy in the booth to recap uh, why they're fixing the track thanks chris after seven caution flags today in a very competitive race that have seen uh, five different leaders Michael Waltrip spun, a piece of concrete came up out of the racetrack. Another piece came up and hit the front air dam of Jeff Gordon's car. So you see the work going on now that this race has been red flagged to epoxy seal the surface there, just kind of like a tooth filling uh, at the uh, entrance point of turn number three into the corner. We'll show you the cavity, and it's a deep one. Um, don't think the track has a dentist on call. But you can see that's uh, that's more than a handful wide and a big loose chunk of concrete there ready to come up next. So we've been under the red flag for a little over 21 minutes as they try to make the repair. There you see the piece that'll bounce off right there, Jeff Gordon's car, and it hit that right front really hard. Really did. I mean, that's, it's amazing that it uh, didn't do more damage than it did. It's wonder it didn't go up on the car and tear something up. The most recent incident we could find in NASCAR history, as you see it again from Dale Jr.'s car coming back and hitting the right front of Gordon's. In the Bush Series in 1992 at Barberville, Florida, a hole dug up in the surface during practice. They put an orange safety cone at that spot, and the drivers completed practice by driving around the cone and raced the next day without incident after the track was patched. 1961 Asheville Weaverville big hole in turn three the race was red flagged and patched 50 more laps were run conditions worsened and they called it a day in about 1977 78 at North Wilkesboro they repaved the racetrack it started to come up and in practice and there was some debate about whether to call the race or not but all of us got together and agreed hey we can we will make it work and it was like driving down a dirt road. You had two wheel tracks that you had to stay in. If you got out of those, you, you hit the fence. And that was an asphalt track, and it had it, it just asphalt. been repaved. What, a week before the race? Yeah, just before the race. Yeah. Of course, you got a lot better stuff these days, you know, with the polymers and everything that they can pave these tracks with and get back on them a lot quicker. Darrell, you and I were talking earlier about how long this concrete has been down in these corners, and in a, about two or two and a half years ago, they, they ground it. And, you know, you just wonder if that maybe weakened uh, the strength of this concrete. Yeah, if you, when you're walking around, like I was this, uh, earlier today, uh, you see all these grooves. I mean, all that is where they've been grinding on it. I think, I don't know how much they ground off of it, but they supposedly ground, it all, the, ground all the high spots off of it and probably have uh, loosened it up some way. Well, concrete ages just like asphalt does. And again, it's not the weight of these cars. It's the side bite of the tires that tears at the asphalt and the concrete surfaces of these speedways. So we're under the red flag as we have been now for 24 minutes. Repairs continue and we hope to be racing again shortly. At Spun, if you can kind of follow a little bit of the track debris, It'll roll by what on the right uh -huh. side? Just blow the back part of the bumper right there. That piece of concrete came up and was bumped also by Ricky Rudd in the 21 car. And the next thing you know, the 24 car goes down in the turn three, and you'll notice all of a sudden a puff of smoke and another piece of concrete flies off the right front. Looking back from Dale Jr.'s bumper, you can see some more, can't you, Chris? Yes, and it creates, it pulls it up. It was obviously loosened, as, as we've pointed out. We've had some time, but, but quite a pothole that uh, quickly the uh, track officials in the NASCAR put epoxy over to uh, smooth it out. Yeah, you can take a look. The 
picture on the left right there is the hole that was created by the pieces of concrete flying out. This is the repair work that all the track guys went to work with the new epoxy and have repaired the track surface. As you see right there, a very close up view of it. It looks like it's starting to seal, it's starting to cure, but you see the damage here on the front nose of the 24 car. It'll be interesting to see again how everything is going to kind of turn out for these boys when they come down pit road and how effectively they can repair this car. Robbie Loomis hoping the nose even said part of the back end was bothered. Uh, we wish our best too for Robbie's mom. As he mentioned uh, earlier that she's in a hospital, she's doing a little bit better recovering. So hopefully uh, uh, she will uh, recover from her illness. Yep. So we're getting ready to roll here with Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading Jeff Gordon, Jamie McMurray, Sterling Marlin, and Rusty Wallace, your uh, top five. And uh, uh, let's go back upstairs, rejoin Larry McReynolds, Daryl Waltrip, and Mike Joy and get ready to roll. Now, when the caution flag came out, Chris, pit road was never opened. So not only Jeff Gordon, but all of these cars are waiting for a chance at pit road uh, for fresh tires and fuel. But I tell you, that epoxy better be some mighty tough stuff because these cars weigh 3,400 pounds and they are turning the steering wheel all, that's right where you really load the right front is right where that hole is. I still think they ought to mark it. If I, if I can make one suggestion, I'd say let's mark it so that the guys can see where it is and they can avoid it if, if, if they want to. I'm gonna say probably pit road will be closed for one more lap because they're still trying to get a few cars fired. It looks like Greg Biffle in the 16 car, he's gonna have to get a record to, to push him to get started. That's always a concern you have. Is your car going to crank back up? I'll tell you another concern that you could have in a situation like this. It's a hot day, so this is not likely to happen. But that brake fluid has been so hot that when it sets and cools, it can vaporize. And you get moisture in the lines or in the brake fluid, and that's what causes the brakes to, uh, to fade. Also, Darrell, do you still worry about the brake rotors warping when the cars stop having had that much heat in them and you're not allowed to turn that tire so that the heat dissipates in different areas? Oh, yeah, the brakes won't be as good. I mean, they basically have cured. You've gotten them hot, you've gotten the pads hot, and now they've cured even more. Now, I mentioned pit road was closed, but Jeff Gordon has elected to go ahead and make his pit start. Remember, the penalty for pitting before pit road is open, tail end of those longest line, makes no difference to him. This will give him maximum amount of time to get the repairs done on that car because he was right up there, the second car in line. Has to maintain pit road speed as he'll come to the attention of Robbie Loomis and that 24 DuPont group. Now, you think, Larry, I, I, I don't, how many laps have we run? You think some of these guys will come in and change four tires at this point? Well, I really don't, Darrell, because we've only run about 10 laps, so we may have a few at the back, but Dick Bergman, how about the 24 pit stop? Well, the goal for Jeff Gordon right now is to pull the valence out of the right front corner of the car, make sure they have clearance. The crew is working on that right now. They're calling for additional help. A uh, scissor, a sheet metal scissor is being used. That what they really want to do here is make a whole collection of pit stops without losing a single lap. That is the goal. They are being told right now where the lead car is around turn three and four, around turn four. So they're trying to make sure that they don't lose that lap. Tire going on right now. Make sure that they stay on the lap. That's the goal. They've got the valence pulled out. Car down. Still working on it a little bit. He's okay. He's okay that time. Now he's going to come back in again several more times while they work on that right front corner and make sure it's okay. Another huge advantage to that pit box right there. They could work on it to the final second before that pit for that pace car got around there. But now he's at a huge disadvantage. He's a lap, he's a half a lap behind the pace car. He gets in his pit stall, he's got to be there maybe five seconds and he's got to go. The, the real butt of the work had to be done right there right on that stop. I mean, that was a good move to come in then. And I tell you, if he got that fender pulled out and there's no problem, nothing rubbing, I wouldn't mess with it anymore. Right, because you cannot pull up to pit. You right. can't pull up past the hustle with this guy. It's going to be left side and gas. Uh, Ward Burton ran the stop sign at the exit of the pits. So he'll be coming back in. We're going to go back to Dick Bergeron. And Gordon just come on the radio and said that the steering wheel is turned to the right a little bit, and that says there is definite suspension damage to the number 24 car. And that's bad news. But he had the steering wheel off. When he got out of the car, he pulled the steering wheel off. So maybe he just didn't get the wheel line back up. But put his wheel on, adjust it, and it may be okay. 30 miles an hour seems agonizingly slow when that's all you can do down pit road to get to your pit. And look, he's not in his pit yet, and here's the pace car in the third turn. He's not in his pit yet. Here he comes. He's not there yet, and the pace car is coming off of turn four now. 
It'll be about long enough to just change those change left those side left tires. Side That's tires. about it. And down he'll have to go. Pace car to line now. Cars left side's changed and he's out. You know, we talked about Greg Biffle having to get a push. That car was not going to crank, and you see him underneath, working underneath the hood right here. We're hearing from our guys on pit road that he actually had a hole in one of his fuel lines. They're actually having to change the fuel line. There was no fuel going to the carburetor, and he had a pretty good run going. He was only yeah. one lap down. Yeah, his car was running great. He's now 32nd, six laps down. Lap cars pitting. Terry Labonte, Brendan gone, Casey Mears. Let's go back to Dick Bergman. I think Jeff Gordon was listening to Daryl Waltrip about steering position because he just asked about where they should put the steering position. Should it be on the pink, pink mark or should it be straight? He is going to come back in again. They are going to check the toe this time. That would be the thing that would most likely make that steering wheel not be in the correct position. Unless, Daryl, you're right. He may well have put it back on incorrectly. Yeah, it's on the spline, and it can very easily be one notch off to the right. It'll make you think the steering is off to the right. And sorry, racing 101, he had to remove the steering wheel to get out of the car and back in it during the red flag. I, I've, I've been, dri it'll drive you crazy when you get it on crooked and you don't have, you can't fix it before you make a pit stop. Makes the car drive like, you, it's the same car, but it drives terrible. You see Gordon coming in as the field goes around at pace lap speed. And that's more that driver thing. It's right, my hands are supposed to be right here. And my steering wheel's over here. I can't be where I want to be. And what they're doing, they're taking this long bar. They got the left side straight, and now they've checked the right side, which is where the damage would be. Now, these guys would run about an eighth inch of toe out, the right front toe out over the left front. You don't have time enough to fix it here, but at least you know if it's right or if it's bad. Now, let's show what they would do if they do indeed get time to correct this. Now, this car has a severe toe-in problem possibly what the 24 car may have. Now, what they'll have to do, and you almost have to raise the hood to do this, is you go to the tie rod, regardless of what the problem is, you'll loosen two bolts on that sleeve right there, they'll hold that straight edge there, adjust it out till they get it where they want it, then you have to lock it down, but that's a tough order to fulfill here when you have no more time than you do under caution. Yeah, on a short track like this, it makes it very difficult to have enough time to do that and do it right. So what they're going to tell him is, hey, it's okay, it's not that bad, you're going to have to live with it. Jeff Hammond. Kind of explain a little bit more about what we're talking about here, gang, is the fact that this is what a steering wheel is all about. Here are the splines inside. What the driver does when he puts it on is he can align it to make him happy as far as this location across. If he doesn't like it, he can take and remove it and turn it wherever it makes him happy. But in the event of a wreck, and this gets off, this is an indicator to a lot of drivers whether the toe in is knocked out or not. In this case right here, they're going to evaluate whether he got the wheel back on straight or not. And if it's not right, then they'll have to work on the toe. Well, he's, he's back in, Jeff, so they may have seen something when they checked it. They've evaluated uh, by stringing the car to tow it. The next evaluation may be the lap times. Dick? And this evaluation will be to make sure that everything in the right front corner of that race car is okay. That's all they're going to do right now is look, but it's a very, very careful look. They want to be sure the suspension is all right, the car is safe, the car is okay. There's an A-OK -okay from our chief, Steve Latart. He's going to go with the toe the way it is. Now, if the toe was off, what caused it? To, what, what happened? Did it bend something under there that would make it unsafe? Did it bend the tie rod that Larry was showing us? What did it knock out of line to get the toe off? But I tell you, a good sign is when your car chief looks at you as the crew chief gives you that thumbs up, then you can give that driver right there confirmation. Everything's good, buddy. We still got 200 laps to go. See a steering wheel. See how it, every driver likes, he's got a place he likes to put his hands. And you always like the steering wheel with the, with the spokes just a little bit over to the left because you're going to be turning left. You want it at dead center or a little to the left to be comfortable. A lot of times when cars leave pit road at the beginning of a race and you'll see them stop on the racetrack, that's what the driver's doing is stopping and relocating the steering wheel. Yeah, they call it indexing your steering wheel. If you look at every driver in these cars that we got cameras in, you'll see they're cocked to the left just ever so slightly. So at 300 laps, which we've just completed, there are 200 laps to go following a one hour, 17 minute red flag to patch the concrete surface in turn three. This happened during the seventh caution flag of the day when Michael Waltrip spun. 
there are 22 lead lap cars led by Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jamie McMurray, and Sterling Marlin. Now, one thing we need to watch on this restart is brakes again. They're cold now. So you charge down in this corner, and your brakes are cold. The thing isn't going to stop like it did a little earlier. The fans have been patient. They're about to get rewarded. 200 ready? laps to go. Ready and quickly green. in a 42 car. He wants to beat Jeff Burton in that 99 car down to turn one. Jeff Burton is still three laps down. Good clean restart. Boy, Jamie is all over the Dale Jr.'s car. He really would like to get around him. And, and I tell you, who wants to get around who? Sterling Marlin in that 40 car because he is our third place car right now. And Jeff Burton in the 99 was holding him up and he's seeing those top two get away from them. Meanwhile, Rusty Wallace in the two car, he's trying to make the move on the high side off turn two. Rusty's car is too tight right now. They've put a little too much wedge and he can't get off the corner like he could earlier. And no one is driving like they're trying to avoid that patch in turn three. So, Darrell, <laughs> nobody knows how long this race will go now. Good it's point. scheduled for 200 more laps. Hey, Sterling's about to lose his patience with that 99 car. He gets to the inside of him in turn three. Sterling is the third place car. Looks like he might prevail, prevail down the front stretch this time. And I got to tell you, I believe that break was a big plus for Sterling. He got cooled off. He got another, he got a second win. I tell you, it makes a huge difference in a driver when he can get freshened up a little bit. Now, Jeff Gordon restarted 23rd. He is up to 17th, but deep in the pack with the pole winning car. And this is where you have to be patiently aggressive, just like you heard Jeff Hammond talking in the start of the race. You know the leaders are up there over a quarter lap in front of you, but look at the traffic that he's trying to work through right now. Yeah, this is when you, you know, you've already got some damage. And back in here is where you get the thing all beat up, get the brake ducts closed up, the radiator, the grill closed up. Got to be careful. And, Darrell, just based on how that car was the first 300 laps, unless there's damage to it, to the suspension and hurting it, he can get back up there. He can contend for the win. As long as they run 200 laps, he can. Yep. There's the interval from Gordon all the way around to race leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. And it's a seesaw battle. He's, his car is really good on the inside. But the inside gets bottlenecked up, and somebody will get up beside you like Michael is right now, and you can't go anywhere. Rusty on Sterling, and then Wallace Clear makes... Outside. Clear, clear. Wallace makes the pass for third place on the inside. And just remember the other advantage he has, we saw it with Tony Stewart back at the beginning of the race. He has about 10 lap, 12 lap fresher tires than those other guys do. And that's been huge. I mean, yesterday it was huge. Today I think it is, too. Jamie McMurray has caught Dale Jr. from the Bud Cam. You saw that distance close. It's less than a car length in turn three. Jimmy Johnson trying to come back up through. He and Elliott Sadler fight for eighth place. Boy, you just saw Kevin Harvey get up on the curb. Got to stay off that curve, buddy. You'll knock your toe out again. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson thought about making it three wide in the turn three. He decided to, to choose the other. Yeah, well, you get a good, if you get a really strong run off a of turn two and the other guy's got a feather out of it a little bit, man, you can catch him in a hurry. Jimmy underneath the lap car of Jeff Burton. If he can clear Burton, then he'll be right on Harvick's bumper for seven. Jeff Gordon is not having any trouble coming up through there, Larry. No, he's not. That car's right around the bottom. He's working on Scott Wimmer right now in the 22 car. That'll be for 15th position in the right front of them, Ricky Rudd, which is another lead lap car. And, you know, it almost looks like the guys are giving him the line, you know? <laughs> I mean, I know they're not, but he's so good getting in and on the bottom, it's like they just move up out of his way. But you know it and I know it. The further to the front he goes, the harder it gets. Oh, yeah. Who was it during the break that said, well, you got four cars to pass? Yeah, but they're the hardest four. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, you talk about Jeff Gordon. He's coming up through the pack right there, no doubt about that. But he's still losing valuable time to the leader. He's been able to cut through this first group of guys. But the lead from him to, to the leader right now, Dale Earnhardt Jr., has opened up two seconds in the last six laps. Yeah, but Jeff, like Mike was saying about the chase for the championship, 
if they get a caution here in a few minutes, all that's for naught. So uh, all he's got to do is maintain and kind of keep those guys in sight, wait for another caution, he'll be okay. I'd say he'd want this thing to go green for a while, try to pick some of these cars off. Yeah, and then when if they do, if he does get behind, then have a caution. But I don't think he'll get behind. Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, you heard the rev limiter cut in there. Boy, Harvick's good rent Chevy. And Matt Kenseth, I mean, literally pulled over and let Jeff go by. You saw Greg Biffle in the 16 car. They just went by him in turn two. He's back out on the racetrack, 23 laps down, but he still looks like he may have problems. But, Darrell, that's the reverse of what you were talking about earlier about racing the cars you can race. If you can't run with Jeff Gordon and turn his lap times, why use up your stuff fighting with him? Yeah, I mean, that just shows a lot of respect. When they look in the mirror and they see that 24 coming, they know he's fast. Shows a lot of respect that they'll move up out of his way and let him go. Right now, in traffic, he's running 29, he's 21 flat. Right now, our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., with a clean racetrack, is running in the 28s. So even in traffic, he's only a tenth off, and that's, that's, not gonna, that's not a whole lot. Once he clears some of these guys, he'll make that all up. Boy, Jimmy Johnson has punched the go button since they dropped the green flag for the restart at lap 301. He's now up there fighting uh, with Kevin Harvick, takes over seventh momentarily at least well you got to believe if Jeff Gordon has is dominating a car here as he has Jimmy Johnson can't be four off of what he's got and he showed that in the first part of the race they got behind on a pit stop 22 lead lap cars 183 laps to go here at Martinsville Speedway and so far the patch in turn number three is holding up well so we hope to run this one to conclusion. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching the Advance Auto Parts 500. This is NASCAR on Fox. Fox is brought to you by Mach 3 Turbo Champion, the only razor used by the Gillette Young Guns. By Subway, eat fresh. By Quaker State, the power to reduce friction. And by the new Chevrolet, an American revolution. One hundred seventy four laps left to race here at Martinsville Speedway. Here's where your Coke family of drivers is running at this point in the race led by Bobby Labonte. Big battle coming for second place. Rusty Wallace just had a look inside Jamie McMurray. Now McMurray's 42, his teammate to the 40 of Marlin. Jamie squeezes Rusty down. Rusty makes his own room in turn number four. That hole was going to close up, and Rusty wouldn't let it. And Sterling Marlin, Jamie McMurray's teammate, he wants to be there if Rusty pokes the hole. He can capitalize on it, too. Matt? Jamie McMurray still trying to lead in his career, his first ever lap on a short track, but Junior is slowly pulling away. The reason the 42 car has started to go to the loose side. Now he's just trying to hang on to second. Well, that's hard. On the, when that thing gets loose, you just have to slow it down with the brakes. Next thing you're going to hear is he's got a brake problem. I definitely think those two cars behind him, Rusty Wallace in the two and Sterling Martin in the 40 are quicker. They just can't get by him. Yeah, Rusty was the quickest car on the racetrack catching McMurray. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon, who restarted 21st, has climbed to 11th. He needs to get past this lapped car of Jeff Burton, and then he'll have a chance to go after Kurt Busch, and that would put him back in the top 10. And right now, it's about a half of the racetrack behind our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I've been watching the scoring monitor. When Jeff Gordon's in clear traffic, as he is right now, he almost runs about the same lap time as Dale Earnhardt Jr. It's not that he's quicker, he just maintains. All right, Jamie McMurray holding second in front of this battle between Rusty Wallace and Sterling Marlin for third. For more on McMurray, here's Matt. Jamie hasn't adjusted his brake bias or anything like that to help his race car. The car has gotten better because his spotter, Lauren Rear, told him where the other cars are running. He says, you're running a little closer to the bottom than they are. Try to move up a little bit. That's exactly what he's done. It looks like it's paying off because he's beginning to pull away from Rusty Wallace and Sterling Marlin. And again, that's the information that a spotter needs to give to the driver. Everybody else is running here or there or somewhere else, and, that, and share that information with the driver, and he can adjust his line. Larry, we're 333 laps in. As we were talking yesterday on our FX Happy Hour coverage, this is just about the point in the race when you said the track surface would change. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of teams that came up here and tested, but you can never mirror the situation right now in this racetrack. And it mainly, and Daryl can relate to this, the rubber that starts building up on this concrete. It's almost like it builds up in mounds, and the car really changes how it goes across the racetrack. They, it feels like, you know, when you drive off the interstate sometime, and they got those uh, little channels in the, in the yeah. pavement, and they brrr. Well, that's what it feels like when you come off these corners. I think it got that way yesterday, even in 250 it, laps in the truck it did. race. But one plus today, Larry, is the sun is going down behind us. The grandstand is starting to, sh starting to shade the front straightaway here. It can't be as hot as it was. Let's talk about two fellas outside the front four who are coming into play here. Mark Martin and Bobby Labonte. Mark is 4.2 seconds off the lead, but his last lap times and this lap right on top of or quicker than race leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Bobby Labonte uh, running virtually the same times as Mark Martin. In fact, this lap, Labonte was quicker than Jr. 48 is the call on the move, Mike. I mean, he is coming to the front. He just went around. Uh, Bobby, you were talking about him. While you were talking about him, he passed off. And he's done what Jamie McMurray has done. They've, they've moved up to that second groove, and it's really been working for him. I think what they're doing now is running above all those little rumble strips that we're talking about. Up in turns three and four, some of the drivers still running right to the bottom of the racetrack with these leaders staying about half a groove to a full groove up from the bottom. Now Harvick is uh, back there now behind Labonte back in eighth place. There's the uh, windshield post view of Harvick. And, and when you when you change, when you go from the bottom of this racetrack to hugging the curve, when you go up in that outer groove, you can't believe how it changes this racetrack. When you're used to coming off of that left wheel right against that curve, now all of a sudden you come off the turn and the first thing you see is that outside retaining wall. And it gives it a whole different feel when you're driving. Next car back is Elliot Sadler in ninth place. Yeah, I mean, his car has kind of been hit and miss during the day. There was a point in time when he had faded just a little bit. It's exactly where he started back in ninth position, as you see by the graphic. Starting to see him make a little bit of a move right now. I've been watching the lap times and he's pretty much right there with the quicker cars. Our point leader, Kurt Busch is having an uncharacteristic quiet day. There he is in 10th. Jeff Gordon has caught him, but Busch is hanging on to a top 10 spot right now. Yeah, it's not going to be quiet for long because that 24 car is lurking, and this is a battle to get into the top 10 for Jeff Gordon. Yeah, Busch looks real loose into the turn. Looks pretty good when he accelerates off the turn, but looks real loose getting in. It's a pretty good drive off right there, but not near as good as Jeff Gordon. Gordon has the measure of Kurt Busch into turn one. Busch beats him back to the throttle, though, off turn two. See that you can do that. You get back in a little quicker on that outside line. Got a little momentum down the straightaway, like we see on super speedways. Works the same way here. Gordon and race leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. are exactly half a lap apart on the racetrack. Gordon restarted 21st. He's now fighting. Well, he was fighting for 10. He's now the 10th place car. That's a classic Martinsville pass right there. You go in under them, and hopefully they'll slide up as you come up under them. There you see Matt Kenseth. Man came in here second in points. He's been quietly flirting with the top 10. After a pit stop earlier in the race, he was in the top 10. He's back there in 13th position right now. And there comes Ricky Rudd. He's been right there in the top 15 all day long from the very start of the race. And right now, Whoa. Ricky. Robbie Gordon. You saw him from Rudd's roof cam almost lose it. But Robbie gathered it back in as we watch from the singular cam on his front bumper. And though he's laps down, he's going to continue. We've run 344 laps. I think Robbie's done that about 300 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Right behind him, Scott Wimmer uh, battles with Dale Jarrett for 15th position. Jarrett made several pit stops at the end of that caution flag and apparently uh, got the car pretty right. He restarted back there with Jeff Gordon and he has gained uh, five spots since they waved the green flag for the restart. But talk about Scott Wimmer. Remember, we talked earlier, this is his very first Nextel Cup start here. And there you see Tony Stewart in the 20 car. He's kind of had an up and down day. At one point, he looked like he may have the car to beat. At one point, he was about to go a lap down. He Right now, he's back there in 17th position. But he's three quarters of a lap down to our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Stewart started 30th after overdriving turn one on his first lap of qualifying. They made the car better, and Tony Stewart led today uh, for, I'm sorry, did not lead this race, but ran up in 
uh, the front five for a while. And Michael Waltrip in the 15 car started back in 37th position, almost in provisional land, and he got a lap down early, but he got the free pass, and I think Slugger Labby and that group have made that car better, and he even spun out one time, and he's still on the lead lap here in 19th. Got a pretty good looking old hot rod today. For him at Martinsville, he's doing a great job. I, I, it, we didn't really get to talk about it that much, but Ricky Craven, previous winner here in the 32 car, he went a lap down, but on the red flag caution, he got the free pass. So he's back on the lead lap. And Kyle Petty in the 45 car, he has stayed on the lead lap all day long, back in 21st position. Now yeah, the Petties have, I think, 18 or 19 wins here between Richard and his father, Lee Petty. Here's Joe Nemechek struggling better, you, to stay on the lead lap. I was going to say, you better talk about him quickly being on the lead lap because he's fixing to go a lap down to Dale Earnhardt Jr. in eight car, but it's not going to go easy. He was the free pass car two cautions ago as Dale Jr. works his way underneath the Army Chevrolet. Well out there. Trying to get you some help. That was Jamie McMurray is in car radio. I was talking about Tony Stewart who had not led today. He had worked his way up to fourth and was coming toward the lead uh, when another caution came out and everybody got to pit and improve their car. Jamie McMurray trying to run down Dale Earnhardt Jr. He is one second back. We listened in on his team communications. Oh, we'll work hard on the stop. We'll drop some air pressure out of the rear or stop. That was Donnie Wingo, and it evidently, well, you heard Matt Yoakum talk about, I think it was Matt that said Jamie McMurray had been loose, but Donnie Wingo, his crew chief, is saying, we're going to drop some air pressure out of the two rear tires. That'll help those rear tires bite on acceleration. But with 150 laps to go, these guys know they may only get one, maybe two more chances to get these cars right. You know, Joe Nemechek, now he gives up the ghost, but he was really giving Dale Jr. fits trying to stay on the lead lap, gave a good fight of it, uh, but now, Junior works his way by. That'll allow the second place car of McMurray to close in. Here's Steve Burns. Well, Mike, once Sterling Marlin got past Rusty Wallace for third, Sterling's crew chief, Lee McCall, said, a boy, go get that 42. You're faster than him. But just seconds ago, Sterling radioed in and had one word to say, loose. So it almost sounds like a lot of these cars, Daryl, is the track starting to cool down and the sun's going down, that they're not going to a push, not turning situation. They're starting to actually get loose, especially on acceleration. Yeah, that's that's not uncommon for here. Later in the afternoon, it gets uh, the track actually just loses grip, overall grip. And there you see the concrete, of course, is the one that we're looking at. That's where the corners are. There you see it's dropped over 10 degrees, and that can make a huge difference in the way these cars handle. 145 laps to go. One more pit stop at least coming. Can Jeff Gordon get back to the front? Can Dale Jr. hold on to win? Can Jamie McMurray overtake him? Can you stay tuned? Mach 3 Turbo Champion invites you to enter the Gillette Young Guns Challenge. Each week, a lucky fan will win five grand. Go to GilletteYoungGuns.com for details. One of those young guns, Jimmy Johnson, is the fella everybody's watching as he climbs his way up through the field. Johnson restarted 10th. He is currently fourth and gunning for third. Yeah, he's alongside of uh, Jamie McMurray in the 42 car and making the pass right now as we speak. I believe you said it earlier a few laps ago, Darrell, that 48 car. He gets such a good bite off the corner. He's able to hold that throttle down and, and make a lunge off the corner. He's really floating it in, as we like to say, and uh, able to get the car turned and, and just got a great look coming off. Yeah, because actually Jamie McMurray's teammate, Sterling Marlin, he had passed him for second just a few laps ago. So Jamie in a 42 car is now back in fourth position. We saw Jamie. He's getting real loose is what's wrong with his car. We saw him uh, come off turn four here just sideways uh, when, before Sterling Marlin got around him. And what's actually pretty good news for Sterling Martin and Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is really having to wrestle with some cars trying to stay on the lead lap. He wrestled with Michael Waltrip just a few laps ago, and now Ward Burton and Kyle Petty's just in front of him. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon, who got a great restart, came from 21st to 11th in a hurry, has been unable to advance any further. Gordon right now sits at 10th place, Dick. Yeah, but Daryl was talking a while back about how things go on in this race and how the tires wear down, the cars get loose. That's what Jeff Gordon says is going on with his. He just got on the radio and said, real loose. Well, again.
again, that's just another car added to our list of cars that's getting loose as this racetrack cools down. I'm not exactly sure what the right word is, but slimy comes to mind. And that's what the track gets to feeling like as it, as it cools. It got a lot of rubber on the racetrack. And as that rubber cools down, it gets real slimy feeling. And the car just doesn't want to hook up. But, you know, even with that, guys, it wasn't that long ago, that many laps ago, Jeff Gordon was a half a lap down, about 11 oh. seconds behind. Now he's eight seconds behind our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Jr. is not having much trouble. He's going to put Kyle Petty a lap down here. Kyle's hung on the lead lap all day long in his Georgia Pacific Dodge. But Jr.'s lap times uh, right now are within a tenth of the best on the track as he leads Sterling Marlin by one and a half seconds. Gordon just got by Harvick there in the 29 car to advance another spot. Moves him up to ninth position. Caution is out. Morgan Shepard and Casey Kane up in turn four. And uh, I think almost everybody but those two wanted to see this caution. And I think possibly Michael Waltrip in the 15 car may be the free pass car. If it is, that's the second time today that he's a, been a benefactor of that. Caution's really good news for Tony Stewart, who is less than two seconds from being caught by Dale Jr. and going a lap down. Yeah, they, they're going to have to bring the 20 car in there and, and wave a magic wand over it because it's not reacting too well right now. Michael Waltrip will get the free pass. Casey Kane will pit, although pit road is closed. So he'll restart tail end of the longest line. First time we've had a caution flag in 80 some laps. I kind of believe that Casey Kane must have had a tire go down because uh, he's on pit road right now. But I tell you, we just saw Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. He just had passed Kevin Harvick for, for ninth position. This is where that pit spot could be huge over there. If he can make some positions up on pit road, we know how hard it is to do on the racetrack. Oh yeah, he's back in the hunt now. Right front trouble for Casey Kane as he'll make his pit stop. And the green flag is up in the backstretch, which means the pit road is open for the lead lap cars this time by. And Morgan Shepard got involved in that. I don't, I didn't see the whole thing unfold, but Morgan's been doing a good job of staying out of people's way today, and he's running 31st. So it'll be pit stops. We'll go first to Steve Burns. Sterling Marlin said he's loose in and loose off Mike Joy, so they're going to drop that track bar one round and take half a pound out of the right rear tire to help tighten Sterling Marlin up. Right side tires going on. Make the track bar adjustment, and let's go to Matt. Jimmy Johnson had climbed up to third before that caution. They make a wedge adjustment on his race car and an air pressure adjustment. Two cans of fuel. They need to work in the center of the corner a little more, Nick. In each of the last two pit stops, Earnhardt Jr.'s crew has picked him up four positions. This time, all they have to do is to not lose a single position at all. Jeff Gordon pits right in front of them. Jr. gets the job done. He's first out. Gordon still working on his car. The crew now sends him off on the pit road. This caution also a break for Kyle Petty. At the moment of caution, he had gotten back past Dale Earnhardt Jr. And so Kyle remains on the lead lap according to the scoring we have. Yeah, I don't think Jeff Gordon gained any positions. In fact, it was awfully close to him and Kevin Harvick who might have possibly lost a position, but you got to give a tip of the hat to that Budweiser crew. We talked about it earlier. Now not only are they having great pit stops, he's having to drive around the 24 car that's sitting in his pit box, which cost him more time, but he's still got the lead. 125 laps to go in the Advanced Auto Parts 500. This is NASCAR on Fox. Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Sunoco, the new official fuel of NASCAR. Good enough for NASCAR, good enough for your car. You can't buy it. Well, at least not here. It's only for the Nextel Cup cars. It's around $6 a gallon uh, at short tracks nationwide 112 octane a lot holy, of power holy smoly not great gas mileage, six dollars a gallon well retail yeah we get four and a half miles of the gallon you do the math i don't, I don't have it in my calculator <laughs> how about if we do the math on our pit summary here the real winner on pit road was bobby labani in that 18 car those guys came in seventh went out fourth now the real loser though was sterling marlin in the 40 group came in second he went out sixth. and let's show you why a little squeeze play here on a very tight pit road. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car, his timing was perfect right there. Those guys go from third to second. 
So when they wave the green, there will be 20 cars on the lead lap with 120 laps to go. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Rusty Wallace, Bobby Labonte, Jamie McMurray, the top five. As you get this great aerial view of Martinsville Speedway from our Quaker State aerial coverage, you see just how tight those corners are and how long in relation those straightaways are. Hey, train's coming by. We're getting ready for the restart. I, I, I get excited about that. I think that's pretty cool. On the back stretch, cold of the sea. There it is in the upper right. It's going to be a while if he keeps going at that speed. <laughs> They'll need well, to it'll be winter time time to get there that they, load of coal. They're slowing down so they can see the restart too, Daryl. Oh, maybe so. And here we go. Dale Earnhardt Jr. to bring him down for the green flag with 120 laps to go. 19 cars still in the lead flag. lap. Green flag. Johnson having a tough time with Ricky Craven in the 32 car who's a lap down and his teammate Brian Vickers in the 25 a lap down as well. Jimmy's car has been working good on the high side as we've been documenting but he still can't get his find his way around Ricky Craven. Mark Martin in trouble off turn four and that jams everybody up behind him. Jeff Gordon got through Harvick and Ward Burton squeezed through and Mark Martin doesn't look like he's still back up to speed yet. No, he's not he's got something wrong. It's, it looks like he's got something bad wrong with Steve. He just said that he has no fuel pressure whatsoever in that six car. No fuel pressure. What a shame because he's run so well today. I mean, he's been in the top five all day long. And you know, the irony of that is remember it happened that many laps ago, Greg Biffle and his teammate had the fuel line problem. But he will have to go to the garage here, at least to pit road. Back up front, Jimmy Johnson clears Ricky Craven. Now Rusty does too. Watch the six car on this replay. Yeah, he's coming off a of turn two over there, and all of a sudden he just quits going right about here, and it really backs everybody up. We're lucky there wasn't more contact when that happened. Jeff Gordon in the 24 dropped behind him. He, now Mark does come to pit road now at 30 miles per hour as the leaders continue to go by. Now, a lot of times when you ride around under a caution, uh, you can get some vapor lock. Uh, fuel log, laying the fuel log and all that heat off the engine and the brakes will cause you to have vapor lock. They are going under the hood to see what's going on with that six car. And it usually happens right after the restart because that's when you, uh, you asked it to produce the most fuel. That dust up moved Jeff Gordon up to eighth as his teammate and protege Jimmy Johnson draws a bead on Dale Earnhardt Jr. for the lead. Actually, he just passed Elliott Sadler in the 38 for seventh. So Jeff Gordon, he's getting in striking distance. Oh, yeah. Once you can see him and you got a car that good, you just sit back, take a deep breath, say, Oh, I'm going to be there in a minute. And it's taken him less than 100 laps to recover from that situation a while ago. Not that he's completely recovered, but he's come a long way in a short time. No, but as we, as you said, uh, I mean, you know, when you get up to this level right here, it gets a little harder to climb. But, Daryl, is it the important thing that now he's on the same straightaway as the leader? And he's, you know, as we say, within striking distance. Oh, yeah. No, he just needs to work his way around some of these cars. They're going to back up to him eventually. That's what he's thinking. Steve, how about Mark Martin's hills? Bad news for Mark, Mike Joy. Just heard him say, or heard Pat Trice and the crew chief say, it's the line that goes back to the fuel tank. The hood's up, and they're going to try and replace the fuel lines. So we don't know if it's the same fuel line, but it sounds like a similar problem maybe that his teammate Greg Biffle had earlier. Well, I'll tell you what, we, we haven't, I haven't bragged on Dale Jr.'s car a whole lot. Early in the race, it was given up a lot on the uh, short run or on the long run, but uh, that thing must be pretty steamy, Larry. He's sitting there leading the race. He's been able to hold everybody off and come up there behind him. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson, he's just maintaining with him. He's not really getting to him. Dale Jenner's turned it up just a little bit. He's running right around a flat, 21 seconds flat, and Johnson has been able to get no closer. Now, 110 laps to go. You're not going to make another pit stop. 
Darrell, would you want to just ride a while and let things kind of let some of those laps tick off? Well, the way Jimmy Johnson came up through the field there a little bit ago from some back in seventh eighth place, I think his car must be really, really good as it goes on into the run. So he's probably thinking Junior will back up to him. I tell you, we better not forget this 18 car, the interstate car, Bobby Labonte, that great pit stop by Michael Fatback McSwain in that group. He's sitting there in fourth position. Now he's wrestling with some lap down cars right now as he tries to get by Brian Vickers in the 25. Joe Nemechek will be in front of him in the 01, but Steve Burns, that car just seems like it just keeps getting better and better as this race unfolds. Yeah, Larry Mack, listen to their adjustments on lap 373. They took a spring rubber out of the left rear spring, and they also made a track bar adjustment. They've been fighting a loose car all day long, but as you said, they're gaining on it. Ricky Rudd in trouble. Well, you know, Mike, we talked right about it in the beginning of the show. Right this place tests oh, every bit of your equipment. He's got a right front tire down, Larry. This yeah. green flag stop will cost him at least two laps. And he had been on the lead lap, running in the top 15 all day long. We just had talked about him not too many laps ago. So now we're down to 17 lead lap cars. With just over 100 laps to go. Yeah, when you have to make a green flag stop here as Ricky Rudd's down and away, you're going to go almost two laps down. Here comes your leader again, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that Budweiser car, Jimmy Johnson in the Lowe's car right behind him. 104 laps to go, the distance between them, just, well, four-tenths of a second. About two car lengths. Rusty Wallace in third, Bobby Labonte, Jamie McMurray. Marlon, Gordon, Sadler, Harvick, and Bush, the top ten. You know, earlier we talked about Morgan Shepard, who is 62 years old. He said he was going to run all day and get what he can get. He's still holding at about 31st position. Yeah, and I think that just proves that, you know, when the guys have something they can race with, they want to stay out there and race. Morgan, lo he loves the short tracks. He's got a new, I don't know if that's a new car or not. It's a Dodge, and uh, it looks like it's running pretty darn good. I mean, it's a car he bought from Ganassi Racing. It's the car he has showed up all year long. We didn't see him during that red flag, but you saw all these younger guys with the ice bags and on. I'll guarantee you that 62-year-old guy, he just sat on the wall and waited for him to tell him to get back in his race car. And he's done a good job because he has not raced a soul. I mean, he's gotten out of guys' ways when they come out of the way when they come up on him. He's done a really good job today here at this little tight racetrack. And that's the definition of independent, uh, as we used to apply it in the 70s and 80s, fellows who didn't have a big sponsor, but would come and race for what they could race, but not race the people they couldn't beat, as you say, Daryl, and give a good account of themselves. Yeah, and, and I mean, it was not unusual, 70s and even in the 80s, for the winner of the race to have a lap on the field, and for guys 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, be five, six laps down at the end of the day. Well, it's a one car, one engine operation. He's sitting there in 31st. Two of the Richard Childress cars, Johnny Sauter in the 30 cars in 30th, just in front of him, Robbie Gordon in the 31 is just behind him. That's like Samson going up against Goliath right there. And you know he can't he can't push it as hard as he'd probably like to. He's had that same engine in there forever. It's quite a shot here. We call it our hood pin shot, riding with Johnny Sauter in the 30 car. Meanwhile, Hermie Sadler, who we last saw during the red flag with a burned shin. Climb back aboard, made it for the restart, and he is 28, though four laps back in the fans' car. And of course, we talked about people like Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. They could not work on their car during the red flag. Jeremy Mayfield, those guys had to stop work on his car. But he is back out on the racetrack, but they, you can work on the driver because they did have to work on Burns on Hermie Sadler. And there's Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. He's up there battling Sterling Marlin. This is for the sixth position. Hermie's going to be burned and sore. Uh, the power steering has gone out on his car. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's going to be a tough day at the office for the Emporia Virginia driver. Jeff Gordon on Sterling Marlin. This is sixth place. Remember, Gordon restarted 21st after the red flag and the damage repair.
he stuck to that bottom pretty much all day long and right off of four here's where he's really really good got some good grip down there Sterling strong down the straightaway but uh, Jeff's a little bit cool 24 cars a little bit faster through the turn this illustrates your point Daryl the higher you climb the harder it gets you got it because they're not going to give up now they're not going to roll over for you just an update on Ricky Rudd, who's back out there after having that flat tire. He's, he's two laps down back in 26. The valve stem was ripped off. We talked earlier, these guys do not have an inner liner. When you lose the air in the tire, you're on the rim. Jeff Gordon got past Sterling Marlin, and Marlin trying to beat Gordon back to the gas got real loose in two, but hangs on. So that is sixth place changing hands. You see Gordon's serial score since the restart. Now right behind them, Kurt Busch has passed Kevin Harvick. Check with Steve. Mike, just want to follow up on that fuel line situation with Roush Racing. Mark Martin did, in fact, have the same exact problem as his teammate Greg Biffle. We've been told that they buy that fuel line in a large quantity and just cut lengths as they need it, and they feel like they've got a bad batch. That's normally a sign. When you have more than one problem from the same batch, it would be what we would call a bad batch. Multi-car teams, multi-car problems. Whoa. Junior got up on the curve off the four that time. That's going to hurt him a little bit. And Mike, you talked about it on that pit stop back about lap 372, 373. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. We've seen his car so good on the high side. Tries to get a run on Dale Earnhardt Jr. down the back stretch. Let's see if it'll stick for him down here at three and four. Sure, because look just in front of them. They're coming in on a wad of traffic. Uh, that was two and three wide a moment ago, and it may give Johnson an opportunity in the traffic to take the lead. It's better. Up high is better off a of turn two than it is off turn four. Get a good bite up high off a of turn two. And he got a well of a bite. He just drives past Dale Earnhardt Jr. He'll take the lead here with 90 laps to go. But, Mike, you talked about these guys not making another stop. They made a stop with 125 laps to go. If we stay green, they indeed can make it on well, fuel. And, but you better believe we get a caution. Clear. And that's going to be busy. That's big picture racing with the eight car. You notice he didn't put up a real big fight. He just uh, saw Jimmy was faster than he was, kind of eased down, let him go by on the outside. Now he'll follow him. How about Jimmy Johnson, Matt? Jimmy can look at his racing trophy case and look at his Darlington trophies. A very special day. He would love to add a grandfather clock from Martinsville. Back at Darlington, he changed up his usual, his morning routine. Instead of listening to Kid Rock or Metallica in the front of the hall or blasting it so it's vibrating the doors, he went to a little more surfer mellow rock of Jack Johnson. He hasn't done it since until this morning. Trying to go back and get that mojo, so to speak, that he had at Darlington. He would love to get a win here. Daryl, you won here 11 times. You know how special it is to win at a driver's racetrack like Martinsville. It's just, there's no neater trophy that I know. Oh, 22 car around off turn four. Scott Wimmer. Darrell, he locked up the brakes down in turn one and two at the other end of the speedway, so he was having some sort of problem before he spun up here at turn four. Locked up on entry, the thing's dead. To bring out the ninth caution. You just heard him say locked up on entry. Because he was all by himself. I just looked up and saw him going around. Get the fire and I, and I tell you, Brian Vickers, it looks like uh, Jimmy Johnson's teammate will be the free pass. I just believe maybe people like Jeff Gordon, those guys who will watch Scott Wimmer here, see the brakes locking up on him. That was through the last set of corners off turn two, and I watch him down here in three and four. Hmm. Just got loose. Way back past the center of the corner. Yeah, he'd have been off the brakes by then. And got up out of the groove a little bit, looked like. Now, with 85 laps to go, this could be a critical pit stop right here. Who beats he off pit road, Jeff Hammond? And this is where that 24 car, they need to have their I's dotted and T's crossed on this stop. He's going to come in sixth. So many times this year we've seen the race being won off of pit road. And right now is when these crews have got to shine. Can't make any mistakes. Get the job done. Get your man out front. Save them a lot of time as far as the racetrack's concerned right now. Eight cars got a chance to beat the 48 off pit road. They know it. They want to get the job done. Pit road open and look for a second like Jimmy Johnson wasn't coming. He's not. He's staying out on the racetrack. Everybody else is coming in. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. I don't know about that one. Yeah, because we went back racing at lap 380. So that's uh, that's 30 laps on these tires. We already saw what that did to some guys earlier. Steve Burns. 
Larry Mack, Rusty Wallace just said, I can't believe that 48 stayed out on the racetrack. He says, four tires, that's all I need. Let's go, boys. He'll put a little gas in that number two car as well for Rusty Wallace. Left side tires going on right now. This could be the last stop. Dick. Dale Earnhardt Jr. said that he was just saving the car. That's how the number 48 got by him. He said the car is really good. He just liked them to tighten it up a little bit, going into the corners. This is the most important, the most critical stop of the day. There can be no mistakes, and Earnhardt is gone. Jeff Gordon's crew also working on his car. He had gone from 23rd to 4th. But once again, he lost a lot of ground on pit road. Now, Ryan Newman's actually going to win the battle off pit road in the 12 car, like earlier in the race. He changed just two right Right side tires. What a traffic jam at the end of pit road. Listen, that's a lonely feeling out there where the 48 car is right now. It looks like they were thinking about it, thinking about it, and at the last second, Chad must have said, stay out. Now, it wasn't a question of missing the flag, as happened to Dale Jr. here last year. The green flag for Pitt Road had been waving for some time. Jimmy had stayed up high, then he started to dive down and cut back up on the race car, uh, on the racetrack. What happened down there? Well, Mike, let's talk to Chad Canals. There's a lot of debate, Chad, about whether to stay out or pit. Yep, there was. Wrong decision, huh? And, you know, I mean, what do you do? I mean. We made a mistake. What do you do? He's been saving those rear tires. He told you on the radio by trying to move his line up. Do you feel like that will be enough? <laughs> we don't have a prayer. <laughs> We're in pretty big trouble right now. You know, is, the low Chevrolet is just running absolutely phenomenal. You know, we've had some ups and downs in the pits, and we're trying to get all that stuff squared away. And looks like the rear chain broke. And you know, I mean, you, just, you don't know in a place like this. You know, the, I think last year the guy that won the race, his last pit stop was on lap 375. Before that, the average is like 425, you know, and to play averages, we probably should have pitted, but we didn't. So now we just, uh, we made our bed, we'll sleep in it, try to get a top five. Hopefully we'll get a caution again here in the next little bit. You know, if there's a caution, another 20 laps, we might get some guys to pit. We can come in and get some tires on and try to get a good solid top five, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, guys, we've already seen what 10 laps fresher tires would do early in the race with Tony Stewart with Jeff Gordon. Just to explain that rear chain that Chad Canals is talking about has nothing to do with performance on the racetrack, but that answers the question why their pit stop took, took so long. It's a chain to the rear end that helps pick the rear end up when you jack the car up and that chain was broke. That's the reason the jack man had to pump it so many times to get it off the ground. That, the, the only saving grace I see here is, is how good that car has been on the long run. Uh, and the car right behind him only took two tires. Uh, if he could get going here and run a few laps, catch a couple of cautions, it might not be over. Went to church this morning. Listen to the whatever kind of music it was. I don't know what that has to do with we'll it, see. but it must have something to do with it. Well, I'm with Tony Uri Sr., crew chief for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, it's getting right on down to it, my friend. What do we do from here? Well, uh, looks like we've had about a 75 to 100 lap car today. Then the car wants to get loose, loses all its forward bite. So uh, it looks like that caution come out at the perfect time for us. And uh, Jimmy not stopping might have helped us a little bit too because he was pretty stout. And uh, hopefully that was a mistake on their part. And uh, we can get this Budweiser Chevrolet back up front and should be able to stay there for that 500 mark. How, how aggressive is he going to drive these last few laps? Well, you know, we got to save our tires. That's why I had my first run. We just spun the tires right off of this soft tire Goodyear brought. You know, it's got a lot of grip, but these motors have got a lot of horsepower, too. So, uh, as you can see, they already dug the racetrack up with them, so it must be gripping pretty good. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep the tires on it for this uh, last 75 laps here and, and get a win here at Martinsville. We've been flirting with it for a long time, just haven't been able to get it, so maybe we can get it today. And you know what? This grandstand is absolutely packed, Mike. Not one soul has left here. They're all going to wait to see. Can Junior win at Martinsville? No, packed house, 91,000. More seats next year. Uh, this race has been sold out for a week and a half, and you've seen why. We listened in on uh, Jimmy Johnson and his team before they made that decision. Hey, buddy, what are we going to do here? We've got uh, 85 laps to go right now. Do you want to stay up there? So what happens behind us, you know? How, uh, what do you think? Well, everybody 15th back won't pit if the top 10 pit, you know what I mean? Uh, um, or I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like staying out, you know? I bet he kind of don't like now, though. <laughs> no, 
But the worst thing is for a driver is when the crew chief asks him what he wants to do. Because it, it's, it's not the driver's job, it's the crew chief's job to tell him to pit. Getting set for the restart, another look at the uh, patch in turn three. It is holding up well as Jimmy Johnson brings Ryan Newman, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Rusty Wallace, Bobby Labonte, Jamie McMurray, and Matt Kenseth back to the green flag. We have all different scenarios there. Leading the race, the 48 car, no tires, the 12 car in second, two tires. But from that eight car back, Dale Earnhardt Jr., everybody back there for the most part has four fresh tires as we have about uh, 78 laps to go. And how about... I'm just looking to see where the 17 is because they had a whale of a pit stop. Seven. He's up to seventh place, and uh, they did a great job in the pits today, Steve. Again. Hey, DW, they ripped off an incredible pit stop. They came in 12, went out seven, took four tires. Their stop was at 12.41 seconds. And that's how they got to the top 10 earlier in the race was right okay. there on pit road. What happened to Dale Jr. over here, guys? He's got Rusty alongside him now. He came off a of turn two and just, he, he got it plumb sideways off the corner. Oh, here's that, that. Nah, he's not hearing his spotter. He's here inside, doesn't know if it's inside or outside. There, outside. Inside. Ball oh, right there, clear. There's a little bit of latency in these radios from the time you hit the key until at the other end, they hear you, and he's missing the in or the out on some of those transmissions. Well, you remember at Bristol when Kurt Busch said, I want to stay out. If anyone him to pit, Kurt said, I'll stay out. He won the race. Not looking too bad right now, Larry. And right now, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he has his hands full, not only with Ricky Craven in the 32, a lap down, but Bob Labonte in 18. He's going to take the position away down the yeah, front. I, I don't know what's wrong with Junior's car, but it's, it's not performing like it was earlier. It's like he got bottlenecked behind Ricky Craven. Now Craven scoots away in turn two, but Junior was was better into the corner, but didn't get off the corner. It, it, looks, it looks kind of crazy loose right now, like the air pressures are really, really low. Rusty, rusty. whoa, spin, Harvick, turn four, caution. No, no caution, excuse me. They're going to see if he can get going. Green, still green, still green. He will, go, 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 go. He spins it around. We we have um, caution. They got a caution. Caution is out. Joe Nemechek in the 01, he was actually already back on the lead lap because he was in front of our leader, Jimmy Johnson, in the 48, and I believe Ricky Craven in the 32. We'll get the free pass. As that was going on, Rusty Wallace had jumped underneath Ryan Newman and was roughing up his teammate in that battle for, for a second spot. I think he'll probably go back behind him because that pass was made possibly after the caution. I was watching the 17 and the 29 racing each other pretty hard. And I think the 17 was racing him harder than he was thinking he was going to. I know we only have 71 laps to go, but as we watch this, another angle headed down the back stretch. And look at Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. All this is going on right in front of him. He goes to the bottom of the racetrack. Root and scoot. And uh, Jeff Gordon is now ninth. As you watch from Kevin Harvick. Oh, I hate that sound. You ought to be in there. You know, Daryl, if I'm Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car, I, I think I like cautions right now. Oh, yeah. That's fewer green I, laps I'm I have not, to run. I'm not coming in now, I can tell you that. You have made your bed, you must lay in it. You got it. Jimmy Johnson, our leader, with 70 to go. You think you can race the pros? Well, you can online. Our video game is now only at foxsports.com. Keyword games. Yeah, you race the pros. We'll be right back. Welcoming you back to Martinsville, Virginia, with 66 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson, your leader in today's aerial coverage, provided by Quaker Sting. Well, it felt like a day-night doubleheader or a spring doubleheader here in Martinsville. It went about 290 laps. We're just going to pick it up for what caused an hour and 17-minute delay, and that's Jeff Gordon. He's trying to win his third straight here in Martinsville, currently running second. And after uh, some concrete was pulled up, damaged his car. You see the problem. They had to get epoxy. They had to try and repair his car. He met with the president of NASCAR, Mike Kelton, made his appeal, but no break once they got back to racing. 
in the restart. He was 21st after again an hour and 17 minute delay. Dale Earnhardt Jr. at that point still leading, but after passing Stewart and then Bush and, and Harvick making it all the way up to eighth, ninth spot for Jeff Gordon, who is the car owner of the current leader, Jimmy Johnson, with Ryan Newman currently running second. As we're back to a live action under the caution of Jeff Hammond, still the debate with about 83 laps to go that uh, Jimmy Johnson decided to stay out. I wouldn't have done it that way, boys. I'm telling you, he'd have been watching the truck race yesterday. I think they had a pretty good indicator a couple times during the course of today's race, just like Ryan Newman taking two tires again. Early on, he kept it up front, close to the track position. But right now, I really believe Rusty Wallace is in the catbird seat, and he'll be coming to the front. Chad Canassa's crew chief did say, he admitted to us, hey, it was a mistake, but something like that is an error in judgment as the driver who ultimately makes the call. Well, I mean, there's a man right there that's in charge, and I, I think he pretty much uh, fessed up the fact that, hey, we made a mistake. We've got to live by it. So right now, he's trying to pump up his driver and do the best they can because enough caution flags, he may get by with it. I just don't think it's going to work that way. I really think that Rusty Wallace is going to be after him pretty aggressively. And, and what a story that we may have developing here. We've waited a long time today. And if those of you are just joining us, you know why the race has continued into this time frame. Rusty's gone 105 races without a win. Of course, he's won six times here in Martinsville, but that must seem like a lifetime ago to him. I'm sure it does right now as Rusty's out there. I think he made the comment earlier to his crew, get me four tires and get me ready to go, guys. I think mentally he's prepared to get the job done. But let's take just a second and tell the folks at home, they need to give the track crew and NASCAR and Attaboy for coming in there and repairing that racetrack. Even though they had a problem with it, it's stuck in there. And if Rusty can get to victory lane, it'll be one of those memorable days. Absolutely. And Ryan Newman, his Penske teammate, running second with Rusty currently third and Jimmy Johnson uh, leading with just about 63 laps to go as we are under caution. And you talked earlier in the broadcast about how he obviously had success here using his brakes and you think if he gets out in front really then it's he's in control. I'd hate to be the guy to try to take this one away from him today because if he can get around Ryan Newman and get after Jimmy Johnson, I believe once he gets away, Kiss it goodbye. It's going to be gone. <laughs> well, don't go anywhere yet. The Advanced Auto Parts 500 set for what, uh, well, certainly a finish worth waiting for. Let's rejoin Larry Darrell and Mike. Ricky Craven has just gotten the uh, free pass to come around and pick up a lap on this caution. But, Darrell, I've got to wonder, are frequent cautions Jimmy Johnson's friend? Well, they definitely are. And yesterday's truck race, Rick Crawford won the race by staying out. And uh, he went 70 or 80 laps on his last set of tires, which is what Jimmy's got to do. But if I got to put my money on somebody, I'm going to put mine on 18 because he looks really good to me as well. What now, do you like, Larry? Well, I mean, cautions are definitely Jimmy Johnson's friends, but I think Ryan Newman is a good friend too back there, two tires. I'm like DW. That 18 car, we watched it here a couple of years ago. We watched it last year. He's the man that's lurking back there in fourth position. And as usual, Bobby Labonte's car shows no signs of the usual Martinsville beat and bang. He's taking care of his equipment. He's in a strong position, fourth place. It's Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Newman, Rusty Wallace, Bobby Labonte, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Pace Bobby cars Le in. Bobby Labonte's doing what got DW to victory lane so many times here. Clean race car, now it's time to go. When they get the flag, 61 to go. in the 21 car remember after that flat tire being on the lead lap all day long he's up there beside our leader right now two laps down trying to get one of them back right now against Jimmy Johnson this would be a good time to do it though Jimmy would really really like to clear him and get out here and smooth sailing get out in clean air and be gone Dave Rusty Wallace in the two car he got a good run off turn four on the bottom he's gonna challenge his teammate Ryan Newman for second position he's gonna challenge for the lead here off two it's just so much grip down low off of turn four. Go ahead and get out there and get in it. Outside, outside. Rusty Wallace, six-time winner here, but it's been a long drought between victory lanes for Wallace. Ryan Newman's not ready to give up. Look at the fight. He got off turn four on the high side with those two tires. No team orders here between the two and the 12. No, sir, it's well, time to go. They're racing for a win. I mean, you're up there in second and third place. You can't roll over. Look, Ryan Newman, the same place he got to run on Rusty Wallace while I go off turn four on the high side. Rusty shoves it in there on the bottom in turn one. Newman gets a little loose, and there goes Rusty. Oh, no. Close. Rusty is getting a good jump off of two. Ryan's getting a good jump off of four. 
best thing that could happen for Jimmy Johnson in the 48. These guys keep battling side by side back there. Here's where Rusty's really good, getting down into turn one. He really packs it in there hard. And while these guys are going side by side, Bobby Labonte, that 18 car, he's pulling up to their rear bumper as well as Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the Budweiser car. And if, if Rusty had time, he'd call somebody and say, we asked the 12 to cut me some slack, but he don't have time right now. <laughs> His hands are full. Labonte did not get a good restart. And he's had to make up some ground. But his, he's closing in. His car, it looks like he's just sitting there. Like he knows that when those two guys get out from being side by side, he can take them. When New Newman taken up the racetrack by Wallace, but Rusty cannot clear his teammate. He'll get him here, though. He's going to drive down here and slide right up in front of him. And open the door for Bob. Still out there. Still out there. Not what he wanted to hear. <laughs> Still out there. Now, Wallace goes head hunting the leader, who is still Jimmy Johnson. I tell you what, guys, we were ready to write that 48 car off. Even Chad Knauss was ready to write that 48 car off. I'm impressed the way that race car is handling without changing tires while I go when the man behind him, Rusty Wallace, changed four after 30 laps on those tires. He's got his work cut out for him now, though, Larry. I mean, he's just hanging on. Rusty is definitely better. Gets that jump off of turn four. He's going to drive down under him right here. Chet, uh, Jimmy's not going to put up a real big fight, I don't think. Outside. Jimmy got a good fight off turn two that time. Pulls back in front of Rusty Wallace, headed down the back stretch. Give Jimmy Johnson a lot of credit. He is making the most of what he's got left. And he has to now. 52 laps to go. Rusty is, man, he gets down into turn one good. Now Ryan Newman in the 12, he's back up for challenging Rusty for second position. And I think Bobby Labonte's quicker than that Ryan Newman right now. He just can't get by. He's just waiting for him to slip up and give him an opening. Because Bobby has not, as we say, used up his stuff. But I'm looking at this whole group right here, 448 laps, five hours. We got our top six cars right there nose to tail. Look out, Jimmy, look out. Ooh. It's where Jimmy's so strong, he gets a good bite on the high side off turn two. He's able to win the drag race down the back stretch. Boy, I, I can't tell you how hard that is to be out there in a car that's got older tires than the other guy and try to hold him off. It's very easy to run out of racetrack where he's coming off turn two over there, DW. Yeah, that's why when Rusty gets under him, I mean, all you got to do is nerf him a little bit. The last time a Dodge went to victory lane in Martinsville, and Rusty is in a Dodge, 1975, Dave Marcus. Of course, they were out of the sport for many years, but they've been back for a while and have not yet taken the flag here at Martinsville since their return. Boy, Rusty fought so hard at Bristol to come up short. Surely today he can get by Jimmy Johnson. Hey, Bobby Labonte starting to use that bumper. He just gave Ryan Newman the boot in turn four. But I think when he did it, Mike, he had to roll out of the throttle and broke his momentum as well. Here's Rusty back underneath Jimmy Johnson. Whoa, Rusty about got sideways. Rusty does not get off turn two that good. He gets off turn four good, but not turn two. He's going to have to work it on the outside because I don't believe Jimmy's going to give up the bottom down here. Side by side for third. Bobby Labonte in the 18, Ryan Newman in the 12, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car right behind that group. See what that little bump did? Uh, Mr. Newman, hello. I'm here. Of the front four, only Johnson has been to victory lane this year. He was the winner at Darlington. Ricky Rudd is sitting up here right in front of these guys. The problem they're going to have is if they catch back up with him, that could be a factor. And I would say, Darrell, with about 45 laps to go, if we'd stay green, they're going to catch the tail end of the pack, and that could really be a huge factor. Jimmy runs so low, he runs right against the curve off turn four. If Rusty passes him in three and four, it's going to have to be on the high side. Here he comes. He's going to get a good run underneath of him. This could be it. Outside, outside, that's the door, outside. I think Rusty may win the drag outside. race this time. He's got him this time. Rusty likes the bottom down here. All Jimmy can do is fight. Yeah, Jimmy's on the wrong side of the racetrack now. Yeah. And Rusty clears him for the lead. Caution is out for turn two. Kevin Harvick, Derek Cope, and Joe Nemechek, and Ricky Craven. Good break for the 21 car. He gets one of his two laps back. But Brendan Gone, Rusty Wallace's teammate in the 77, he'll get the free pass. And, and Wallace will be the leader. 
now, Larry Mack? I, do I just, you stay or do you go? I just believe that you're going to see some guys come to pit road. I just I just believe you will. Now, you, Jimmy Johnson, he he has stay to stay out. out. He's already made his bed, but I think cars at the back of the pack will come to pit road for four fresh tires. Larry Carter just told his driver, Rusty Wallace, you've only had 21. I think you said green flag laps on those tires. Wants the leader to stay out. Yeah, I think we will see most of the guys at the front stay out. I think we'll see guys near the back lead lap cars. I think we'll see them get four tires. Yeah, there's still 19 cars on the lead lap. If Johnson comes now, it'd be almost impossible to get back to the front in 40, uh, 40 laps. Here's what happened to turn two to put us under caution for the 11th time. Joe Nemechek around, and he got banged by Ricky Craven at the tail end of that. Let's watch from Jeremy Mayfield. Boy, that had a days of look to it, didn't it? Please tell me where to go. From Kevin Harvick following Mayfield and going the other way. About the best thing to do driving into that is what he did, yeah. just stop. Stop. Now, we need to document Kevin Harvick, even after being involved in that accident a while ago, he's still on the lead lap back in 19th, and these guys would love to still be running at the checkered flag because he's been running at the end of 46 consecutive races. Very few lead lap cars pit. Uh, Tony Stewart, I believe, is the only, is he the only one? Michael, he's still on Lee Lab. That's right. Jared's back there. Pretty much all the guys back there from about 13th on back. So in the pits, Joe Nemechek, Tony Stewart, Ricky Craven, the 29 of Kevin Harvick, Michael Waltrip, Scott Wimmer, and the 88 of Dale Jarrett. Under caution again. 42 laps to go. The vice turns tighter in Martinsville. The Advance Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. Rusty Wallace is the man, as he was in April of 2001 in California, honoring his friend and the man he fought for so many years on the racetracks, Dale Earnhardt, who had perished that February in Daytona. Wallace, jubilant in victory lane, but that was three long years ago. 105 races to be exact, and now Rusty Wallace looking for his seventh Martinsville win and his 55th career triumph. Should have been reminded you know how to restart a race. <laughs> Downstairs, quickly. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. got on the radio a couple of moments ago and indicated that he expects this race to get very physical. He asked that his spotter communicate to Jamie McMurray, it's okay to beat on my back bumper, knock it off if you have to, just don't spin me out, he said. I don't want to go to the back. <laughs> Green no flag, does. 37 <laughs> laps to go. You know, for Rusty, this is a lot like it was for me. I remember my player by one. I remember in 1987, the only race I won was here. And uh, back in 1975, the only race I won was here. Rusty got a good restart. Pulled out about a three car length advantage over Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Pass through for Jeff Green. Here comes Ryan Newman working on second spot. Jeff Green penalized for not restarting in the proper position. Labonte to the inside. He's got to go. If he's going to win this race, he's got to go. He can't, uh, he's got to use everything he's got right now. He's got about 10 laps to get around these guys. And he's got to get up there. And Bobby Labonte, like Rusty Wallace on that last pit stop, he did take four tires, where Ryan Newman has two, Jimmy Johnson has none. Steve Burns, how about that 18 car? Larry Mack, the problem he has is on the last caution, he told his crew that he's losing forward bite off of the quarters. The problem he has right now, Steve, is that number eight Budweiser car because Dale Earnhardt Jr. got a good bite off turn four, and I think if it hadn't been for Ryan Newman, probably he would have went by like Bobby Labonte. Now Bobby Labonte's side by side with Ryan Newman for third. It's hard to get off a turn two underneath somebody like that. That's, the car's working pretty good when you can do that. Still 20 lead lap cars. Brendan Gaughan got the free pass on that caution. Rusty Wallace has now opened it up to a lead of more than a second. Jimmy Johnson looks in his rearview mirror and sees this battle for third. Side by side, Labonte, Newman, and Dale Jr. And Darrell, you have to believe Rusty Wallace does not want to see that green car in his rearview mirror back there running in second. He no. knows what that would mean. Right now, Rusty is opening up a nice lead. It'd be pretty hard to catch him if something doesn't give here pretty quick. Johnson left the bottom open. Here comes Labonte. 
Wasn't gotta, much Jimmy could do about it. Got to lean on him. Got to lean on him, buddy, if you're going to get up there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and eight car got real off, loose off turn two. He was almost under Ryan Newman the last time through. They don't give a prize for best looking car when this is over with. No, sir. Matt. While Jimmy Johns is trying to hold on to second, he's telling Chad Canals that the two car is dropping stuff on the racetrack. He has said it twice. Chad has talked to the officials. They are telling Chad they are looking at it. And we're told it's from the overflow as we look at uh, Rusty Wallace's rear bumper cam on the Miller Dodge. All right, Rusty's lead right now, Mark, at 1.53 seconds on Bobby Labonte with 30 laps to go. We'll, well check I, and see what happens to that interval. I said he had 10 laps to get around those cars and 10 laps to catch Rusty and 10 laps to pass it. So he's got it, he's breaking it down just right. And right now, Bobby Labonte is beating Rusty just ever so slightly since both of them are in clean traffic by almost a tenth a lap the last two laps. Rusty, uh, Rusty got such a huge jump on that restart. So, Darrell, as that plays out, it means he would catch him in 15 laps at that pace and have 15 laps to try to beat him. Yeah, I got a feeling that uh, we see how hard it is to pass, and uh, Rusty's pretty hungry, I would think. And I might need to go put a pretty tough fight. Now that lap, Rusty actually beat Bobby Labonte the amount that he had beat him the lap prior to that. What can Rusty do besides run time trial laps right now, Daryl? Don't look back. <laughs> look at this battle right here. This is a battle for third, fourth, and fifth right here. And look at Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. With 27 laps to go, he's back in the picture. Hard to believe that Jeff Gordon, after damaging the nose on what became the red flag incident, has been able to come back from 21st to battle for the top five. That was his goal, and that's what he's doing. Behind him. I think he, uh, Jamie McMurray on the 42 car got a little damage that time, but look who else is creeping into that picture right there. Matt Kenseth in that 17. I'm you. Guys, the last two laps, you talked about it a while ago, a second and a half. Bobby Labonte has chopped two tenths off that lead, Mike. Oh, he's coming, and the thing about Rusty is you just, every time you look back, you're losing time. Hit your marks. Don't make any mistakes. Don't spin the rear tires. There's a lot of don'ts for a driver right at this point, but the big thing is don't look back. Just drive as hard as you can go. He's got to focus on everything but the 18 car. You got it. You get to looking behind you, the first thing you know. Two veteran drivers having a great run in the closing stages. Dale Jarrett's fought his way up to 13th, passing Tony Stewart. Right behind him, Kyle Petty restarted 13th. He's battling with Michael Waltrip for a top 15 finish. And the 88 and the 20, Stewart and uh, Jarrett both stopped for tires. They, they really had nothing to lose. A few cars that did. Kyle did not. He stayed out and trying to hang on to a top 15. Junior bumps Newman, turn two, and is going to get underneath with a little bump and run. Newman's got to be really struggling, Larry, with those two tires. Got a nose, clear, clear. But I'll say one thing, he is tenacious. He never gives up. I tell you, who's not giving up, though? We just talked about him, Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. He's pulling down below Ryan Newman in the 12 car. This will be a battle for fifth position. Jeff Gordon's one of the cars that did change four tires when Rusty Wallace and Bobby Labonte did. But speaking of those two guys right there, Bobby Labonte is reeling him in. Slow car up here. Nemechek's going to, ah, no, he's going to be out of the way. It's going to be a while before Rusty catches a pack of traffic. going to be quite a while, maybe toward the end of this race. Might be able to use some of those lap cars to advantage. Nemechek pulls aside. 20 laps to go. And the interval at 20 laps, we'll catch it next time by. It was 1.53 seconds at 30 laps. It's 1.007 seconds at 20 laps. So at that rate, they'd be side by side at the finish. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? They will be. <laughs> Bob Labonte cleanly gets by Joe Nemechek in the 01 car. So now he has clean racetrack in front of him. 19 laps to go. I don't know, Darrell. This is starting to have a checkers or wreckers look to it. Well, Bobby Labonte is such a clean race car driver. He is not going to rough Rusty up. And he knows he knows Rusty hasn't won a race in a while. And I'm thinking he probably knows he better not make you mad. Junior tries Jimmy Johnson. Not that time. That's for third place. Here's the battle for fifth again with Jeff Gordon in the 24, Ryan Newman in the 12 car. 
Well, don't you know Fatback's down there jumping up and down on that toolbox about now and say, come on, Bobby, you can do it. This is when the crew starts saying, you're the man, you're the man, you're chasing him down, go. Bobby Labonte has one top five finish this year. Hasn't won this season. His only short track win came right here at Martinsville in 2002. Now their last two or three laps, their lap times have pretty much evened out. Rusty's not beating Bobby, Bobby's not beating Rusty, and next time by, we'll have 16 to go. Bobby's car gets down in the quarter good, especially in the turn three, and will still rotate through the center of the corner. That's one thing I noticed about these tires. They got really good. You can really drive in hard with them. They get a little problem hooking up, but they drive in good. Rusty's hunting, Darrell. In turns one and two, he's looking for the high part of the racetrack again, trying to find a line that's faster than Bobby Labonte's. He, Rusty's a little better in one and two, but it uh, looks like they're even, or maybe Bobby's a little better in three and four. Third place side-by-side, -side, Junior. Having a hard time trying to clear the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Clear. Now he does. But we've been watching him clear. the last two or three laps. He's been working the high side as he did the last time through three and four, and that lap through one and two. Clear. That's it. Traffic ahead for the leader. Scott Wimmer, Morgan Shepard, and Derek Cope may give Rusty a little relief or may hold him up. We'll see. 14 to go. These guys are pretty much running identical lap times. Now, Bobby can't get off turn two as no. good as Rusty. No, he's just a little loose off of that corner, but he's really good down here in three and four. Scott Wimmer did a great thing, moved up and aside and waved both drivers through. He doesn't want to factor in the outcome of this one. And for a man six laps down, that's what you're supposed to do. Exactly. Uh-oh, Shepard is double wide with Derek Cope. Morgan's been pulling and down now. for everybody all day long. I'm yep. pretty sure he would do it now. Same thing. Quite a contrast to the finish in Texas where Johnny Sauter was right in front of the two leaders at the flag. Good courtesy being shown here by the lap down cars. 12 to go. And these two guys here have been racing each other for the last 20 <laughs> laps. And Jeff just cannot get around Ryan Newman in the 12 car. And he's only got two tires. He only took two tires on that stop. But, Darrell, the interval has grown. Rusty Wallace has gotten through this traffic a little better than Bobby Labonte, although now, yep, he's got a lap car to split him from the second-place car. You know, there's a point in every, in, in every chase where you say, I can't do it. I can't get there. And you just kind of relax and say, look, I can run second, but I can't get to him. And even if I did, I don't think I could pass him. It'll be 10 to go and 20 to go. The gap was one second even. Now there's no lap cars ahead. Ten to go, 0.745 seconds. Lamani knocked a quarter second out of Rusty's lead, but that's all in the last 10 laps. Yeah, it's gonna take, uh, it's gonna take a big mistake by Rusty, and that lap car of Nemechek didn't help uh, Bobby Labonte any. That ticking he hears is that grandfather clock <laughs> that awaits the winner in victory lane. It just black flagged the old one because it's not up to speed. So we have nine laps to go. Rusty pretty much has a full straightaway in front of him as far as clean racetrack. Be eight to go next time. He's in great shape now. I mean, only thing, he, oh, he just has to not make a mistake. And Bobby really drove his car off into turn three. That time he paid the price from the center off. Couldn't get off the corner car, wouldn't stay down. And Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman are still going at it. <laughs> <laughs> Any wonder why they fill this place time after time? Well, the way I see it, it's filled, and 91,000 people are standing on their feet right now. Yeah, we're going to be fighting them all in the traffic afterwards, but that's okay. Small price to pay to see a great shootout here in Martinsville. And all the, all the people on their feet cheering Rusty on because they know how long it's been since he won, and I, I think everybody, I think it's going to be a very popular win. Six to go next time by. I told him this morning, I said, bud, if you're going to win a race, this is one of your uh, little avenues right here you ought to go down. That fifth place race now has three cars in it. Jamie McMurray has joined Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman. Six to go. And I tell you, we're not seeing him right now. We're seeing a battle right here between <laughs> Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman. We've been talking about it. But Chad can announce that 48 car. Nothing happens in the next five and a half laps. They look like they're going to have a top five finish, which considering where they were out there by themselves while ago when the caution came out, not too bad. Look at Ryan Newman and Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. Three wide with Joe Nemechek and Derek Cope off turn four. You can't wait for the lap cars to clear themselves. you got to go. Now you do. Five laps to go. Oh, Bobby Labonte gets within three car lengths going into turn three. And with five to go, the margin is six-tenths of a second. Oh, he's trying. And Rusty, this one, Rusty knows I can't make a mistake. I can let him get to me. I don't think he can pass me. 
Guys, there's three and a half laps to go. The red flag window was five to go, so we're past that window. Boy, if Bobby could get off the corner like he gets in, Larry, he would have a he would have the, the car to beat. Just don't know if he's going to have enough time. Rusty's really going to have to mess up as we have three to go. And Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman are still the show. Gordon is good into the middle of the corner. Newman is good coming off the corner as they continue their fight for fifth. It's almost like it's going to be who beats who off turn four on the last lap. Exactly. Two to go. And the gap is about four car lengths. Two to go. Clear by three. He'll get there, but I think Rusty's still good enough that he's not going to get not going to have to worry. No, no traffic in front of Rusty Wallace as they head off into turn three. McMurray underneath Gordon now. This is for sixth. They couldn't get to Newman. And it'll be the white flag for Rusty Wallace this time. One more time. First time he's seen it in 105 races. Now all these fans are standing. Now all of them are waving to Rusty Wallace as he goes down the backstretch for the final time off into turn three. Gordon gives Newman the boot turn two. They're going to be side by side. Here they come to the flag. Rusty Wallace wins the Advance Auto Parts right. 500 for his 55th career victory. Here's the battle for fifth. Gordon under Newman, but Ryan got the rocket launch on turn four and holds him off. But yay, Rusty, and, and even more, yay, Rusty, but yay, Larry Carter. Come over there as a crew chief, and uh, boy, has he made a difference. And this is his first win as a Nextel Cup crew chief, Larry Carter. Bobby Labonte second, Bergard Jr. third, Johnson, Jimmy Johnson fourth, Ryan Newman fifth. Somewhere in the middle of that's Larry Carter. <laughs> Larry boy, man, old Larry boy's gonna be having a good time tonight. There he is, there he right is. there. Six through 10, Jeff Gordon, Jamie McMurray, Matt Kenseth, Sterling Marlin and Dale Jarrett. Rusty said earlier this season, donuts are for kids. Look at his teammate, Ryan Newman, high-fiving him. There you go. Rusty. In each of his victories, honors fallen comrades. This is what Alan Kolwicki christened as the Polish victory lap. Driver's side window and arm out to the fans. When Alan created this after his first win, he said, I wanted to do something that folks would remember me by. He did it. And Feels Rusty, who shared a sponsorship with Alan through part of their career, continues to honor his friend. It feels good when you're riding around the driver's side to uh, wave into the fans. You know, you like here, I like the say. We know it's been five hours, but I think it was worth every minute of the wait. It'll be a celebration job, for the night. Something else that is, I think, wonderful about Martinsville Speedway. Victory Lane is right on the start-finish line, right in front of the fans. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, here it's coming around turn uh, two over there now. It'll be here in a minute. Yeah, John Deere's bringing it. He raced a lot of years against Rusty Wallace. You've got to know what this means to him, Darrell. Oh, yeah. I mean, to get to that point in your career where, I tell you, you start off and you end up the same way. You wonder when you start, if I'm ever going to win a race. And then when it kind of dries up a little bit, you say, am I ever going to win a race? I think the crowd loves it as much as he does. You don't hear any booze from that crowd. Dick Bergeron. The winner, after almost three years, how many nights did you dream of winning another day? Oh, man, I'll tell you what. I got to tell you, it's, it's been a long time coming. And uh, we've got such good cars. And Larry Carter, we hired him, got the crew straightened out, and, man, the whole hot rod started rocking and rolling again. It's a, it feels good to win again. It really does. I'm uh, I'm coming off that corner, and I'm thinking I'm pulling everybody. I see old Bobby Labonte closing on us. No, man, he can't be catching me, you know. But... Uh, I had a great day today, man. What can I say? Finally back in the winner's circle. Got a great car. We've got a second, a fifth, and a win. We're on track. We're going to win this damn championship, darn championship. <laughs> I'm ready for it, man. I'll tell you, it's exciting. What has turned the team around, Rusty? I'd say Larry Carter's been the main guy that's turned it around. A whole team effort. Uh, I've had a lot of great crew chiefs. Larry reminds me of old Buddy Parrott when Buddy was with me. He just got the chemistry working. The team loves working for him. I told Buddy, or I told uh, Larry, I said, Larry, we got to get a picture, man. you got to rock and roll for him. I just can't go like this no more. 
he found the right guy, put him in there, and 13 second pit stops are back. But boy, I tell you what, back to the regular old style. This thing handled like a million bucks all day long. We put the tires on at the right time. 24 was tough, 48 was tough, I know, but hey, we're in, we're in victory circle. And Rusty drove like a champion as well. well thank you very much. Let's go to Chris Myers. All right, thanks, Dick. And we welcome all of you to the next Nextel post race show. NASCAR and Nextel, partners in speed, and thanks for staying with us here in Martinsville. Rusty Wallace at age 47 from St. Louis, Missouri. Russell William Wallace, uh, the winner here as he celebrates. Let's check in uh, with C. Burns, trackside. All right, thanks, Chris, with Bobby Labonte. Bobby, boy, you guys fought a loose car, but you kept getting better and better and better. Would you have had a shot to get Rusty if there were more laps? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think that we were about... We're about out of right rear tire. You know, our car was a little bit too loose, and we just kept, you know, we kept digging on it, but uh, couldn't quite get him there at the end. Uh, we kept gaining on it, but it kept getting looser and looser. So, uh, but all these guys in the Interstate Battery Chevrolet, you know, we weren't that good yesterday afternoon, and then uh, made some changes this morning. Uh, guys had some good pit stops towards the end of the race, and uh, you know, got track position when we needed it. So, uh, it was all, all in all, it was a good day for us. And congratulate Rusty on winning at Martinsville. I mean, it was awesome for him to win today, and uh, I wish he could have won somewhere else other than today, obviously. But, but anyway, congratulate him and those guys. They did a great job, and we had a good race there for second uh dale jr and uh, the 12 and the 48 there for a while got by them and tried to get on the uh, on the heels of the two car but you know just couldn't quite get there and bobby you gave rusty a friendly nudge at the end of that race you know how hard it is to win these things these days yeah it is and uh you know finishing second twice this year is, is, is really good for our race team builds some momentum and stuff like that and uh it's a good point to stay for us to get back up there uh you know i don't know if we'll get in the top 10 but you know definitely gain i think we lost some last weekend from uh finishing 29th i think it was i know we lost some i don't know where to so anyway uh this will help out and uh you know we talked a little bit at the break you know and uh his car was really good and really glad to see him win congratulations bobby let's go to matt yoakum Jimmy Johnson just received a hug by your crew chief, Chad Canals, a top five, but you guys were talking about the debate to pit, no pit, and I know it's going to be frustrating for you, Jim. Yeah, it is. Uh, I guess we won Darlington with about a fifth-place car, and then uh, we finished fourth today with a car that we felt like we could have won the race with, but it's just one of those deals. Uh, if we would have, you know, faked it and, and stayed out, or, or did come in, I should say, maybe if you guys would have stayed out, you know, you never know how it works. We tried this strategy at Bristol, and it worked against us, and we finished uh, 12th or something, so uh, we thought it was going to work for us either way, but all in all, you know, put that aside, a great solid effort for the Lowe's team today. Hope all the employee owners are happy. Um, I know we and that should help us out in the points and uh, keep keep chipping away at it. This used to be one of my hardest tracks to come to, and we almost won here today. And a great drive to, to hold off the 2 and the 12 for quite a long time. Yeah, I knew uh, I knew it was going to be exciting. Um, I knew Rusty was pretty hungry, and I, I knew if I started chopping him or blocking him, I was going to have a chrome horn stuck in my rear. So, uh, you know, I left him a lane. We raced hard, rubbed a little bit, put on a good show, and but he was much better, and, and he got by, and so did Bobby. So, uh, just one of those deals. Second straight top five at Martins for Jimmy Johnson, and it's a big day for the entire team Penske, even Brendan Gaughan going to victory lane. And a Rusty Wallace ending a streak of 105 races without a win. He had to fight off guys like Dale Earnhardt Jr., who will be the uh, points champion. We'll chat with him when we come back and more with uh, Rusty Wallace, his first win ever at a Dodge. He's won before in a Pontiac and a Ford. We'll be back on Fox in a moment. Well, it took a pothole and an unofficial halftime delay of an hour for Rusty Wallace to win the Advance Auto Parts 500. Pulling into victory lane, he strolled down a career path crossing the victory line here. Good job, guys. Good job. Real proud of everybody. Man, we finally broke that losing streak. All right. Good man, baby. About time, huh? That's a wonderful feeling, I'll tell you that. Larry Carter is uh, crew chief, his new crew chief, and there is uh, Rusty Wallace continuing to celebrate. A familiar spot for him. It's just been a while. Let's check in now with uh, Steve Burns and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Steve? And Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s fifth straight top five finish here at Martinsville, and uh, it's old school racing. Tell us about the race here at Martinsville. Yeah, it seemed like it was about 15 year old racing there. Uh, we've been him banging there to him, but uh, it was a lot of fun. The car was good, real hot today. But the car stayed good all day long. Now, there's a restart where I was in front of Rusty and uh, behind that 48 and that 12, and, and I thought that was the place to be, and I needed to be there to get by the 12 and the 48, and I was going to win the race. And when the corner and the car wouldn't turn, uh, Rusty went around the outside, and 18 got by me too. And before the car came in, it was, you know, they were done gone. And, you know, just unfortunate because I felt like we could have won. Uh, but again, another top five, you know, and good points today for us. And um, the Budweiser crew, they had great pit stops too. 
this team's maturing a lot as well as a driver. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I don't, I don't know how much more mature we can get, but uh, <laughs> we're having a good time and we're, we're, we're getting good finishes and the wins will come. You know, I ain't too worried about it. We let one get away today, though. I really feel like it. All right, thank you, Dale. Let's go to Chris Myers, who is the model of maturity. <laughs> I thought you were talking immaturity. I quickly lit up uh, with me. with Jeff Hammond of the Hollywood Hotel. Uh, Rusty, he's, here's a guy who lobbied for the softer tires, right, and the smaller spoilers over years. He, he finally gets it, changes the crew chief. There were people who maybe hinted that he should cut back on his races because he hadn't won in a while. He's not only talking about winning races, he's talking about winning another championship. Well, I think right now, if you believe in attitude, he's got the right kind of attitude. It's really great to see him back in Victor Lane because he's always had a very positive attitude. I'm glad to see Larry. Carter come on board and give him the spark necessary to get him back to victory lane. And uh, his uh, teammate with uh, Penske is standing by with our Matt Yoka. Matt? Penske cars first and fifth and Ryan Newman, the two-tire call by Matt Borland. That really, how difficult was it to hold on, but that really helped out getting that top five. Yeah, every time we took four tires, we seemed to lose some spots. We took two tires. We came out first uh, of all the people that pitted. So um, just a little daredevil call, but uh, got us a top five today. I think that uh, we had a top five car just track position wise. Uh, that's what we had to play it. So um, congratulate, excuse me, Rusty and his team. On, we'll just take the all tail dodge and go on. Ryan Newman fifth today at Martinsville. All right, thanks, Ryan. Let's uh, go upstairs, and uh, it took a, it took quite a quite a series of events for this to happen, Mike, Larry, and Dale. We were we were watching all of it, uh, but happy for a guy like Rusty and a great finish for for a wild day here in Martinsville. Chris, nice to see Rusty and Patty Wallace and their family celebrating. Rusty is the only 47-year-old teenager I know. <laughs> I like first-time winners, but Daryl, I love first-time and a long-time winners. You know what Rusty's feeling one. right now? Relief. Sure. Finally got some pressure off of him. You know, finally doesn't have to answer that question about think he'll ever win again. Uh, it's just good to see Did Rusty. Find out he has the retired, excitement. Man. He has the enthusiasm. He's got the leadership now he needs. He could be tough the rest of the year down the road. And Larry, he took care of his stuff all day. Yeah, I mean, he did. He was a little disappointed in his qualifying run on Friday, but I think after yesterday's practice, he knew he had a good race car. I knew he couldn't do it in his interview, though, without saying hot rod. But of now course. he's showing that consistency, and you're going to see it here as we look at the points, Mike. Rusty moves up to eighth in the standings, into the top ten, 157 points out of first. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be the new point leader, going to a place where he's been most successful, Talladega, next week. Yeah, they just keep, you know, Dale Jr., Kurt Busch, and Matt Kenseth, they just swap the lead every week. It's been fun to watch, too. Talladega, though, here at Martinsville, you control your own destiny. Next week, the other 242 guys control your destiny. From the smallest track to the biggest, from the smallest booth to the Hollywood Hotel. Chris <laughs> Myers, send us home. All right, well, in the last three races, Rusty Wallace went from 23rd to 8th of the points, uh, as we saw in uh, Jeff Hammond. You talk about young guys, you know, 24 year old Casey Kane. You see Dale Earnhardt Jr. threatening here, but a, a veteran like Rusty Wallace winning on a track. I mean, he's the short track king. Now you got to think of it like this right now. He's got seven wins, wins here at Martinsville, and he and Jeff Gordon are all the, the only multiple winners at this racetrack since 1993, so that's pretty impressive. When you look at the uh, bigger picture of what this does as we get ready to go to Ta Talladega, and you see that, uh, obviously, Dale Earnhardt Jr. very comfortable there and now has the points lead, and this is what he's talked about before setting a pace for that championship run. Well, I think with Dale Earnhardt Jr., I think he's pretty much summed it up. He wants to win as many races, just like Matt Kenseth, as, as he can, and he feels like right now he's got the team to get it done. He's very frustrated. I think we kind of saw that because he didn't win here today. He felt like he had the car to beat. And let it one get away from him. Uh, uh, as they, uh, <laughs> they don't give them a restrictor plate now. That's now, the, that's the last me, thing they're I look thinking like a about. Kids, now you tell me I don't look like a kid right there. Well, I mean, Rusty, we all know that he's a, he's a pilot, right? He loves to fly. Uh, he says he'd be a commercial pilot if he wasn't racing cars. We'll see if he'll go flying around with everybody else next weekend when we're in Talladega on Friday. You'll see the qualifying on speed, and then on Saturday. FX has cup practice, half the hour of the final session, and the Bush race at 2 o'clock Eastern on Fox. And then on Sunday, we'll get things going with NASCAR this morning at Fox Sports Net, the pre-race show at 1 o'clock Eastern. Remember last year, 27 cars involved in the big one before Dale Earnhardt Jr. survived. There were 43 lead changes in last year's race at Talladega. That was the most in any event last year. And uh, some people finding their way home through the train tracks, and they had to hang around. More than 90,000 fans here in Martinsville through a, uh, a concrete surface delay that was worth waiting for, especially for the guy in the two car, Rusty Wallace. We want to thank all of you for hanging around a little extra with us on Fox on a day where the race was extended. Maybe a career, some doubt it should be extended, was revived. Rusty Wallace back in a familiar place in victory lane.
For all of us on the crew, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for joining us here on Fox, where America gathers every weekend for NASCAR. See you next weekend from Talladega. Take care.